PKA 646 with our guest Aqua FPS. Taylor. This episode of PKA brought to you by Lock and Load, realdbg.com, mm. and of course, Freeze Pipe, a bunch of wonderful, wonderful sponsors. Aqua, thank you for joining us and being so patient while we worked out oh, some thank very you for having me. audio issues. Yeah, Taylor, is Aqua's beard anyway. better than... I mean, <laughs> You're I mean, fine. Woody, whose beard is better? Oh, definitely his. His. Nah, disagree. Look at the look at the cloth on the front of your hair. It's on in here. It's ridiculous. You've got at least like a solid like color. Man, so I, color I feel on. like Taylor's got the beard, but it's Aqua may have the mustache. Mm. See, I like how I respect the dedication to that style of mustache because I like the overhang look, but mm. having to go like <laughs> every time you drink anything or eat anything. Mm. Like you've, I feel like a goop. Like I remember one time I didn't shave my mustache for, this was like eight years ago, a long time ago. And I was really wanting to go Western with it. And I remember mm. like I was going to order a burger at a restaurant and I decided not to because of the thought of eating it. And the second I was making those sorts of decisions based on facial hair, I ditched it. But yeah. So uh, I noticed you guys on recording this, you're blowing right through dinner time here. <laughs> Let me yeah. tell you, I was just shoveling some food into my mouth right before this show and uh eating trying to eat as fast as i could and let me tell you i uh i had to remove several objects from this before coming on the camera here you, it's you not great splendid. thanks <laughs> i think <laughs> taylor's right about dinner time i think taylor's is more quaffed but aqua's gives off more of a rustic ambiance when i see oh, yeah. aqua's beard i think Psh. That guy knows how to build a wood burning stove. Of course he does. I, bet I don't know how to do any of that. Axes. that. That guy's axes are sharp. You look yeah. like an. He looks outdoors. like he knows how to use an axe. I look like I'm a douchebag who goes axe throwing. Yep. Like, that's, that's exactly <laughs> that's what it. it is. That's it. I am a douchebag who goes axe throwing, though. It's actually pretty fun. I've been <laughs> axe throwing. Right. It's pretty cool. Think. Yeah. Jackie and I did it. My wife and but, I did it. Yeah, you're right about dinner time thing because, you know, these guys are east coast and so it's a little later for them they have their dinner normal time before about halfway through this show every single thursday an internal argument starts about whether or not i should order food for after the show and mm. i'm on a bad run boys like i've <laughs> I, I bet the past like three weeks in a row i've had a pizza waiting for me afterward and I think I'm a pizza or something else. I buy by pizza. I mean, something delivered Chinese food. Pizza, pizza doesn't wait for yeah, anyone. Things. Let me just let's get that straight. OK, pizza's here. What? Motherfucker. All right. I'm turning to shit. I'm done. Like pizza's got like a 15 minute expiration date. Once it's no, the no. You just, well, I get thin crust pizza. Uh, you say so. Heart healthy. I use heart like, healthy. <laughs> Tell me about oh, your geez, healthy pizza. The problem. <laughs> yeah. Heart healthy. Low fat pepperoni. You know, that's, that's, I, I, I bet that's not even a thing. <laughs> yeah. Somebody that art healthy meat themselves. lovers. Do you pizza. buy your lies? Do you? Are you no. Buying? No. <laughs> I order a lot. I don't think there's anything ordering gets a bad rap. Like, oh, you ordered out, huh? You couldn't cook. You you can cook the most indulgent things ever. When I was just about to go to prison, like the weeks before, I was making these like shrimp and filet mignon and lobster bowls. You know, like like. When I order, I usually get hibachi though, and it's because it's just grilled chicken and grilled steak and white rice. That's what, what you get is not well. hibachi. It's not hibachi without that sinful. I throw sauce the sauce away, man. I I, I I I special write no sauce, big exclamation, like I'm allergic to it or something because I can't resist it. But sriracha is mm. like a close eighth place behind yum yum sauce. The sauce is called yum yum sauce. You can't. Yeah, it's just fat. You can't good. Beat that. Do you what? <laughs> do you order food entirely too much as well, Aqua? Yeah. I, I I feel bad about it too. I, I you know maybe we shouldn't feel so bad about it, but yeah, I do. And I always order like too much. I feel like because I for two reasons. One, because I my eyes are bigger than my tummy most of the time. I'll be mm -hmm. honest, but also, mm -hmm. um, I I feel bad if I don't if I order just like one like portion. Like I feel like it doesn't deserve to be delivered unless it's mm. like. Like a so I'll like I'll like add something else to the order and like save it for later or something. Oh, I've done or just eat it all because I'm gross. <laughs> but I feel bad ordering like a reasonable amount of food for some reason. Yeah, have you ever done that where you're like, I'll I'll get two entrees and I can eat one tomorrow or later. 
Yeah. It's never for tomorrow or later. I always usually eat both. Usually yeah. I just look at it as a shortcut. <laughs> like like one of the more disgusting the, the, the embarrassing thing I order is this. Um when I can't be bothered to make dinner that that like hits a macro whatever mm. Applebee's, believe it or not, at one in the morning, two in the morning, when yeah, I be work when I'm one in the morning, two in the morning, or whatever, <sighs> you can order Applebee's and you can get a sirloin steak, so there's no fat on that motherfucker. And a big pile of mashed potatoes with no butter and and broccoli. And it, it'll mm. be at your house in 20 minutes and it costs thirteen dollars. No. And and I can't beat that. I can't even buy that and cook it that <clears throat> cheap. And when it gets here, it's not great, but it's not gross. Is how Kyle's that winning me over. I was about to say nothing from a nothing. If you if you buy prepared food, it's bad for you. It mm-hmm. always is. Everything at the restaurant I get is bad for me. <laughs> Kyle's cracking the code a little bit here. I, I'll, there's a bunch of them like that. the hibachi thing is the other one like there's not too many ways to order food from places if you're gonna continue to call that contraption with no sauce on it hibachi, right, chicken and rice i don't think we can be friends anymore all right hibachi the, in and sneaky hibachi, chicken and rice like, i'll call it that get the, like the, I, I i've ordered and had hibachi delivered they have that huge square plastic thing with all the different compartments and everything and the you yeah. know i don't eat the yum yum sauce either but the rice like the fried rice they include, no fried has rice. got to be. Oh, steam you don't rice. even treat yourself. To you that. have to have the steam rice. I know. If you go because... fried rice, you've broken the whole system. I know. I'm already, I'm already said ordering. I that, buy man. pizza, but I skip out on the bread and the sauce. You'd say that's not pizza. Rice is the luxury. You know, if you're if you're on like a, a restrictive diet, you're like, Ooh, I get a cup and a half of rice at this meal. Can you believe it? A cup and a half. And when, <laughs> but dude, if, so when you look at what a cup and a half of rice looks like on a plate. Like it's not a lot of rice. It's really? not. I remember when I when I gave Dirty. Dirty's a, a friend of Easy ours. Easy fix he, for that. Just measure it before guy. you cook it. Dirty's <laughs> like five foot six, maybe hundred and fifty pounds, but he was trying to get fit. And uh and I, I gave him this this diet and it involves lots of rice. Like every meal, your carbohydrates are rice. And when you cook rice, it it increases like threefold in volume. So one cup of uncooked rice turns into three cups of rice it's consumable cooked rice and he didn't realize that so he was eating like nine cups of rice a day (laughs) (laughs) you know how rice worked he messaged me and he was like dude i don't i don't know what to do this you're telling me at every meal a cup of rice and i'm trying man i'm trying so hard (laughs) (laughs) but but i can only get like three quarters of the way through it i'm like i don't understand man i'm thinking my this guy's kind of a bitch he can't eat a little (laughs) <laughs> First of rice is this little handful of rice. Like I've just I've, I've eaten out with him before. I've been to restaurants. He didn't he didn't struggle. And then I can't. Or we finally came to it. He'd been eating huge bowls of rice, just walks full at a time with every meal. So Dude, that that is was, on him. That he, he repeatedly stared at a salad bowl full of rice and was like, "This is what t- this is what Kyle." Won. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no. yeah. Dude, you got a lot of carb. <laughs> yeah. That'll bind them up for sure. Only one macro <laughs> that matters, protein. Fats and carbs will come on their own. Just get hit your protein, stay in your calorie limit. I've solved dieting. Mm-hmm. Sometimes yeah, I, I, mean, can, I, I can hit my carb limit in a day for like a week. Like you, oh, eat I, was, I, was like, I can hit my carb limit in a day. That's how all the limits work, Taylor. They, Tim, they don't go over the course. On my of weekly week. limit in a day. <laughs> yes. Oh, okay, okay. All right. Yeah, you're absolutely right about. But in as okay. much as that, the carbs are the thing where you're going to have to be like, oh, less, less, less. That's how much I get. Whereas the meat thing is always going to be more, more, more. Yeah, I can have a little more. It's protein. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's a whole different calorie. That's better for you anyway. And meat actually fills you up. Way better than any. I want to know this is true oh, wait, science on the calories there. required really? to digest calories, you know, like the net caloric uh, base. So, proteins, and it makes sense if your body has to dissolve and uh, de- decombine uh, a chunk of steak, that's harder to do to get those proteins than it would be if you had some black beans, for example, like turned into refried beans. That's basically mush. That's easy to turn into proteins, right? So, yeah, as you know, one of them leaves something like steak. About a third of those calories are consumed consuming it, if that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. And if it's something like sugar, ah, that's, that's your body will turn all that into fat. <laughs> so efficiently. <laughs> and the tougher the steak, the tougher the steak, you could argue. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> like I burn just, it. Whenever <laughs> make it like the, a tire. The, I remember in the dances with wolves when when they kill the big buffalo 
and mm. they cut its tongue out right there. Like it just died, and it's t- now it's tongue. And, and the guy offer, and it's the best part apparently. And he offers that tongue to to uh, um, what's his Kevin name, Costner. Kevin Costner. He's just like, whoo! <laughs> <laughs> he knows he's gonna bite it because he's got to be one of the boys. But he's just fuck. Oh, <laughs> and it's just this the toughest bite you've ever had. <laughs> Imagine Raw biting tongue. through a buffalo's they, tongue. They cooked it bad. I don't know. Bit my own tongue a bunch of times. Kind of excel. Yeah, just a topic change. You know, Kevin Costner's leaving Yellowstone. Is he leaving or is he being asked to leave? I always wonder, like, what the impetus is of something like that. Is he tired of it? Because I see he likes that nature shit for real. I see him do all sorts of save the wilderness nonsense all the time, Mm -hmm. like speeches about Yellowstone. That's. uh, I think he finds Taylor Sheridan. That pronunciation is almost perfect. I think Mm -hmm. Uh, too hard to work with and not worth it. So he's coming back for the second half of season five. Mm. Side note, the gap is so big. It's basically season six. Yeah, they, and that, that's uh, annoying. After that, he's done. With the writer's strike, I think a lot of programs are going to get lost in the shuffle. It, it, it's really damaging, I think, to a brand when you take that 18 months off with no content out. Like the, the world moves on and forgets about you. That's how I remember how hyped we were for One Punch Man. Back when that, yes. that first season of animation came out, I was I, I was like, man, this is this is some anime I can I like. Okay, this is this is like anime. This is like a meta anime. It's all about how silly anime is, and I, I really dug should it. I watch that one? I've been trying to figure out like what's you know everybody you know a lot of people like anime, and I've been trying to like figure out like which one to watch. Like I don't know anything about it. I've never really seen it. I watched Dragon Ball back in the day, but like is that the one One Punch Man? Well, you're asking timer? some clansmen where the 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 best hip hop joint is right now. So uh, <laughs> we're not su- the direction. You were excited about it. Anime. We hate <laughs> anime and everything they stand for. We laugh at them constantly. We, okay. we have names for the the people who I enjoy it. it. Yeah. yeah, it's perfect. I've never seen an anime I like. I didn't watch One Punch Man. Actually, you guys recommended it to me. I watched half of the first episode until the like big lobster guy was out there and it was like there is something to me that is jarring about the aesthetic of anime that I really don't enjoy. I don't mm-hmm. like the the animation style of it. I'm sure the stories are fine. I don't know anything about it, but that style I do not like. Other than Pokemon in the mid 90s. And I don't even consider that an anime, you know. It, One Punch is. Man is the one that I would recommend as someone who doesn't know very much. I tried to watch a couple of them. I've had I'm sure I've had very strong recommendations. I think someone recommends something called Bleach that I tried to watch. And then there's the other one, Attack on Titan. I tried that too. And Attack on Titan with those big dead-eyed monsters. I remember I I was like, oh, okay, this is the main guy. This is our hero. I'll follow him. And then he gets chomped up like 45 minutes later, like eaten alive. And and I I was like, fuck. We were being paid to watch that show, and we still struggled. Literally. Yeah, (laughs) Crunchy Roll or whatever was paying us to, to watch that shit. And we... One Punch Man, however, is kind of making fun of all the tropes of anime. You know how they'll go like, <clears throat> they'll always have a higher yeah. power mode. Like, oh, Saiyan. I'm going to have to super duper say on this time. <laughs> it's going to be purple instead of red. And you're like, oh, my God, he's turning purple. And, and next week he can turn green and you'll be just as blown away. Mm-hmm. They make fun of that because One Punch Man is a guy named Saitama. And he just decided to be a superhero because he thought it was chill. And so he came up with this workout program that's top secret. He only t- tells his sensei after most of the way through the season, he finally divulges to his sensei what he does. Because One Punch Man is so powerful that he is what his name would suggest. He doesn't just win his fights in One Punch. He destroys his enemies with One Punch. There are different levels to how strong he'll hit something. At one point, he goes... Full effort, one punch. And you're like, what are you talking about? You've never hit anything as hard as you could before? <laughs> and, yeah. And he like, makes a black hole, right? Um, Just, but, but It's a quick example. He once saved the Earth from a satellite. Uh, from a... What am I going for? Asteroid. Uh, asteroid with a single punch. <laughs> Just explode, so, wow. right? So yeah, it's like, really finally, hard. he's going to tell... His sensei, <laughs> his sensei is like a classic character from, from, from any, any, uh, any great story. His family's been killed, and so he he is going through all these. Uh, he's been training for years to avenge them, and he's gone so far as to have pieces of his body replaced by um, mech parts. Like, oh, my arm wasn't mm-hmm. good enough. Now it's steel. Now, it, now, it, now it's as good as it can be. And so he asks Saitama, like, "What do you do, Master? Tell me. I'm on this mission of vengeance. This, tell me." He's like, "All right, I'll tell you. 
You must never divulge my secrets. Never, master, never. All right, every day I ran five kilometers. I did 100 push-ups, 100 sit-ups. Here's the worst part. No air conditioning. You can do that. And, and that's literally what he did. And, and the guy's just having a meltdown. He's like, fuck you, you piece of shit. I have walked through fire of hell with you. And you come up with that. But that's literally what he did. He yeah. Just, he, he goes, wait, that, that's so that's not even that much. <laughs> yeah, yeah, hundred sit-ups, that's all you're doing. I feel like I yeah. could do that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm like, right. they, if, if you like dedicated couple... yourself, <laughs> yeah, it wouldn't there's, get you that fit. <laughs> there's guys yeah. there's there's a guy on YouTube, and I'm sure it's been done a bunch of times, but he did it. He was like, you know what? Next 30 days, I'm on the Saitama plan. He seemed turned the thermostat off. <laughs> <laughs> I like that part. And it, you know, in February. <laughs> and of course, the, yeah. the the run ends up being it might be 10k. It's at least 5k I think it's a day. 10K. I didn't want to correct. Um, but 10k oh, a day mind. begins to really weigh on you. But the, the push ups, especially if you do like I don't know 25, 25, 25, it, they're nothing. But when you get to a 10k every day, just finding the time for that shit, that's pretty you extreme. How many miles is that? Push ups a day. I think that's 25, 25, 25, 25, and 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 you'd be fine. No, you'd be you'd be sore every day, but you. you know. It's like 10k is like four miles, right? I think most people listening to this would have to work up to four sets of 25 a day. Well, I, I would imagine you're already in enough shape that you're aspiring to be a superhero. So you wouldn't mm -hmm. start from sluggishness, and uh, mm -hmm. and uh, <laughs> that's where I start. <laughs> uh, yeah, you'll start from couch potato mode and, and go to the side to my diet. I don't think. I think if you're already a slightly competent. Yeah, I, I don't think not... there was a time when I thought that people were going to become heroes. I thought that we would have that like legitimately. I don't mean like as a kid. I mean, a few years ago, it, it seemed like superheroes were so popular in media really? that I thought maybe we would get some vigilantes out there. And my theory is this. There mm. are vigilantes out there. Crazy kooks, if you want to call them that. Probably just guys in rubber suits with weaponry who are doing shit. And we don't hear about it because if they reported on it, it would cause more cases it would be like a batman scenario no. where you see the joker on tv and you're like inspired to be to to be the riddler now and and that propagates on and on you i think believe they're villains they're, or heroes or both i think they're both i, I think they're definitely wannabe heroes who are essentially just crazed people out there who are armed and in suits and and running around in special cars with lights on the top, claiming they're Jackson. enforcing laws. What, what if you want to be a villain, but you don't want to go <laughs> it's the police. all it's in the police. to <laughs> the bad? Like, what's a good starter level villain? Starter? You mean like something more intense than like Graffiti Man, but not Lock like man. You're, you're not really hurting people too badly, like uh, like small claims court and like some some sort of. Can I be dog like, shit in a flaming bag, maybe something like that? Yeah, Wait. the pranks, <laughs> and they're and they're all innocent. They're all <laughs> the, 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 at the end. It's like no, but we're having glue a good man. time, aren't we? Just you make you glue things together that that are, you know now it's annoying for people. Doors but, and yeah, sticky stuff on doorknobs, handrails, stuff like that. <laughs> sticky That's stuff. Pretty fucked up. <laughs> I'm the yeah. cart anarchist, and I go to. Uh, grocery stores and i take all the carts out and i push them everywhere and then i get back in my car drive yeah away. and then put jelly on the handle as well jelly on the <laughs> handle scare everyone Ooh, what, what i steal did... money from the santa claus what if you knocked the wheel so they all did the wiggle thing that grocery carts do right the grocery cart vandal mm. good that's almost too low that's almost too, <laughs> that's that's too, too much petty <laughs> that's too petty. <laughs> we need, someone needs to look at our our mischief and go ah, this is going to take 20, 25 minutes. To, to <laughs> <laughs> if, 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 what superhero would you want um, for your city, for, for example, Taylor, in Missouri, where things are terrible and, and scary and it's essentially, mm -hmm, you know, society's mm -hmm. falling apart. Um, St. Louis. Hiding their homes great. at night. I'm not St. done Louis tearing sucks. down your homeland. Um, <laughs> <clears throat> it's just a hellscape of, uh, of sin, debauchery, and um, a lack of basic human principles. I have my answer. Being implied. Yeah. Yeah, it would, oh, it would be uh, Hammer, Man. <laughs> Hammer Man. Hammer Man. Yeah. He, so but he takes it's, the, no, no, no. It's in the same vein as Batman because he's like, now they will know what I fear. <laughs> <laughs> and so, like, he doesn't use hammers, but he is emblazoned with a hammer to show that it, Aqua doesn't know this. Ha uh, St. Louis City has a slew of uh, they have a hammer murder spat. problem. People are killed with a spat of of claw hammer related issues. And so, Lots if we had sort of a Batman thing with the hammerist, 
which which work. they claim are unrelated, and we come right back around to the possibility there are supervillains out there, and yet hammer murder after hammer murderer. Clearly, MC Hammer is at Ham Murderer is out there killing people, mm -hmm. and the and the police don't want to want to want to talk about him. There was a movie where Shaq, I think, played a superhero called Steel, and uh, oh, I God. think his weapon of choice was a big sledgehammer. Nice. Um, yeah, it's a cool weapon for a superhero. I think he wants the actual whatsoever. Batman for St. Louis. And, and the reason why, it, twofold. One, he really focuses on the Covered neighborhood level crime, right? Mm -hmm. So you don't want Iron Man or Superman because they don't they're not friendly neighborhood Spider-Man, for example. <laughs> but the reason mm -hmm. I'm picking Batman over Spider-Man is the other thing that Bruce Wayne can do, which is money. People think of Bruce Wayne as the Batman that goes and catches bad guys. Mm -hmm. They forget. He's also the super wealthy guy that like solves homelessness and invests in the community, improves the schools. Spider-Man can't do that. So Batman's the one you want. He's got cash and crime fighting mm. prowess. He almost never does that, though. He's, too cocky. He, he's usually using it as a, as a flex for pussy and stuff, right? Like <laughs> he, he'll they'll be like, sir, your whores can't be naked in our fountain. And he's like, ha ha, I just bought this building. That does rock. Like he that's did that. Cool. That's that's the Nolan Batman. He literally does that in the first. In the that's first the best movie. Batman. So he yeah. has two whores with him. No, Batman, Batman, only has one to, Batman would go into <laughs> East St. Louis in his Batmobile, all confident, and he'd get robbed. He'd, uh, he'd, the, get, he'd get killed. Bulletproof. The Wayne Foundation is. They call uh, him a racist. Is what would actually happen. constantly invest in the neighborhood. Uh, Batman's Industries are the major employer in the neighborhood. You need Batman in St. Louis. You need Bruce mm. Wayne and Batman. One in the oh same. yeah, Bruce. yeah. Um, I saw that there was a Definitely hero on the New York subway yesterday who who choked a crazed man uh, unconscious, and um, <clears throat> I guess he just kept on subways. Choking him I, I never hear good and, stories on subways. Well, it, it depends on you kill him. He killed him. <laughs> he killed him. He, uh the guy was crazy. It was a crazy homeless person was screaming and such. Do you so back when I did Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, I used to like live for this shit in the same way that gun nuts just like scour the internet for times guns were used for good. Uh, mm -hmm. I would scour the internet for times that like rear naked chokes were used for good. And <laughs> one of the things that goes wrong a lot is when the victim is on something, if they're on mm -hmm. drugs or alcohol, that guillotine choke that you've done a thousand times before is more deadly than you expected it to be. Yeah, so if someone a... like showed up at your jujitsu gym and like they'd been drinking, they'd be like, no, get the hell out of here. You, you not well, yeah. safe. They or would, would they be like, you that. arrogant piece of shit. Come on in. Oh, that's, that's what I want to have it. I let, so new people would show up at the gym all the time and not recognize that they're bad at grappling, which is yeah, glorious. They would let, they'd be like, all right, 15 year old skinny kid, go roll with that man. And the child would just manhandle him. And it's like, okay, that's our whatever four month white belt. Do you want to work your way up the chain? Would you like to go with Woody next or someone who's really good? Not saying that me like yeah, yeah. Woody or someone who's really good. And uh, and I just I love toying with them. Or if somebody new had such a physical advantage, maybe he's in boot camp or something that uh, he's beating up on someone, they he would get dealt with, and it's sweet. I saw well, a guy, kind of, yeah. He was beating up on a girl, right? So this is a really sweet Mormon couple, both blue belts, both good at this. Mm -hmm. But the the wife, she was like this hot 115 pound woman, right? She can't beat even an untrained guy who's active duty army. Sure. And he was the, or I'm sorry, she was the only person he was getting the best of, right? He, he'd gone around. We had all had our turn with this freak who couldn't grapple. And then he gets to the girl and he's putting his form in her neck and just like oh, grinding no. it and holding her down or whatever. Oh, yeah, because he needed a win. And this is the only person Weird. he could beat. The girl. Well, read the room. <laughs> read the room. <laughs> Husband trains them too. Flying <laughs> and, and he was just doing like takedown drills on this guy, picking him up, putting him down. And then you know, the, the guy didn't even want to go anymore, but the, the bell hadn't rang. He's just like, get up. There's more. And uh, lessons were learned. Yeah, this, that, that reminded me so much of we were maybe 11 years old and I, I, get, I guess 11 or 12. And that's the age where they allow hitting to start being a thing in ice hockey. Before that, they don't allow mm. it because especially on ice, even a little kid can get a huge amount of speed and fuck somebody up. And by that point, I was a goalie. And so hitting was not part of my repertoire. And so I remember, though, one of the first practices where the head coach was like, 
All right, Taylor, you go in that net with the goalie coach. We're doing a hitting drill. And like part of me, I was like, oh, I knew this day would come. And I do feel lonely down here by myself, like with just me and the other goalie. And I watched as he lined up this this big ex hockey playing like coach just had them skate as hard as they could, like behind the net. And he was there waiting for them. And he just knocked the shit out of them. Like put them on their ass. He in was a way the brick that, like, wall. That yeah, he was a brick wall just to get them used to what it would feel like to run into Jesus. something with no give. You know, it's not like a wall. He was putting them down in a way that wasn't going to hurt them. But I remember watching that and so quickly being like, "I maybe I did make the right decision in, in being a goal." Oh yeah, you want to be in goal where it's safe. It, it never psycho. occurred to me <laughs> that you'd practice like checking or hitting in hockey for some reason i never played yeah. that or any contact sport for that matter really <laughs> i play a little baseball but you know there's none of that that's yeah. that's interesting yeah. I, i'm shocked it was it's uh, weird to me because how to hit it was obvious because you've got parents are right, in baseball right like i think the closest thing that ever came to a parent hurting a kid is the kid doesn't catch the ball and eats it i've seen that happen Happened but in me. hockey a parent <laughs> has to hit a kid it yeah. sounds like for the for the for the lesson to be given. So that's kind of weird because yeah, I mean, an average parent might might be very judgmental about how many newtons of force are being applied to their son in this training. Ah, that was two newtons too much, you cocksucker. <laughs> but then like a crazed person is just gonna want to fight, right? Especially a hockey dad. <laughs> oh, you like hitting <laughs> kids, do you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Show you how they do the it fucking over in, hoser. Uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> do it in the Michelob leagues. <laughs> the Michelob leagues. <laughs> yeah, it. It is. I, I was jealous Nashville? I couldn't hit, but mm. it was also kind of nice. Like that was the be the best part about being goalie was also the worst part. Like you're in, you are in such control of the game. Like it, fe it felt great and also felt shitty because sometimes it was like, like this was my fault. You're like everybody's little brother as a goalie. Like, oh, did you hit our goalie? Did you get like? So if you stop in hockey, it shoots shoots little ice like snow, right? And if you so much as snow the goalie, everyone tries to beat you up. And yeah. it's like, what? How big a pussy is your goalie that he can't get ice on <laughs> yeah. her? But it is annoying, man. It's cold and it's and it gets in your eyes. Yeah. I don't like it. Oh, that the disrespect alone. Then, then, then sometimes now. then they stick their when you're covering the puck and they stick their stick under your thigh in the meaty area and they rake back and forth with like trying to give you splinters. <laughs> that shit hurts. Do that? <laughs> yeah, 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 they're mean spirited. <laughs> when, 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 when Taylor first splinters. told me that about the fiberglass splinters in your thighs, oh god, that's when I wouldn't. I time. felt the same way i felt when i heard about the varsity um football or baseball trip where they raped the kid with the coke bottle i was oh like oh well i won't be playing high school ball then eh? no. <laughs> I was like, I certainly won't. like you can only take so much hazing i, I was like i thought there'd be jock straps and running <laughs> and they're like yeah. nah dude they put a coke bottle up chad's ass like, that, oh, that no. kind of hazing is so upsetting it's like how are you better friends afterward because of that I mean, like, it wasn't a modern couldn't you, Coke bottle. Couldn't you have oh, gone through exactly. something else a little? Couldn't you yeah. have? Could, maybe they drop you off in the middle of the woods two miles from somewhere and you have to wander back. I don't know. Something not fucking putting in your ass. Because like, then decided you have to, be to like, rape him on the this bus. Is, this is my Taylor. best friend. This is Jared. He's our all star second line center. Used to be first line. Now he has issues. Like he's, <laughs> <laughs> he's got a lot of psychological problems. This guy could have been a great player. <laughs> yeah. a great player until he was really, that was really had potential. Abuse. Jesus. Jeez. There was yeah, no, so you didn't. Uh, uh, so Aqua, you didn't. You only played baseball growing up. No other football. I hockey? tried to play soccer and all that. I just I couldn't like run for a very long time. I just it's not my thing. I just and basketball. I just never knew what the hell was going on. I just get hit in the head with the ball all the time. Soccer too. Just hit in the face with the ball. I'm just not super aware of like what a ball flying around a court is is doing. It's just not. It was never really my thing. Yeah, you just didn't have an interest. <laughs> I can in bat in baseball. That's all I'm good at. I can I can hit the ball with a stick. I can I'm good at golf too. Um, that's about it. Okay. And skateboarding. I got into skateboarding, and that was my thing. No ball, no nothing. How long? Uh, Simple. Did, or I guess when did you start skateboarding as a young kid? Uh, yeah, like maybe like sixth or seventh grade, something like that. And that was like my thing. Like. I actually did a little skateboarding today for the first time in, in quite a while, and I suck. <laughs> it was horrible. <laughs> I, I was super out of breath and, like, 
could barely jump and uh, scared. Frankly, uh, I just don't want to hurt myself anymore. It's just not it's uh, not worth it. Were you at the point that you could do like tricks? Yeah, like yeah, I could do flip, um, McTwists. No McTwists. I I didn't do like the half pipe thing or anything. Uh, but, like stale fish. I'm trying to remember things from uh, Tony Hawk 1998. <laughs> These are like more snowboard uh, tricks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I could like kick flip and like do that off of stuff like down some stairs like stuff like that nothing crazy just a few just, i grew up in the country yeah. so there was no there was no concrete to do those kinds of sports on so yeah. my sports all ended up, it, if, if you couldn't do them in dirt then i i really couldn't do any of them um i remember i got a, a bicycle for christmas one year and i was like but what the fuck do i do with it now <laughs> like because it's like we live at the end of a dirt the yard road. we live on a dirt road with a dirt driveway in a dirt yard like like where do i go this isn't a mountain to say well what, there's like trails no there's not trails there's it a, wasn't a mountain bike it was a track bike, <laughs> dirt bike. No, i mean it was a mountain bike but like like what, my little ass is gonna pedal it through the cow pasture when there's atvs and shit there was no purpose for it i, don't, I just sat there and rusted away yeah that's literally just for exercise and you're a kid you don't need it you're you got a basketball hoop and a basketball and it was like and then pour me a concrete pad so i'm just out there in the dirt again just like 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 poor michael jordan from the beginning of space jam like that but the version that didn't try. Yeah. That's how I see myself. As the Michael Jackson <laughs> the beginning of Space Jam doesn't try. <laughs> yeah, yeah, same exact thing, yeah. If only you had, happened. like, Michael Jordan's dad, you know, who yeah. just, like, pushed him along. You could have been yeah. Michael Jordan. I believe <laughs> that Jordan's with all dad. my Michael heart. Michael Jackson's dad. I believe that great with all my dads. heart. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> they're known for their great dad. Yeah. They're known yeah. for not taking no for an answer from their kids. Mm. I want a normal childhood. I don't want... Uh, this surgery. Shut up, Michael. Dance <laughs> like that. Dance. <laughs> Dance, you little Michael. fucker. Dance, Daddy. Please don't chemically castrate me. I'll turn out weird. Shut up, you bitch. Shut up. <laughs> He's got dollar signs in his eyes. Yeah, that, that's what happened. By the way, he Pop was pretty good. Him. Made, Made him all some weird. great songs. Some excellent. That, songs. Some of the best. I went, yeah. my gaming mix is is very. I don't know. It it doesn't. Jackson heavy. I mean, there's some Michael Jackson and some Kanye in there. It's 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 a little controversial. I, I like that stuff. I bet that's <laughs> my favorite music. When I hear Billie Jean, I'm, I'm, I'm like fucking snapping my fingers and dancing you along. You need to put a little Chris Good. Brown in there. Come up with the whole sort of like pedophile, <laughs> rapist. R. Kelly as well. Nazi. <laughs> R. Kelly. Yeah, R. Kelly. Yeah. There you go. See, I, I like Rihanna too much to to support Chris Brown. I really do like Rihanna. She's probably Rihanna one of my top 10 favorite Chris artists. Chris Brown. I don't know why. She's he's great. Having. He's whatever. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know yeah, any of his songs. But that's I, a, that's I would a if I very attractive lady. Still, how old is she? I don't fucking care. I mean, she's pregnant and gross at the the Super Bowl. They had her up. They had her all in that red like jumpsuit, uh, unzipped, uh, like suspended up in the air for some reason. So that wasn't hot at all. But um, last time I saw her, not full of baby, she was she was pretty smoking. She's probably in her thirties, thirty five. That's a yeah, that's a, right on the dot. Pretty close. Well, you know how what he feels about that. 10 years expired <laughs> <laughs> like a like a horse that that, that had like a horse with a limp I've never, we've talked about this before but it it always strikes me as so awful that they can't find a way to 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 make a horse break in its leg not a life-ending thing oh they can it's laziness uh, I, I I think I, the um the the maybe no, it's the, not. Kentucky Der- the, Ken- <laughs> the Kentucky Derby or something else is coming up and I think four horses died last week or had to be put down and I think that just means they fell and got bumped up, and they're like, "Well, that's the end of you." I do not I th- get yeah. it. Why can't we just suspend the horse by its belly and extract its cum and make some money? Yeah. Well, Jesus uh, Christ! Or <laughs> oh, please, this is my personal version <laughs> of heaven. What? It's his version. <laughs> <of hell? laughs> hell? You act yeah. like it's cruelty. To Free me, you. human. Free me from my bonds. I, I realize he rapes me every table. night. Every night. <laughs> no. <laughs> I was to run in the meadows of my ancestors. Uh, shut up and now come. you're in a cage, bitch. Run. <laughs> but uh, I, I used to fall for that anti-horse propaganda as well, just like you guys. Until I saw a video in India hmm. of an elephant with a missing leg that they very easily attached something to the socket. And it has an enormous, heavy, load-bearing thing. And then mm-hmm. the elephant's walking around. He's able to eat. He's able to go about his day. They throw a bunch of baby powder on it in the beginning of the day, slip it on. End of the day, they take it they off. Did. 
all of this stuff is possible in India for an elephant, and we can't figure it out with horses? Nah, it's li- these these fucking horse owners just they don't care about those horses. They don't even about eat horse them. bones and and how stupid horses are. I think mm-hmm. elephants are smart enough to be ginger about their stump, whereas a horse is just going to try to jerk around and sprint on its fiberglass leg that hasn't set yet. Maybe, but that's the problem. Yeah, elephants are smarter. I'm going to say that's the problem and then move along. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know practice. enough about horse <laughs> med- medical practice to, and, to debate what, this, but what's really turning me fine. is, is I, I can't think of any horses that I've ever I've ever liked. Even um, the the horses at horse camp that I went to, they were just kind of they're like, all right, get on. There were no like friendly Actually, horses. Dude, they're, they're I, kind of- I literally just had a brain blast, Jimmy Neutron style. You you know those little dogs <laughs> that lose both of their back legs and they put wheels there? Mm. Whatever oh. side the horse loses its leg on, you remove the other leg also to keep it alive, and then you put wheels on it. Now it can go hog wild. And it, like and a it chariot. It's not going to run too far, too fast. This with one is leg. nice. I, I love the idea of a horse yeah. and chariot, but you just yeah. need half a horse. Now we're now it's we're a, making money. The <laughs> brand new horse and buggy by Honda. By Honda. Honda <laughs> under fire for what people are calling the most <laughs> tone deaf, <laughs> the cruelest thing <laughs> since the Holocaust. <laughs> Just like no, you, there are ways you start to with healthy horses. horses. No, it's not a rehabilitation thing. You're just you're just cutting horses. Maybe in there's like a glue shortage that nobody knows about, and they just use any excuse to kill a horse and make glue out of it or something. They eat horses they, in many countries. They, what they do? French. The French yeah. love horses. Mm. To eat them, I mean, I would eat horse. I bet it's great for you. We you've you've had horse. It's in a lot of sausages. Oh, I've never had a horse. And it's delicious. You know mm-hmm. who eats a bunch of weird meat? The China. lead singer of Red Hot Chili Peppers. I saw this interview with him. I think it was on like Joe Rogan or something. Funny enough, I was so intrigued by this meat mm. situation. Um, he uh, he eats just all this exotic meat and like only exotic meat and like really gamey, like strange animals and stuff. And he has like a meat supply and he just I, I don't think he eats anything but that, if I'm remembering correctly. Is it a diet thing or just like a rich Yeah, it's like a diet thing. thing. He like he said he had all these problems um before like all these health things or something and he just started eating like all this weird meat and he's never felt better. He feels alive and virile and so a little bit oh. of a, a a liver king kind of thing there. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We had it a nice was, talk uh, about that guy, you know. Yeah the most obvious steroid user of all time <laughs> saying he's not yeah like the isn't it weird when things like get so popular that it's like guys it's good but don't go that far with it like remember in like 2011 like internet was just like fucking bacon and it's like yeah bacon's great but like it's embarrassing <laughs> how much you're playing into it it's it's a nice side for breakfast guys like, I don't even well, want to drive my filet. Look, our totally good friend right. Harley made a whole goddamn lifestyle. Oh, and, and I and love you, Harley. You love know, him to death. I love Harley, and I don't criticize for one nanosecond how he made his money. Go mm-hmm. fucking joke about I think bacon. he was in large part responsible for what Taylor's talking about, though. I think I, Harley changed the, 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 the scope of bacon worldwide. I, I feel like Harley <laughs> saw the bacon thing and personally ramped it up to levels it wouldn't have hit without him, but it was there without him to some extent, sure. too. Steen Anners of bacon. Mm-hmm. I think <laughs> and, uh, and it's cool and everything, but I'm with Taylor. Bacon's fine. I, yeah. But. A good slice like of hearty bacon with breakfast. Man, this is a nice little thing to have with my eggs. Like it's nice. But it's are you not, saying it's you know, overrated? It's yes. a, it's it's people overrate stuff that's already great. Like I bet it actually genuinely is. Like it actually is healthy as shit to eat liver. It's nutrient oh. dense. Like it's good for you. I like but is it turning you into the liver king? Like, no. Like it's gonna no, be like I, it's just but, don't but oversell it. Comes, it. Just be right? like it's healthy and it makes you feel better when you eat things that are healthy. Like, I don't know if you should be eating all that liver, man. That seems like a, I don't, I don't, I don't trust organ meats. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't. I, You're I don't, not supposed I don't eat... to eat entire livers. You just have <laughs> a little organ meat. Dude, chicken liver is great. It's delicious. Fried up. Yeah. Or, yeah. yeah. I think bacon is pretty wonderful, <clears throat> but it's rare that I've had good bacon. The only good bacon I've ever had is bacon that I've made. Um, I like it really crispy. I want it to break when I bite it. If I have to like 
tear it away like jerky. You that's not bacon. You're not you weren't done cooking yet. I need to yet. hold the very end of it. And if it bends, it's not done. Yeah, yeah. It should it should I, I'd be I'd I would prefer it blacker, uh more on the blackened side than on the greasy, floppy, like clearly unrendered fat side, like chewy mm-hmm. shit. Yeah. yeah, the unrendered fat. That's good bacon to me. If I can just What is unrendered fat? I don't think this is a term I'm not familiar so with. So rendering fat is when you melt the fat. It's a, it's a big part of cooking and and if you if the white hasn't is still if the fat is still white um in a lot of cases like on a steak or something, then that's unrendered fat. It's a sign that you did not achieve the internal temperature that's required to to eat this. Mm-hmm. Can bacon be microwaved well or is microwave yeah. bacon always shit? So, we used microwave bacon in our epic mealtime video. Uh, the one he did at my uh, at, at at my house just for okay. expediency, and because I had one oven, and uh, and there's we didn't have like a na- we had one oven, and it was not going to happen. So we we bought a bunch. It was awful. It was yeah. real floppy. Uh, it it tasted closer. It was more like a dog treat. I thought then <laughs> it looked really processed. Like all the all the pieces looked the same, and and bacon should be this. Yeah, not very uniform thing. I like when one end of it's super wide and the other end of it's super narrow because. They started with a pig and they did the best they could. Yeah. You know? <laughs> I like that rather than these identical, almost like Lego pieces of microwavable bacon. So that shit's gross. But yeah, bacon, most of the bacon that I've ever bought anywhere was gross. But if you bake bacon and the right tray in the right oven, it's fucking great. That mm. is true. Yeah, you have to bake it. Just like steaks. That like That's what I would cannibalize. If I was going to eat a man, I would eat his pork his uh his um his belly meat. His yeah. belly meat. Yeah, I would take his belly meat and I would make a sort of a human bacon out of it. I would slice it just like bacon, you know, like pork belly, if you will. Mm. And then I would take th- the thumbs uh, you, and I, I would want this big chunk of muscle here. And then you use the thumb oh, this uh, bone really? to snap it off. <laughs> and now you've got this little drummy, drumette, right? Like a, like a, oh, a bit like a lamb shank almost. Or, yeah. or, um, and, and you can have those wrapped in the, in the belly fat. What kind of person would you want? You don't want someone who's too lean and you don't want a big giant fat person. I think someone, you someone who's you, who used to lift weights but has absolutely let themselves go. I would find myself a Pacific Islander who'd been eating a lot of pineapple and uh and 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 a lot of pig himself. You know, that's a sweet meat. And uh so I think he would have a very high high fat um sweet flesh. And one of those Pacific Islanders, a Samoan man. Not like The Rock, like one of the real Samoans. That's, yeah. He's a little chunky. Oh, oh, oh. that guy who sings that. Uh, somewhere yeah. over the... That huge fat Israel, guy. Israel, come on, oh. go, 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 we go on. Yeah. <laughs> you, you fucking... If you cooked him in the ground like a pig, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> when you dug him up, oh my God. Dude, that... I re-listened to that song and watched the music video at least like once every couple months because it's such a great song. It's so good. Yeah. I, I, lo- I almost laugh every time I see the part in the music video where to get a full profile shot of him standing, he has to be <laughs> in a pool. Like to, to, to get him to be standing, he's in buoyant. the pool. And it's buoyant. like if you if you need the buoyant effect of water to achieve, you know, standing, you got problems. Like you got. You know to, what I do with that guy? The ukulele down and get to step in. Strap the pads on him, put him in goal. He's perfect. He got, mm. hey, they did an experiment on that on YouTube. Didn't pan out. Yeah, they no. they took a they took a sumo wrestler and strapped NHL pads on him, and then they shot on him, and. It was obviously people who didn't know anything about hockey because they put the wrong pads on the wrong side of his legs. But mm. it just reaffirmed what like people who play hockey know. Like you couldn't track it with your eyes unless you practiced. So the sumo wrestler was there just like not moving as the shots went in. They like should have gone go bigger. Did that There's go clearly in? someone big enough to stuff a hockey. At net. the end, they put two people so. in. Uh because it's you know, you, you've played hockey, it's six feet wide, four feet tall, mm-hmm. and unlike beer league, like the worst so guy accurate. in the NHL is tremendous like the biggest bruiser idiot who's seen as a, like a, a a goober give him enough time to shoot and that guy can so pick you more. guys know this better than i do but for the people at large who have you know good taste in sports and, and <laughs> don't watch hockey i've been watching all this playoff hockey and and uh, i saw this screenplay the other night where basically the guy wants to shoot and so his buddy is skating between him and the goalie so the goalie can't see the guy who's shooting on him Mm-hmm. And as the back of the screener's jersey is like fluttering, the puck is kind of coming through it. Yeah. Like, like, like he, 
he shot this puck into a hole of three dimensional space this fucking big from 20 yards away or something like that. It was insane what he did. I so the understand. idea that you could get a fat guy in there and then, yeah, I wouldn't be able to score because I can't make the puck go where I want. Mm-hmm. But Jesus, I, those guys seem to be surgeons with the puck. They just put it right <laughs> wherever they want it every time. When I was yeah. first learning to play, and then I, I got better than, than this, but when I was first learning to play ice hockey, there was no goalie. So they just laid a bench down in front. All you had to do to score was lift the puck two feet. Me and all my incompetent friends were like, best goalie ever. Yeah. <laughs> it's a brick wall for 18 inches. <laughs> Dude, that, that is a hilarious thing. Like when you teach someone hockey for the first time is like you watch someone who knows what they're doing and they lift the puck so easy and like it's not hard because you just mm-hmm. get the mechanics down. Like people get out there for the first time with a stick and they cannot like if someone put a gun to their head and was like, get the puck off the fucking ice, they'd be like, I can't, I can't. Like, <laughs> they just smack at it. They don't know the right angle. They just hit it harder and harder the wrong way. Like, and when I used to do that with like friends, it would make me think of like, oh, this is what I look like throwing a football. Oh. Like it, it just opens my eyes where I'm like, oh, this is why like if someone throws you a baseball, underhand that bad boy, ba- no, baseball, not really, but like uh, football, I, I have no confidence in my spiral. And so like, Underhand spirals like, easy you know though. what a, you know what a yeah. nightmare for me is out in public in a big group of people at the park I get hit in the <laughs> chest for the football and they say throw it back I go I don't understand you just no, walk go, over no, and no, hand it you, go, you give them one of these like, ah. I got a bad <laughs> meniscus and then just <laughs> sorry yeah no. No. <laughs> yeah I can't throw it but, like back it's either. weird those situations because like the other time it's like I remember being like damn. Anytime that it just pops up that like I'm out with friends and skating comes up like in high school, like what should we do? Winter day. Oh, let's go skating. It was always like, fuck. Yeah. Like I'm going to, I'm going to be good at this, mm-hmm. but then, you know, the not foot, not being able to throw a football things pretty We can all drive a stick shift. Right. Cause I feel like that's another one that would be really embarrassing if you couldn't do that. And someone's uh. like, yeah, just move it. You're like, Hey, your truck's in the way. Ah, oh, I've been drinking. He throws you the keys. Just move it. And you, you walk up and it's a, it's a manual and you don't know how. Mm-hmm. Like, can you imagine how scary that would be? <laughs> you're just oh like, grabbing drinks from the people around you. <laughs> well, you're asking him to move so you can leave his house. Oh. Like, that's like, like I'm just imagining like that scenario exactly, right? You're at a but you're at someone's oh, yeah. house and they're parked behind you and and they're oh, I'm so sorry, I didn't mean to park behind you, but I have been drinking. Here, feel free to move it yourself. I'm so sorry. And you know, what? <laughs> I want that to happen to me, but tractor oh, no. trailer. I have oh, never what? driven a tractor trailer. I've seen it on YouTube. I think I can do it. I can drive a motorcycle, which is basically a stick shift. I have, I don't know, 30 years driving an actual stick shift. So that's a thing. Maybe 25. And and I can drive a tractor, right? Tractor trailer. I have to be able to figure that out. So if hypothetically one of our wonderful um, um, patrons were to reach out to you and, and offer to let you drive their big rig, you know, from like Raleigh to Durham or whatever, You'd be down to do that, wouldn't you? I'd do that, yeah. 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 But would so, you do it in front of a bunch of other truckers who are like <laughs> critical of <laughs> judging you? Stuff? Yeah. You're right, right. All right. What are you not driving? What are you going to driveway? Dude, this is literally an episode of King of the Hill. <laughs> the most oh, embarrassing. I have to honk it. Yeah. Bring Colin with me. That'd be blast. Yeah, that'd be gotta be go fun. find you a lot lizard too. There you, you go. Be embarrassing aqua. Oh yeah, you would have to. You, would, Aqua, would you get a lot lizard so you blend it in? What's a lot lizard again? Prostitute. That's a uh, truck stop. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. Uh, yeah, to the end with the other truckers. Yeah. They're going to see so, right through so truckers. End up in have... a sex drive. Wait, what's that movie called with Candy Cane? You ever see that movie? <laughs> they're like they're pretending to be like a like a lot lizard, I guess, or something yeah. over the radio. They're... And they're yes. like, <laughs> and this one guy gets really in, like excited about. They make up this character, Candy Cane. He's like Candy Cane, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I, I so, actually know that. Mo- yeah. Then the, the trucker chases truck- him down. She yeah. dick teases this truck driver via CB radio and then goes so far as to be like, yeah, I'm at the wave front motel. Yeah. He shows up with a bottle of pink champagne and murders the guy that's in the room. And they're next door like, oh, shit, we just got somebody murdered. And so now that guy's just stalking them across the desert. Um, yeah. Zach probably yeah. just wrote the name but, of the movie. But a huge amount of that movie is remember. them like driving in silence Boy, right. and being like, quiet. And then, like, it's totally quiet on a desert road. And then, like, 
a semi is six feet behind him. Like, <laughs> da, 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 da. you know, you know, those semis yeah. fucking right Sneaking up, Sneaking up on you. Like, <laughs> yeah. like, they're so silent. I don't, but in Yellowstone, like, there's a number of fight scenes where like, like you and I are squaring off. And then someone comes galloping up on a horse and takes you out for me because I needed the assist. Yeah. And, and I'm like, you can't, horses don't sneak up on people in a gallop. Clip it, clip it, clip yeah. it, clip it, clip. <laughs> yeah, you hear that one coming. It's very No, I've never, I, I don't think I've ever even been in a, a big rig. I don't really think I either. I've been in some really big trucks that have like, like, uh, like dump trucks and um, like uh, those spreader trucks that spread fertilizer, those giant mm-hmm. things. But I don't think I've ever been in an 18 wheeler. I'm so interested in those. Like the cab, it's like a little apartment. You know, they like live in there for a long time. They got like internet. There's like a bed, like a TV, entertainment. Like I did, I, I on YouTube, you can watch like tours of like truckers' cabs and stuff. <laughs> it's yeah. so wild in there. It's YouTube's so cool. Rough. I've been down that rabbit hole. Let's do and it. And then YouTube's like, this guy's interested in truckers. Well, yeah. <laughs> lucky you. We're going to give you truck tours and truck information and Europe versus American trucks for the rest of your life. Have you ever yeah. seen the video? Uh, it's uh, the guy. It's a black trucker and he's driving along and, he, and his camera faces back at him. So you get to see you get to see him and the mm-hmm. passenger seat and that little curtain behind him and all that shit. Mm-hmm. And I think he's drifting asleep. Like slowly but surely, like he's drifting asleep, mm-hmm. and you're watching it happen. And over the course of ten seconds, he he nods completely off, and goes off road, and the truck is just flipping and bouncing. And all of a sudden, the curtain swings wide open, and a naked black woman with huge titties flies out, <laughs> and starts bouncing from roof to seat, roof to seat, Ooh, spinning around. And it's <laughs> and then they come to rest, and she pops up, titties everywhere bald head because her shit's falling off and she's so confused Mm -hmm. and it's the funniest video i've ever (laughs) seen in my life it's it's so good and no one died so it's okay (laughs) yeah that's good Uh, who knows what they hit though probably like a a school oh an actual school yeah i remember uh in the mid 90s like my grandpa was trucking and so like i was like five years old and i remember he let me like go up in one of the the semis you would drive around and like see the cab and like the mattress in the back and the two big seats and all the fucking buttons. I remember seeing, uh, like I remember being so surprised at the number of buttons and, and levers and like switches compared to like my dad's regular car. That was, that was something I was impressed by as a five-year-old. That, like seeing the cockpit of an airplane. Zach found yeah. the fucking link. Did, that, that's yeah. it. That's so good. God, I love that. God, I love that. <laughs> oh, that made my day seeing that again just now. Like I was feeling pretty shitty earlier. I don't know what happened. I I, I like to take like a thirty-minute nap before the show. Get get my energy levels up. Get ramped up to have a good time with you guys. And uh, I woke up and uh, like had low blood sugar or something. I was just like so shaky. I haven't I felt like that in a long time. It was no good. You gotta mm-hmm. eat something. Have yourself a little snack, a little candy bar, coffee, I had some juice. Oh, some juice. I'll take Are you it. able yeah. to just like go to sleep like whenever you want, just like like that? Yeah. No, it takes me forever to find God. Sleep. You know what I do? I just, so I go to it this ruins the YouTube algorithm, but I watch this YouTube live stream of thunderstorms and lightning, and it turns the screen. I love rain. Black. <laughs> your, your, your screen goes completely black. And and I've got a good sound system in my living room, so I crank the volume up pretty loud. I sleep in a thunderstorm that blacks out any ambient noise whatsoever. You can knock on my door and eventually I'll hear it, but the first two or three knocks, I'm, I'm, it's part of the fucking thunderstorm that I sleep in. It's so loud. If I want to sleep that. well, the thing that does right. it for me, turn the air conditioning too cold and have some nice thick blankets and I'm done. That's, yeah, sure. that's my environment. And drugs, Aqua, drugs just, help. Aqua, do you just lay there and just... Have weird thoughts and 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 scenarios and things and just thinking about stuff all the time. Uh yeah. Like sometimes I just like I don't know. Like I can't just like if I need to like do something, I can't just be like I'm a little tired. I'm gonna nap like for the next thirty minutes before this thing because then I'm like I know I have to do something, and if I know I have to do something, there's no way I'm going to sleep. But I, uh, you know, all those things help with sleeping, you know, the cold room, the little ambient noises, all that stuff, Mm -hmm. you know, um, but like, that's not a guarantee. The drugs are a guarantee that that, those really help for real. We we have really uh, powerful gummies and vapes from, uh, from our sponsor and they just put us to sleep. I can't take, I can't take the gummies if I'm going to do anything 
mildly productive. Like I wouldn't try to play video games on the gummies. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's too that's too productive to be, to be doing on gummies. <laughs> Woody, there's I know you're a stand your ground, staunch right wing kind of guy. <laughs> okay. I think you might be. You're you're down with the stand your ground stuff as, ah. as far as that goes, right? Like like I like that that I think that I have more right wing um, like issues than than you do. I think I am more on the right side of a lot of issues, not the correct side, but the right leaning side of a lot of issues than you are. And yet, I do like that we have this purple mesh that uh, that that supersedes the the party system for okay. castle doctrine. I'm yeah, a thousand percent on board. But stay in your ground can also be like, you know what? I was at the gas station. I was a little bit nervous, so I just started blasting. When maybe at the gas station, if you had the ability to retreat, you should have exercised that. Hmm. I don't know. Should it, have or or have to under or or it's murder. You know, that's the question, right? I ask because. I think I think it's like pornography. You know it when you see it. So it's always mm -hmm. good when there's when there's video evidence of these showdowns. I saw one the other day. The dude kicked the other guy's truck. The 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 man who owned the truck pulled out a handgun and put two in the guy's chest that fast. It faster than I just said it. He kicked the quarter pound of this Dodge. Dude went dro drew bang bang. And it's like holy shit. I don't think that's uh, stand your ground. You just killed him over a quarter panel. Then I saw this article, <clears throat> man convicted of murdering three boys in California after teenagers knocked on his door and exposed their buttocks at him. This guy's at home with his family and three uh, teenagers. I think they were like 16, but they could have been younger, 12, 13 or something. They had a car. Uh, they, for whatever reason, chose him to, to fuck with. So they were either going to ding dong ditch him, which is when you knock on a door and run away for those who don't you know, know, uh, or they're going to jump in his pool. You know, and then jump out and, you know, do something like that. Do something silly to him. Well, I guess they, they rang the doorbell and then showed him uh, their they ass. Moved him. Yeah. Well, then they hop in their Prius and, and drive away. Well, he gets in his car and chases them down. It speeds over 100 miles per hour, rams their car, and it goes off the road and hits a tree, and all three of them die. Hmm. And he so said, justice. first of all, I'd had over a dozen beers. Before the incident began. Second of all, I feared for my family's safety. I had to go eliminate the threat. You don't know when <laughs> they're coming back. I don't remember back. hitting them. What if his wife <laughs> saw a butt? Uh, what if his children saw a butt? Yes. That's, what he's right. Maybe these guys had maybe to be he'll stopped. be protected. But I think he's going to be protected <laughs> by one of those uh, well, those anti drag show laws since they've exposed themselves to his children. I think he'll be fine. Because you can what? just yeah, I no, doubt I'm it. I'm 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 <laughs> the Texas one I'm stuck crazy. on that that guy Jesus who posted on Jesus. Facebook that I may have to kill some protesters <laughs> today, and then he gets in his car, he speeds through red lights to get to the protesters, finds one holding a gun, says that he was scared for his life. The guy never pointed his gun at him, right? And it didn't even claim that he pointed his gun at him. He just starts murdering this guy who's carrying a gun at the protest. Yeah. And mm. uh he was convicted of murder, but then the governor of Texas was like, "Yeah, we kind of okay with killing Black Lives Matter protesters." So yeah, I don't like that pardon. because because where I stand on that on on any issue involving guns, I'm as far in the right side of the gun ownership column as I can be. So I, sometimes I'll see people show like people like transsexuals with guns that are painted with the tranny flag or whatever, and they'll be like, "Look at this! This is what they hate the most." And I'm like, "Oh, I love it so much." Fucking put a pussy on the end of that motherfucker. Make your silencer a big bussy. I would love that if it puts another gun in another fucking hand. You're I selling me on it. Shit. Tell me more. Yeah, the bussy <laughs> blaster. And it's... 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 It makes queeping sounds with his silence. It's just a silence. butthole flashlight on the end of an AR-15 <laughs> is all it is. But, but it doesn't fun. silence it. Yeah, I, I love that. Or when they show like uh, Black Lives Matter people like like standing with their guns, or when they like show a flashback to the Black Panthers in some state capitol building, all with their with their uh, G three rifles or whatever they were. I'm like, yeah, I love that shit. Yeah, most love gun people shit. love guns in pretty much every context. It supersedes but, all my other political views. Hmm. For a lot of people, it does. Yeah, yeah, guns are important and they're fun. Yeah, I even support women owning guns. What? Whoa! <laughs> no, well, I well, think with, okay, with their with their husband know we're a or brother show. or father's permission. <laughs> mm. Inshallah. Mm -hmm. uh, 
<laughs> if they can prove they don't have a clitoris, then yes, they can have a firearm. It's one or the other, ladies. It's one or the other. That's the, the hard rules of Kyle. He's, he's cruel and not fair. <laughs> North Carolina's concealed carry permit involves some competence. They take you to the range and is the easiest test. You have to hit all the targets from like nine feet, but at least you know how to operate the gun and you can like pick it up and put it down and only point it in the right direction and stuff like that. And I always thought that was a really good idea. And they also taught us the law, which wasn't completely intuitive. Like when it's okay to shoot and when you can't shoot, which has been updated since then. And I thought that was great. How do you feel about that? For concealed carry, should you have to take a course? A <clears throat> course? Well, the, the, the issue is that concealed carry was ever even another branch of law or another uh, way to view gun ownership or gun carry. It's, mm-hmm. it, it's, 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 um, it's, it, it's, a, it's a term that, that, that you don't even want to begin with. It doesn't matter how you carry it. It's that you can carry it, and you shouldn't need any kind of permit whatsoever. So it should be as, mm-hmm. as free as a candy bar. Just buy it, put it in your pocket, carry it around. Everything's fine. Um, I can't think of very many restrictions I would place on fire firearm purchases and ownership. I come at I mean, it from a stone. different place than you. So you were born into an environment which was always going to make you a gun expert. I was not, right? I got my first gun at like 35, 37, something like that. And uh, I needed training. I, I hired an instructor. I went to the range. I did that sort of stuff because I was not bored. Like my dad didn't have any guns. We didn't have any guns in the house growing up. <clears throat> Guys like me need to be taught some laws and, you know, just competence in gun handling. So I thought it was a good rule set. No, I, that I think explains it, why we came on and we landed on different I, places. I definitely think it is. I just don't think it should be federally mandated. I mm. think uh, I, I like small government, so I think that um, it should probably come down to your city ordinances, um, places of business, and how they do how they do things. Like, like I don't think a gun shop, sh- a gun shop should be it could you know offer those courses there. You should you should take them. It's like the motorcycle uh, thing, Woody. Like. You can just go get a learner's permit and start riding your fucking bike, right? That's what most people do. They go get a little learner's permit that they just use forever. My cousin rode a bike for years. He's never had a motorcycle license or a lesson, you know? Mm. <laughs> I, but, but we did the responsible thing. We got, like, lessons, and we're watching YouTube videos, and we try not to kill ourselves or anybody else. But I like that we had the freedom to go the other way, like, to, to just mm-hmm. go get the thing. And I think those two things are very akin because – you are putting people at risk on the road when you're riding that motorcycle, you know? Like you're you're a, you're a 600 pound missile moving 120. <sighs> I mean, you're right. Guided. You're you're totally No, I was you're partially right. Like I always thought that my motorcycle idiocy wasn't really putting other people at if I hit yourself, you and you're in your truck, on a motorcycle. I I'm risking your property. I'll go that far. Mm. But unless I hit a pedestrian, the other party's probably fine. Most Are you a maybe. gun guy at all, Aqua? Yeah, true. Or a motorcycle guy? I I'm, not, I'm, <laughs> I'm not a really a gun guy. I've shot guns. Um, shot an MP5 in the desert in Las Vegas. That was cool. Was it expensive? Pretty fun. I, I sometimes I, I go skeet shooting. It's kind of like golf. <laughs> that, yeah. That's fun. I like doing that. But I, I wouldn't call myself a gun guy, no, despite being, you know, semi known for playing Escape from Tarkov, which, yeah, you know, a lot of gun guys like that game because of all the gun stuff in the game. <laughs> When's the next but, wipe? Is that kind of... I, I don't know. Who knows? <laughs> this wipe is not so good. I'll tell you that much. Um, this is the least I've played since I started playing. Um, is really? it the game or is it you? Probably both. Okay. I, I mean, I, I've heard like there's all kinds of stuff. I mean, I'm not too involved or like knowledgeable about it, but like, you know, between that like cheater video that came out exposing mm. just how much cheating there is and then the sound is just like really bad and like this sounds like issues. every wipe to me like every yeah, wipe you hear the cheaters are outrageous <laughs> uh labs yeah. has been off limits for as long as i've ever had the game uh because that's just where the loot is so that's where the cheaters go um and then audio has been a complaint since i first got it's the game true too. do you know yeah. how much uh, play time do you have aqua just to give everybody some perspective <sighs> like, because a little bit over 2,000 hours, 2,500 yeah. maybe. Not not as much as you'd think. Maybe almost 3,000. Yeah. Um, yeah. 
That's a, a whole tremendous lot. amount. I don't I don't know what I have. I know I have over a thousand. Um, it's I've I've wasted infinite amounts of time playing that goddamn game. I played the beginning of this wipe uh, until I got to I don't know level forty three or forty four, and I, I usually burn out by then. My number is yeah. misleadingly high. Like uh, it, a better question would be how many raids, which I don't know the answer to. But I think the game would tell you I have like twenty five hundred hours or thirty five hundred something like that. And it's because I left the game on constantly to like mm. take Bitcoin out of the hideout. To <laughs> you know, I would I would just drop by the office quickly craft some bullets or something that goes somewhere else. And all day long, I'm making money, even though I'm not really playing. So I'm yeah. averaging literally like 24 hours a day. And it racks yeah, that's up true. Yeah. I think that's I had true. like 300 raids or something stupid because we were, I was mm. just, I, that was the, this is the first time I played solo. Um, and, and not wait, when you're waiting on people, you don't get any, any real play time in it and it's frustrating. Um, yeah, that sucks about the cheaters though. I saw that video and it was really mm -hmm. disheartening. Yeah. Um, a cheater was part of why I quit this wipe. I, I finally found uh, my lead X for therapist and was trying to get out with it. And a cheater like flying to, came and got me, you know, and ruined my ruined my Lying. life. And, I've only seen know, that once or twice. That's an advanced level of cheating. <laughs> I had a guy crazy. I was camping the extract on a interchange and a guy flies over my head and goes, hey, Kyle. And I go, my name, my gamer, my name on Tarkov is Kyle. It's FPS yeah. Kyle. So I was like, hey, Kyle, what's up? Are you the real Kyle? And I'm like, yeah, yeah. And it's, it's <laughs> just like what it's like a real hold up in real life. You know, you can't do anything back because he's he's God. Essentially, he's flying already. But, yeah. but long story short, he was like, oh, that's cool. He's like, would you like some free gear? And I'm like, yeah, I'd love some. And he's like, be right back. And he flies into the, the map and takes somebody's <laughs> shit and flies back with it. And like, du -du 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 you got like one of those trained crows. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like a train. He, he like dumps it all out for it and gives it to me. And he's like, oh, I like your video, blah, yeah. blah, blah. Where you give did him this a and that. And like, I was like, okay, man, cool. I, you shouldn't be cheating, though. It's kind of ruining the game. He's like, yeah, I know, right? <laughs> he, like, he, away. Away. he like Mary Poppins away. Dude, what a and Sigma male. <laughs> so that was, that was either the beginning of, of this the white that's currently going or like middle of the white before. This current white, I, I know because it was only a couple months ago. Um, I was in the darkness on Lighthouse. Like no one should be able to see me unless they've got the good nods or thermal. So no should, well, no one should be able to see me. And I hear someone running up on me and I start cooking an impact grenade. And the guy goes, whoa, 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 whoa. Put that away. And I'm like, what the fuck? How does he know I have it out? He can, you know, he's seeing me through the wall and everything. He's like, he's like, I'm a good cheater, not a bad cheater. I kill <laughs> cheaters and I give people their gear. I just killed three. You want their shit? And I was like, pin back in. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, I was like, honestly, I just want to mark these tanks. He's like, no, no, no. Take this stuff. I don't want it. And you know it's like level six armor and like like a Giselle and good oh, yeah, shit. I guess if you kill so, cheaters, they're gonna yeah. have good stuff. Yeah, it takes exactly. a good guy cheater to stop a bad guy cheater. That's what he said. That's what he's he's like. I hate cheaters. I've had enough of it. I'm gonna be a vigilante against cheaters yeah. in Tarkov. And that's you know they should have like an internal team that handles it called like admins or something. And like they're not even cheaters because they work for it and they shut that stuff down. <laughs> You know, I guess that's not a possible for Tarkov. Do they not care about the cheating? They just don't fucking care. Just whatever. I don't think they can stop. I don't think they're, they can stop it. They've altered the game. The game has been altered so many times in order to stop the real money transactions and the cheating that I think yeah. that they legitimately want it to stop. They just can't because it's so things. profitable. One, it's a grindy game. Like Kyle said, it's profitable. Mm -hmm. So the incentives to cheat are so much higher than they are in Call of Duty where like... yeah. It, cheating means you have mm -hmm. like what one good game that didn't mean anything sure. no no in this game cheating has like uh pers persistent pervasive what am i looking for uh like it doesn't go away it starts with a p uh um, permanent persistent perpetual perpetual uh, maybe i was going for it doesn't matter anyway it has effects that go on and on and on and it and that helps you a ton uh and then i had, oh oh also it's a russian game and these russian developers are incompetent they, they, <laughs> Yes, this is true. And they just don't have like if they were if they were in fucking California, there'd be so many programmers. You throw a rock and you hit a programmer and there's someone out there that knows how to design a game to make it harder to cheat. Meanwhile, these Russian dumb fuckovs just dump everything in the client. 
which is just begging to be cheated. And putting Did you add an shit? ovs to the end of fuck ovs to, <laughs> yeah. to make fuck them? Because oh, like they're Russian. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Slavic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, a little racism mixed in. I like <laughs> and uh, they put all the logic into the client that you have on your computer, which just makes it ripe for cheating. Like, oh, is my mm -hmm. game speed limited at you know one times normal? Now it's three times normal. And because it's not server side, you just start going faster. And all you need is a bootleg client and the thing does much better. I, I have some background on this because Minecraft is built like that also. Minecraft was really never meant to be a multiplayer game. So people just download their own clients and they start cheating. So as the admin, you're here trying to detect like, well, you know, it's fishy that you have 12 headshots in a row. How many headshots before you call someone a cheater? You mm -hmm. have friends who can probably get four all the time, six occasionally. Do you ban them right? when they get seven headshots in a row? Uh, moving quickly, you'd think that'd be an easy one to catch. Well, network connectivity is buggy. So sometimes, you, you know, a, yeah. a guy jumps 100 feet and that means he's cheating. Sometimes it means that whether it be his fault, the internet's fault, or my fault as the server owner, Packets got dropped, and it I looked like fly you hack all the time on on uh, Rust, for example. That's a good example of that. Anytime okay. you're, um, you know, when you're interacting with things that are moving in that game, boats and jumping in general, in certain situations, it'll hit you with a fly hack, and it disconnects you briefly, and then mm. connects you right back. It's it's a it's such a good system. So to, when you're Tarkov or you're Woodycraft, you're just trying to detect behavior that's too impressive to be true, and that's. That, that means you let mild cheaters go and mild cheaters are way better than honest players. So, yeah, <clears throat> mm -hmm. it sucks too, because I love Tarkov. I love that grind rust too. Like those are the two games where cheaters have upset me the most, like, like really bummed me out and ruined my evening. I was yeah, like, it affects you so much in those games, you know? And also I want to be like, Hey man, why don't you want to play with me? Like, Let's compete against one another on, a, on a, an even playing field. Why do you want to cheat against me? That's not. Yeah, that's no fun. Might lose. Yeah, might and, lose. Then, and then I'd be driven to get better. That's the whole point. That's the fun part of games. Oh, I gotta lose. If I played a game I was just good at, I'd quit. If I was just, if I was just the best at something, you know how awful yeah. that must be. Shroud must hate playing games. <laughs> He's just the best at every game. Have you ever cheated? He's game? like one punch man. He's lost all like happiness in life. <laughs> yeah. Everywhere he goes, he's headshotting things. Has anyone here ever cheated in a game? Only yeah. single player. Yeah, yeah. Ones. Um, I'm trying to think. In um, in Rust, we used a macro one time, um, but we didn't use it against people. We we're using it against the, to like take oil rig and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, and it was just a thing where you would just press a button and it would try to like fix the recoil. It was buggy as shit, and we didn't really use it much. In but Xbox it, Borderlands, they used to be... I don't know how people did the cheat, but they would, like, chip their Xbox or something, then sideload. I, I don't know. But the end result is some stranger gave me a shield that was... Yeah, J-tagging. That was just ungodly good. So now I can, like, kill... And it's, it's a single-player game, so I'm just killing AI. But, yeah. uh, you know, it was kind of fun to have this shield that made you <laughs> that's not like, invincible. Like, you had to try a little, but only a it's little. It's more like modding. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's like modding or like using a game shark, you know, on like the N64. That That's oh, yeah. the most the cheating game. I did. And that, that was fine. <laughs> I think <laughs> like cheating isn't cheating until it's like in an online setting or like competitive oh, yeah. setting. Yeah, I, but, I'll say this. I can't imagine cheating in Tarkov. Like, like, like I would no. never do that. I, I really wouldn't. Uh, the the fun part of Tarkov is that awful grind. It's it's about mm -hmm. how long it takes me to get a Salewa. So when I find one, it, it means something, you know. So yeah. if I was just magicing up a bunch of Salewas, I wouldn't be having any fun. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Did Nintendo ruined... make Game Shark? Like, was that their own product? I don't mm -hmm. know. It it was. Oh. It's so interesting because just the the physical application of it. You know, it seems like they might have, but I have no idea. Everything, I, I think, yeah, everything yeah. plugged right in. I remember, like, I saw it in like a Nintendo magazine, and I got one when I was at the store because I saw one. And like in my head, I'm like, like fucking six years old. Like Pokemon Red had just come out, maybe seven years old. And I remember thinking, like, damn, like they are probably not happy. This is out. 
Like, <laughs> like as if as if Nintendo cared like how you made like, Bowser's game. pissed. Yeah, oh, yeah. God. they probably I, are like they're scratching their heads. Like, how do we get around this Game Shark stuff? These kids are leveling up their mode. Pokemon without grinding. I thought of a Tarkov thing I did, and I bet you guys might be guilty too. I had an Nvidia card. I watched a YouTube video that told you like just the best settings to help mm. you see better, like a filter or something, maybe gamma. I don't remember how I did it, oh. but I felt like I could see in the dark slightly better than the game wanted you to. My, um, that's just optimized. My, yeah, game is, like, uh, my gamma and stuff is, uh, was so goofy. So I could, I'm, I only play at night. That's, uh, <laughs> that's what I do. I only play at night. So uh, I, I fool with those settings until my whole screen is these shades of like green and purple and pink. It's using those colors instead instead of RGB, and so you can see at night in the game and, and a little and better than everyone else. Can't see you. Yeah. Oh, way better. Like like, I don't know how many times people just running past me and I'm just like motherfucker. You know you install but it, but the, the game. game was like shit. They're like adjust this slider until you can barely see the shadow. Fuck you. Turn the lights on. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah, always do that in for... scary games. <laughs> yeah, you just oh, you're not scary. Scary. You're not <laughs> <laughs> I like to be able to see personally in yeah. games. It, like any any in-game setting, like I'll crank that shit all the way up. But like I'm not one of these people to be clear, but some people say like if you use anything outside of the application that's considered like cheating or whatever. Like mm, that's I, I've, I've done it too in rust. Like I did the like NVIDIA thing. I was like playing with someone who's like, Oh, like it was dark at night. And someone was just like, Oh, just do this with your like NVIDIA settings. You'll be able to see. And I was like, I tried it. I used it for like a day and then it's just got was too annoying better? switching back and forth. Oh yeah. It totally helped at the time. It was like yeah. a huge difference, yeah. but but that's not just, I'm just too lazy oh, to I do shit had, like that. And oh, you know what other cheating? I had a modded controller. Ah, for, I never for did that. Four. I had a yeah, scuff yeah. controller, which is kind of modded. But I um, no, I would on run the rapid fire <laughs> in Modern Warfare Two. If you worked, if you put your settings on colorblind, you could see stealth bombers on the radar, and I always mm. did that. Like it was just a bug. Mm. Damn. <laughs> and you didn't share that, huh? Oh, I made a video about it. There's oh, okay. money to be made here, Taylor. <laughs> yeah, I guess I missed that one. <laughs> yeah, and, and uh, like halfway through the Modern Warf, the, the Call of Duty Four cycle, I, I ordered one of those modded controllers, and this, and this is before I think they made like legitimate modded controllers. So it was a regular wired controller, and you could see someone had drilled a hole in the back of it, and there was a new button sticking out of the back of the controller, and that was the switch to turn it on and off for rapid mm -hmm. fire. And so the uh, the G3 and the Deagle would just brrr. and so it was like it was like a weapons pack. I saw I, saw, I looked at it like DLC. It was great. <laughs> yeah. Did, how really, was the recoil on those? Really good. I mean, I mean the, the Desert Eagle was like for up close, right? You just spray. It does, it's fifty damage a bullet, so you just shot them. them, and it's fully automatic. So you just do, 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 starting at their knees. But with the uh, the G3, it was a pretty controllable, fully automatic 308, which called you know, and it was so have. obvious. When you got killed with one, yeah, by the yeah, you, you know, people will be like, "I oh, just pull the trigger really fast." It's like, no, you don't. They, it literally doesn't let you. If you go ah, as fast as you uh, can on the G three, it doesn't actually shoot as. That's fast because as you of can the go. controller. It yeah. that that was a that was a patch they put in um, later. At first, it did. There there wasn't originally a fire limiter on the semi autos in Call of Duty Four. So the M the M twenty one sniper rifle was another good one because you've got a scope sniper rifle that goes. You know. and the M14 with the ACOG that was it was okay it, kind of fun you, to goof around with that was such a fun game I'd love to run some some TDM or something in COD 4 I mean we can uh, I mean yeah we got remastered, the remastered it a couple years ago yeah I need uh, talking about the cheating thing like a good example of like just not actually cheating but benefiting yourself is what we did in Warhammer where like we went in and we went into like the game file, changed what zoom is default and how far you can zoom. And yeah. it it legitimately gives you an enormous edge over people who don't have that because you yeah. can see so much more of the map, but it's not considered cheating by the community at all because everyone does it. Yeah, use the debug camera mode so that you can zoom all the way fucking out, which sounds like an easy thing in an RTS. You'd be like, yeah, just zoom out. Nope, that's as high as we'll let you go. And you really want to be able to see the whole battlefield and zoom around and stuff. So yeah, like like changing those files really fixes that game mm -hmm. in a lot of ways. I uh, I watched a video yesterday. It that was called. It was about all the changes that they've released for Dark Tide. I was hoping that Dark Tide was playable now, 
And at the end of the video, he was like, yep, still not playable six months in. I was like, fuck. <laughs> I can't believe that game still Were any of the changes board. significant? No. 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 no That's been, embarrassing. Like, that would have been such a fun game to... It play. was fun to play at first, I, but but you know it's a quarter of a game. It, they, it's it's really frustrating. Yeah. I'm still liking Warhammer Three. Like I don't want to go to another game yet. I just need to get back on and play more. But now that playoff hockey's happening, I'm I'm distracted with that too. Uh, yeah, playoff hockey, <laughs> man. It's just such a. I love it. You know, I, I I like when it's on television and I watch it. Yes, he does. <laughs> I've been trying. Man, I'm, I'm impressed. So like hard. in the middle of games, sometimes you're like, you'll t- Kyle will text and be like, "Damn, this guy's falling a lot." And I'm like, "I'm mostly he's actually of- like, you're, I know you're joking, but like the fact <laughs> you said that is like, he's actually watching this enough to have seen that guy eat shit a couple times, or at least enough to notice the announcer go, Hughes slipping on the blue line again." Like they had mm-hmm. one of the worst Slippery. national anthems I've ever heard at a professional sporting event. That's right. Uh, I mean, I. I, I want to say at my high school football games, we did a better job because that lady couldn't fucking sing. No, that she was, was a bad singer. Yeah. That was embarrassing. I like when they cut to the crowd and people are just like, Neh. Yeah, like, oh, come on, like that. <laughs> I'm putting my hat back on. <laughs> yeah, there's no one in the whole city who can belt it out a little better than that, really. Yeah, it was real bad. Yeah. But, um, and it that was, happens uh, a lot, I feel like. Just like, Really, really bad up. singing during the national anthem. It never sounds quite right, you know. Very rarely. Yeah, the they all Super try to Bowl put their own great. little flavor. The, the Super Bowl this year was amazing. I can't think of that guy's name, but I think I cried a little. I think I cried a little. And they cut to some of the players, and they're crying too. Like there's a bunch of people crying. It was a, it was very well, good rendition. It was amazing. It was one of the best I've ever heard. Yeah. I don't like when they switch the people around a lot. Like every mm-hmm. single time at some events, they have a different person singing. Like. The Blues found a big fat black guy who belted it out like a goddamn titan, a, a king. And they were like, How about you're just the anthem guy forever until Ooh. you don't want to be the anthem guy anymore? And he's like, Yeah. And so every game for like 20 years, it was this guy belting it out. Everybody loved him. He did a great job. And then he retired. I like now, that. Now someone else has had to fill in those shoes. You know, and he's I like going to be hard. Just having yeah. a, a home filled. Uh, I wish that umpires were like that. I wish that because I wish they were part of your like community almost, umpire? you know what? Yeah. The home umpires. So yeah. you'd have to have like two umpires, like some guy going like, yeah, you'd, you'd, no, yeah, you'd have a home and a visitor crew and then it would be like a Supreme court, just Supreme court type situation. Well, that's kind of fun. I like that. And they'd be held accountable. I, I feel like they should be held accountable at times. There should be like an overseer, a, a representative from the commissioner of baseball could perhaps come down and split decisions you or maybe the this. crowd could cheer to change the <laughs> like, like, I don't know guys, was <laughs> he safe? <laughs> <laughs> it's, got that thing up there. it's like pump it up. And it's like got the, the, the dial going to the, to the 10, almost there, going back, almost there. I don't know. We <laughs> have to sell like 8,000 <laughs> Nathan's level. hot dogs to get him in there for safety. I don't know. <laughs> the, the, the people in the stands can do some sort of physical challenge <laughs> to represent yeah. their team, which way Pex to call goes. tripping to 8055. <laughs> <laughs> that's what you think happens. Get the beach the, the ball razor. all the way around this the crowd yeah. <laughs> without it hitting the ice, and you, it's a you, penalty. Uh, Aqua the and Kyle, had you guys are both start. baseball fans. What happens, or is there a punishment for umpires who fuck up in a game? Like if if a umpire makes a, a genuine call, not something that like one fan base you get screwed. Something that like the baseball community is like that was a ball. He called it a strike. That cost the Astros the game. Maybe Astros no, is the wrong team. I nothing know not nothing like. ever happens as far as I know. I mean, the other day there was an instance where I think that I'm going to get it wrong, even though I saw it three times, but the uh, the catcher was throwing the ball to the umpire. The umpire was throwing the ball to the catcher, and the umpire thought that the catcher was trying to make him look bad by not catching it or making it so he couldn't catch it and immediately threw him out of the game when all it was was the catcher wasn't paying attention with his hand out. And it's like, dude, you just threw a guy out of the game for literally no, because you misunderstood the situation. And there's no, there's no recompense. There's no get it back kind of thing. No, they they it's stick shitty. by those guys. I've never heard of anything happening. And for that matter, in the UFC and in, and in boxing, where you see things that the way those spet, those sports are bet on round by round, sometimes like live with the live betting, mm-hmm. it it's man, it's it's like a criminal conspiracy. It's like it's it's like uh, in the movie Snatch, how you got brick top. And walking out and everybody's like, what the fuck, Brick Top? You said he was going to take the time. It's like that in professional boxing. It's it's so yeah. akin to that that you can see it from the TV cameras. You can see it. 
like, like some of those scorecards that come in, you don't need to be a boxing expert. You can, you can count punches. You can count hey, punches uh, and, and know the fix is in. One of the longest tenured refs in the NHL got fired like two or three years ago, maybe two years ago, because he got caught in the middle of a game. Like everybody knows that refs like aren't 100% objective. They kind of try and call it even. Like if they've called five things on one team, they're going to be looking for something on the other team to try and even it up. And he got caught on a hot mic in the middle of a game, like talking to another ref being like, I got to get one on Nashville. I got to get one on Nashville. They've got too many over there. I'm going to get one on Nashville. And like, then he what? called a penalty on Nashville and it went out and there were, it was like Oof. the whole community was like, yeah, we kind of knew this happened, but we didn't know it was like, I'm got, I got to call one on Nashville or like something like almost to that extent. And yeah, he got fired. It's like riling people on reality television up or something, you know? So they like fight yeah. or something. In the episode. I, like, I, I, empath- I empathize drama. with his like situation too. Cause like you're trying to keep it calm and if one team is slashing six times in a row, like it almost makes you uncomfortable, especially like if you're at that team's home, like yeah. it, seen, it would be weird. I've seen whole conspiracy videos talking about how the NBA is, uh, has predetermined endings and stuff. Um, and, and talking about how the scores move uh, together and, and uh, I don't, I don't give a shit cause you know, it's not my thing, the NBA, yeah. but, but it seems like a lot of people believe that that sport is fixed. I like, think refs like, like more than caught. the average sport, I would say. Yeah, it didn't a couple refs get caught? Yeah, refs have been caught fixing games like recently, 2020 something, or maybe 2010 something. Wow, but, you know, the like, NBA like specifically? Yeah. Huh. And Zach probably knows all about this. But I guess NBA is it, like, I don't know the rules of basketball that well, but I know if you call like two fouls on someone real quick, you kind of hamstring them for the rest of the game, or maybe it's three fouls, something like that. So you, you get five, your six one throws you out of the game. And, you know, so if you're sitting there with two or three fouls, especially if it's only halfway in the game, then you need to start playing passively Mm -hmm. and it's easier to score against you because you can't take any more fouls. And then I'm sure the NBA's response was like, we got him like George W. Bush, like mission accomplished. We got that (laughs) one guy. We took care of it. All the other refs are great. That's exactly what they did. And Mm -hmm. there's some other refs that kind of like seemed guilty also. And you know, of course, fans, they dig into the stats like crazy. And they're yeah. like, man, this guy calls so many fouls against the Suns. It's, this is a statistical anomaly. Yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I, mean, I think mostly the better teams win. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like, I, usually. I don't know how they could, beyond, uh, you know, calling additional fouls, like how they could fake any other, like any other part of the game, you know? Like, I don't yeah. know. I, you, it's hard to make, like, you know, actual gameplay intent, like taking a dive or or mm-hmm. gameplay. <laughs> it's like a yeah. gamer term. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> Basketball gameplay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so like it, to make that look like intentionally like, you know, bad on purpose or like miss, like taking a dive or whatever. Yeah. They're basically everything. just like soft constructing it. Like, oh, this guy's good. doing really well. You got to just calm him down. I was going to say basketball is unique this way, but I take it back. It seems like every sport, most fouls are in the gray area, right? Like, Taylor, can you hold a guy back a little bit in hockey, right? If, sure. if I hook you with my stick and, and try to get a free ride, there's like an instant of, of that that's allowed. And yeah. then a little too much and it becomes not allowed. So the ref could really decide to call stuff or not call stuff all game mm-hmm. long. There's opportunities to just be a yeah. little stricter. And it's about consistency in that way. Where like if the ref calls some like really strict tripping in game one mm-hmm. and then he just lets them play in the second period and they're beating the hell out of each other and then like a strict uh hold in the third, it's like, well, there's no consistency here. Like you either need to establish early, like you're gonna call it like real strict, which I would not I would as a viewer, I don't want him to do that, or you like let him play in the playoffs. And like I watched just last night, uh a player slashed another player in the back of the leg so hard that like he fell and then another player tripped the slasher. And I could almost see the ref in real time be like, that equals out like that. (laughs) (laughs) All right, we're going to keep the play moving. That evens out. You're both bad. Like, (laughs) and then kind of kept it flowing. Whereas in a regular season game, that probably would have been matching minors. And so like, as long as it's consistent, I'm good. In basketball, when you dribble, you can't hold the bottom of the ball. I'm not sure if you can hold the perfect side, but it gets to be like what's a carry is such a gray area. You could call it almost every possession or never. And 
both would be kind of within the bounds of basketball. Um, and then the step, like you're allowed, I think like one or two steps or one and a half steps after you stop dribbling. But then there's the gather step. And the gather step is another gray area. Like, was he still dribbling and gathering the ball up? Or was that his first step? Mm-hmm. And the way that these players have the gather so figured out, it seems like they can run in all the way from the three-point line nowadays. And yeah, it's just like, that. it's football, but at the end, it's basketball. Oh, I said it backwards. It's min-max yeah. for sure. <laughs> Like yeah. th- every once in a while, they need to make changes in sports to like keep it in the spirit of it, where they're like, "Hey, you, I get it, you're gathering, but dribbling is so much of what we're doing here, guys. Like, <laughs> like, it's, it's, it's so it's such a key part of it. Like, we got to make sure you're doing it. Scoring yeah. in basketball is up like crazy. So prior to like this week, last week, mm. I think three players over 33 had ever scored 40 points in the playoffs. Right. Over 33 years old, you can't get 40. That's ridiculous. Three people did it last week. Like Jimmy wow. Butler, Steph Curry, and another guy. That makes uh, me feel good. <laughs> As a 34 year old, that makes me feel pretty good. It like yes. it occurred to me that like everybody on TV, you know, is playing a sport for the most part is younger than me at this point. This happened a few years ago, actually. I remember that face, yes. Yeah. And, I don't uh, like it. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of tough. <laughs> At 30, you can convince you, even though you know you're past your physical prime, there are definitely a lot of athletes having the career years mm-hmm. at like 30 to 32 even th- maybe not 33 like they they're not their best best anymore but 30 to 32 they have this right balance of remaining athleticism and game experience and you know game intelligence that they kill it they, they kill it you hit 36 and you're like yeah yeah really no one's peaking anymore yeah and you're winding yeah. down <laughs> yeah and I only talk a couple about more years if i <laughs> It's if true. I really try, I could do yeah. like make something happen. Maybe then, like thirty-eight year olds right now. LeBron James is having a fantastic year. He's having a fantastic playoffs, and he's thirty-eight years old. But when you're thirty-eight, and they're like, "This guy's a medical miracle. Can you believe he's even playing?" Yeah. You're like, "Ah, oh, fuck." <laughs> just, <laughs> it's gotta get in your head, <laughs> dude. What I like now is like I'll check to see who like the Blues are trading for, and it's some guy who's like ten months younger than me, and I'm like, "What are we trading for this old man? Like, we, <laughs> he's got injury history. What's he doing? Like, uh, like we trade Tarasenko, and I'm like, thank God we got rid of that guy with his injury history, Mister. Ooh, younger than me. Like, <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, it is weird. And then it's at a younger age than that when you realize you're not special, right? Like, <laughs> if you're like me, somewhere like I had stages. We talked about this last week where it was like, I figured out I'm not a superhero. I figured out I'm not an Olympian. Yeah. I figured out I'm really just a dad that's not that interesting <laughs> at all. <laughs> you peel back that onion real quick. Oh, <laughs> yeah. There's just, just a husk left. Not much. You realize yeah. you're just a guy that likes normal things, <laughs> living a normal life <laughs> yeah. in a normal income bracket. <laughs> you know what? That Taylor Swift, she's pretty good. <laughs> she is. She is. That, <laughs> that old lady. <laughs> she's been around uh, for decades. I was just liking normal yeah, things. Old, yeah. Is. Yeah, it is. It is weird because you remember as a kid how it was every one of I remember like it was every one of my friends like number one plan was professional athlete (laughs) or or army man. Really, that was the two I can remember of friends, army man or professional athlete. And very few have become professional athletes. Have any? That's impressive. If any of your childhood friends have, that's like Uh, unique, I feel like. Yeah, not real ones. No, not not yeah. like real ones who like you could be like, yeah, watch a highlight of this guy. He made it to the show. Like, no. no. Did they no make way. like a career anyone? out of it for a short amount of time at all? Or I, I knew a couple people who made a That's career out of good. it, but That's it was the honest. kind of career where like they made like league minimum for a bit. Mm. And that was about about it. But that's a good amount of money. The best but, football player at my high school played in the NFL for some period of time, five years, seven years, like like more than average, because mm. I think average is like two or three. But uh, he was never a star. And now he's <laughs> what's a coaching career like if you're 50 and you make it to like linebacker coach at a D1 school? Are you 
a good coach? Like, are you succeeding in your career? What if your linebacker oh. coach at the pro level? I, I would imagine like D one, like that's pretty successful. Like, I mean, it probably depends on the uh, what school too. Like Georgia, mm-hmm. like that dude, like there he's probably getting paid well. Like he's like the best. If you're doing it for Southwest North Appalachian State or something like less so like the lower Georgia? tier of D1. I was saying what he was saying like what level of success is like a coach like a like a defensive coordinator for Georgia. Like or a defensive coordinator what was his question was the defensive coordinator for like a D1 school in the world of sports is that like a really successful guy and I was saying it depends on if you're like Georgia's defensive coordinator or if you're some no name D1 school. I could be wrong D2 but school. um could be wrong here, but I I thought the coach is the head coach is very often the defensive coordinator in college. You football. could be right. My, I have no that idea. That's what I thought. <clears throat> um, I don't know. I think that those guys get paid millions of dollars, even if the you're like the, the no. assistant special teams coach is the guy that I'm talking about for the Browns, the Cleveland Browns. That guy makes a couple million a year, right? I, I would say know. a couple, oh, I thought maybe that was a few discussion. hundred thousand. I don't know. If he makes a couple would, million, good for fucking him. I would guess he makes under 400, but I'm just guessing. Oh, I don't know about mm-hmm. NFL. That's a good That's a good point. I, I would think, though, like if you're, I don't know, Georgia's offensive coordinator, or like, like Georgia's special teams coach, how does that guy not make like a million dollars a year or something? There's just so much goddamn money in that. Yeah. But football is one of those sports, at least in the pros, where like the guys who don't make much – don't make much even compared to like the baseball, the hockey, the basketball guys who don't make much like league minimum in the NFL is dog shit compared to the other major sports. Google said assistant special teams coach makes 400 grand. No, a special teams coach makes 400 grand. So an assistant coach, you know, sports are though. If you go by average, like, like Mm, there's, there's going to be some huge disparities because you, you see those guys who get, Mm-hmm. I don't know, tens of millions of dollars to coach. It's it's pretty great for them, I guess. Uh, did you see that law in Japan? It's very upsetting. What did they do? Law in Japan, what happened? <sighs> well, they're cracking down on upskirting. You know, for a long time, it's uh, been perfectly legal mm-hmm. to... Uh, to perfectly to, legal and even encouraged. To, to go out into the the world and take take pictures of what you see. You know, that's all they're doing. They're, they're taking pictures of what they see. And now, suddenly, they say that, oh, no, that not that. What's next? What, what, what about next the vending machines where you can buy like used underwear? Is that still a thing? Nobody's I think that, that was a thing that's there, in their right? Constitution. That, I I only know of it because I've seen it online, but I don't know if it's a thing where it's kind of like a Pepsi machine or if it's like only like there's one know. place in Kyoto <laughs> that that is a tourist spot for for I, panties. Yeah, like you ever go to a sleazy bathroom and there's like like lube and. Um, yeah, condoms condom. in the in one of those old timey quarter machines. You guys yeah. don't you just know. use soap. You use some high end bathrooms. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that powdered no, soap I, from high school. I trust <laughs> Japan. I trust Japan to do what they think is right. So if that's what their king or emperor or however they work, if that's what he they, wants, they have an emperor. Yes. Boom. If that's what the emperor wants, Woody hates it so much. He's boycotting. He, he's checked out. Show in, no, in I think. Head. Um. I think that that's also a place, you know, where they have the women only cars on their trains, you know. From what because I've heard about what trains the upskirt like, yeah. photography and the molestation and the groping. Molestation. That yeah. Could be a, yeah. yeah, cuz people are like they like are so crammed in the train it happens like more often or something. Yeah. You like, could like I think it's just cultural. get robbed and be like, "It's that guy. It's the guy behind me right now. Stop him." And like you wouldn't like cuz you've seen the videos of those Japanese, he's got guys dark hair and, and dark school, eyes. He's about think, five foot seven. Yeah, he's dark hair, dark eyes, five six. Like <laughs> it's like we're gonna get him. Like you've seen the guys whose whole job in Japan is they wear like bellhop outfits and they push people into trains. Yeah, that's what and, I'm like, talking about. So I thought like, I heard if you're something getting about roped that. or robbed on a Japanese train, like how do you? you just a mysterious you even know who hand it's just from a, a, it, you're just a well, man. You stand man. your ground and you draw your sword. You can't. You, there's no way you, well, you can't even. Know you who, can't even move who your arms. Did it even? Mm, you know, that's the problem. You have to cut. You have to start start cutting. Yeah, I'm with Kyle. You'll be able to move your arms. You just need to get a few kills first. Yeah, yeah, sure. No, can, not, maybe. Uh, you. I feel like you misbehave on on public transit in Japan. They're gonna like be waiting for you there's at the. Always really? some guy out there with a longer yeah. sword. Uh, yeah, or somebody <laughs> with a an extra double a double katana like uh, Darth Maul. <laughs> Remember? Oh, like like, like he had, well, he had the whole. 
I just get that 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 can't be superior to a sword, right? That double-ended staff where if you touch yourself with either end, you die. Depends yeah. on your skill level. Uh, he, does he make it work? Small, <laughs> and I have not seen that movie since it came out in about 2003. But I do remember that even at the time, I was like, "That's stupid." Like, if he would have had two individual swords, he could have fought off both of them way easier than if he just got this static thing going. Cut my own leg off in like half a second. Oh, yeah. It would totally oh, yeah. happen. Or just myself. cut myself in half. I'm convinced, you know, when he gets cut in half by qui or Obi-Wan, one of them. No, Obi-Wan. Mm-hmm. And he, like, falls down the hole. It could have been, you know, self-inflicted. Who knows? You know, they, like, cut it. They cut the camera. It could have happened. Now, you guys remember those movies. I have not seen it in so, so, so long, episode one, that I remember the pod racing being very cool. Today is May 4th, was by the way. Was it cool or was it not cool? It All right, so angry. let me say this. It wasn't cool. <laughs> <laughs> this is a cultural thing. We all saw the movie, but probably the same week. Yeah. But, but I was getting dropped off by a friend's mom. Um, Taylor probably was the same. eleven. Yeah. Taylor was I eleven. His mom was there, work. Yeah, and I'm you're there with friends from work. So very different viewing experiences. Me and a buddy are watching it versus Taylor's mom's probably there, like yeah. watching it with him. And then and then you and your buddies. I thought Star Wars had been talked up so much, even in 1999, that I thought of it as like they're making a new Godfather. They're going back to the well from whence greatness is drawn. Mm-hmm. This will be a mass. And it got to that part where they they have catapults flicking these big glowy marbles. The retarded yeah. race of lizard people have joined yes. the battle with the Naboo. And I couldn't understand why this was what I was watching. It, it seemed so stupid to me. When they were flicking those fucking like marbles, they had catapults, you know, and, and the enemy was a whole robot enemy. So you got no joy when you killed one. Too. It was nothing but droids. And the droids had tanks, space tanks. OK, yeah. forget an M1 Abrams. They've got a space tank and they just get molly whopped. It is just fucked by the by 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 stupid yeah. lizard people. I with catapults. The and I yeah, as the Mundi, apparently. Yeah. And I did not think it was cool. I thought it was shit. I thought it was a kiddie movie. And I, shit, I, I was 13 or 12 or something. And it was too kiddie for me. That's, was, I felt the every same time way. I watch a Star Wars movie, I walk away with that same takeaway. It's like, oh, I forgot. This movie's for nine-year-olds. That I, I loved it. Yeah, I was a nine-year-old watching it. <laughs> You're and you know, you were talking about the tank and the stupid catapults. And I remember... During that scene, how much I loved seeing the <laughs> the robot ship come down, and then seeing all in organized fashion, like all the gears and like the robots go like, rah, 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 and like all of them getting out and marching in lockstep. Yeah, I thought yeah. that was so neat. But I don't. <laughs> I, you're right. I probably wouldn't like it if I was. As a grown it. up, I'm like, ah, oh, this pod race scene. Clearly, Lucasfilms <laughs> is planning on a video game, and they shoehorned this bullshit in here. <laughs> Because this will be a part of the video game and this will be a part of the merchandising toy line. And this whole movie is suffering. I think there was a scene in that movie where they had to like race their spaceship underwater in the fucking They flew through the middle Jar of the Jar planet. Jar world. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and I'm like, this was just like, it had no real bearing on the plot. It was just like a visual effect silliness. I thought, though, that it was for the merchandising. So oh, I was I watching it through that, that lens. That was the right. that's the that's the famous there's always a bigger fish scene when Qui-Gon mm-hmm. is fleeing from one inter uh, they the the core of this planet is apparently water <laughs> so you just dr- float a ship submarine type thing through the middle to the other side where the white people live mm-hmm. and you know I, I that that scene was cool. That was something I, I liked. But the whole idea of Jar Jar Binks and, and the whole thing was it, it, it was a kid's movie. And it's always surprised mm-hmm. me that adults keep going and like adults that I respect keep going and like it and, and identify with those characters somehow when they're all bad characters. The, the, <laughs> the characters who claim to be wise or not, the characters who claim to be um, profound or not, the, cl- the ones who, cl- who are supposed to be warrior monks all get their dicks wet like. They're, nice. it's, it's nonsense. It's nonsense. They've all got bastard children floating around, not being taken care of. 
it's just a bunch of children flying around in space with their with their fucking plasma dicks out. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. <laughs> Hopefully they never make another one. Hopefully Marvel and Star Wars just goes by the wayside and it's never a thing again. And Disney, yeah. you know. Yeah. So Marvel's yeah, coming out with um Guardians of the Galaxy soon. And they're saying yeah. it's is it out? They're saying yeah. it's the best one since Endgame, which is not it a It took super Mario Brothers off the number one spot. So Chris Pratt had to drop to, to second. And, and <laughs> he that beat movie. himself. Wow. He beat himself. It's a good week for Chris Pratt. I did this hear the, the Mario best Marvel movie, movie well, you said? Since Endgame. Uh. Right. So it's better than The Wasp or something? I don't know. Oh, shit. Better than <laughs> Thor. Number four, that was awful. That's the one where they made four goofy. Um, and they had mm-hmm. the screaming goats pulling that wagon they were all in, yeah. it's like space goats. Oh mm-hmm. man, and they brought and they had fat, um, Russell Crowe come in as Zeus. <laughs> he cannot <laughs> do that accent, <sighs> yeah. It was upsetting the whole thing. Uh, I don't know. I'll watch this, it and it's probably going to be the last Marvel movie I watch. I have really enjoyed the Guardians of the Galaxy uh movies, those are the ones that are kind of. I don't know, they got a little heart to them with the whole yeah. father-son thing. And um, the the music gets me every time. I, I I use that playlist. That's one of my most used playlists, the Guardians of the Galaxy 1 and 2 playlist. Great. They're good. Yeah. I'm all about jock jams. Jock jams. That's all that I listen to, jock jams. What the fuck is that? You don't remember do, jock do, jams? Do, 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 Woody knows do, jock do, jams. Do, 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 do. Yeah. That's all that they used to play at the roller hockey rink that I, that, I was like, oh. yeah, they, the guy who owned it would just play jock jams, pump up the jam, and I, I would just mm. be like, this is, yeah. this, I, I'm so cool. I rock just skating around, listening to jock jams, playing. It, it was so much fun. <laughs> I can't believe I have no you don't idea know what the fuck jams. you're talking about. You have no idea. You might like jock I, jams, shocking. actually. They're just I have no concept songs. whether, the, oh, okay. Okay, so you just got a funny name for a, a, a playlist of songs that's used at sporting events. Yeah, that is effectively that's, what it is. It's called yeah, Jack. It's, it's kind of well like then, kids. Bop, well, then maybe. Ah, uh, you know, I. Wh- what do you do in the military? Well, I'm a Delta Four Niner. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> well, you the Jock Jams that's... isn't a nickname. It's the name of the album. <laughs> it came out in 1995, so it's all oh, like course. whoop. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've got that. Well, let me go through my vinyl collection real quick. <laughs> Dude, I remember when I was like when I was like six, my mom used to do like working out to like disco, and I thought disco was the the peak of culture. I was like fucking six years old, dancing all around the house to disco, like hair hair music. It was great. Get the Bee Gees on. It's Mm -hmm. like pump Mm -hmm. up the volume, pump up up the volume, pump up the volume, dance, dance. (laughs) (laughs) Dude, Woody knows. knows I'm I'm jotting down by the lace your skates up right now. Work out tomorrow. (laughs) (laughs) Just gonna lace up the skates and and go run from some some hammer murderers. The the closest I I probably have heard that because we would go. Sometimes we go to Anderson, South Carolina, and uh, there were two things for kids to do there. There was, because we weren't going to Toys R Us, we, there was uh, bowling and there was skating. And so sometimes my dad would be like, what do you guys want to do? You want to bowl or skate? And, and we usually didn't know, because both seemed pretty cool and pretty fun. Mm-hmm. Uh, if, you, if, you, if you bowled, there was video games. If you skated, there was video games. There was food at both places. So uh, that was two of our favorite things to do like growing up. Uh, and and I would always skate. I was pretty good at skating. At a roller rink? Did they give yes. you hockey skates or roller skates? Roller skates. You okay. could you could uh, you could do um, like inline skates, but that just seemed unnecessarily hard. Yeah, <laughs> it's actually why would easier. I want two wheels when I could go with? The, why would I, it's much like more stable? I, yeah, how could it be more stable than four? Like a car? You can go so <laughs> much faster with the one row, and it's. I think it's style. easier. It's easier to balance. You remember how? In the uh, that episode of Malcolm in the Middle, yes, like, like, <laughs> yeah, you that's, can't that's match that admire. level of swagger. You sh- no. Yeah, you show show me some kid on rollerblades. I'm not impressed at all, but you show me a guy on roller skates doing yeah. cool stuff. I agree. I agree. I probably I probably just laugh at him. <laughs> no, <laughs> I mean, I'm imagining I'm imagining a 48 year old man like stepping out there. I got a bad, brand new pair of roller skates. <laughs> <laughs> he's, like, he's like stomping on him and stuff. Dude, he's, he's gonna like, he's gonna skate right up to you, cool. slap you in the mouth, and then pirouette yeah. away. <laughs> <laughs> but that I can do. But every time I've tried to uh, ice skate or rollerblade, it's ended poorly. It's ended poorly. I'm horrible at that ice skating. I I just my feet just like like fly out from under me, and I like break my tailbone every time I go. I don't know how people do it. 
I, I have no balance that way, but like all of my balance is this way, like snowboarding and that stuff. Like I pick it up super fast. No problem. You I've never tried surfing, someone, but I want to, but yeah, you just need someone there who knows what they're doing to like, it, it's funny. You mentioned that is because not that Woody is an expert skater and surfer. Really? He's really old, so he's done like everything. He's done everything. <laughs> balance both ways. <laughs> Woody has a... Woody's becoming like a Swiss Army uh, man. He's he, he's collecting Dude. these hobbies and becoming an expert at them. It, I was I still think he might be heading toward vigilante territory. That's why I brought it up earlier. I was gauging him. <laughs> okay. Also, no, Jot Down Swiss Army Man is a good like name for a miniseries or movie. It's or already a movie with Daniel. It Radcliffe. is a movie. Yeah. Fuck. <laughs> and not a very good movie either. <laughs> I was arguing that Tom Cruise is an amazing human being. I was like, yes. that guy's got like 7,000 parachute jumps. The guy's an expert motorcyclist. The guy can fly a jet plane. Uh, the guy runs at a, at a high level. Um, he's pretty good with, with his marksmanship. He's when he runs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, what else? Is, like amazing things. Is the base <laughs> jumping, the parachuting, he, the flying... I love the Tom accents. Cruise. I don't care how crazy he is. He's great. <laughs> <laughs> I love the Mission Impossible yeah. movies. Yeah. They're awesome. Jackie's he like, he doesn't talk to that. his kids. I'm like, that's how you measure a man? Like that? <laughs> <laughs> but look he at him flip. motorcycles. <laughs> he doesn't <laughs> talk to his kids. What, what, could he po what could they possibly have to say to a man so great as him? Well, of course he doesn't oh, talk thank to you. his kids. I need kids. to jot that down for our next debate. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right? So, like, like, kids like, can't talk to him. They're ordinary. They have nothing I to think teach him. that I think that if we tried to have a beer with Tom Cruise, I don't know how it would go, honestly. He's a bit of an enigma. I don't have a good read on Tom Cruise because he's, yeah. on one hand, I've seen him on that stage with that McAvage guy, David mm -hmm. McAvage or something, whatever, the guy who runs Scientology. I've seen him accepting that gold medal for being a fucking weirdo and believing in Xenu. And he's so, he's like, man. <laughs> this is the shit he's so proud of this medal like he looks prouder of that than any award you've ever seen a celebrity get mm. and and but you got to juxtapose that with all the cool stuff woody just said he's he's really is this i i love those movies they're really fucking good and i, I watched <laughs> that 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 maverick movie the other day it was really good too Tom Cruise, he just makes I amazing movies has his own jet like talk about traveled that i bet this cool. guy pops over to france when he feels like french food Right, he is an. He's lived an interesting and amazing life. And and Kyle said, "How would having a beer with him go?" Maybe he wouldn't want to with us. Like it, he I wouldn't. feel like we're in the mid grade somewhere, right? Like we spend a lot of time talking to people who are basically professional communicators, right? Kyle's ability to tell a story, Taylor's ability, to, our guest, it spoils me. So when I talk to like. I don't know, some fellow dad that like hope made a friend in middle school. And now I'm have to, now I'm mm -hmm. forced to hang out with that kid's parents <laughs> and they tell stories that don't have endings that just like, <laughs> Oh my God. Know, There's no I punch did line. And then I did that. And then, you know, like those are like things that I guess I did. And yeah. it's like, Oh my God, I sat through this fucking thing. I, I, I'm, <laughs> I'm hypercritical on people's ability to communicate. Tom Cruise sitting next to me would be like, oh, so you rode your motorcycle 6,000 miles on a trip. That's um, kind of dull. That's, yeah. that's nothing <laughs> to know, me. Who cares? I, I bet yeah. that would tickle his fancy, a little a little thing like that. You you would be a tickle more apt to have a good conversation with Tom Cruise than Taylor or I because you, you have done extreme things that he has done and you have done in common uh, to some extent. But uh, but I just think uh, he, he's, a, he's a person that, that I don't want anything to do with. I think he's probably a shitty human being. Um, I think he's probably like fucking uh, weird. All those flips. You're gonna hold that against him? Come on. Yeah, yeah. I think he's he's just too <sighs> weird. That that he's in a cult. He's you're talking about a cult member. Uh, um, you say cult, I Kyle, say he leads a cult. Hollywood star. It's different. He's the man. This this cult has made him tons of money through ways I don't really understand. I mean, he made his own money. I think I think he's there. At this point, he, he's like the fucking hood ornament for he's Scientology. He's poster child. Yeah. yeah. You know, so, you actually you wouldn't approach him with a beer anyway. Because he, would never drink it. he, I bet he is not a beer guy. You would offer him some right. sort of green shake. You would go in as though you're always drinking green shakes, and then you try and pick him up. Obviously, I feel oh, like the that's green where I have my end, right? Mm -hmm. I imagine Taylor offering him a beer and him being like, "No, I'm out." I offer him like one of my stevia lemonades. That's mm. Tom Cruise's style. Maybe. Oh, is it? He hasn't no, but aged. He doesn't he's, age. He's aged. Dude. Um. Oh my God. We were like. But for how old he actually saw, is, he's like. He looks great. Right. You're old. both right. He's aged a little. I saw him in Top Gun Maverick recently, which I know was like three years ago. 
we were like, hey, why isn't Val Kilmer in this? He is a little Val Kilmer is next to dead. Uh, why isn't his original love interest in this? That woman has been eating anything she wants for 25 years now, and it shows on her waistline. She has no place in Hollywood. Get the fuck out of here. Um, half the cast that was in that, they can't be on the camera anymore. They're embarrassed. Tom Cruise, on the other hand, has had discipline and looks amazing in his old age. You know the deal yeah. with Val Kilmer, right? Like, like oh. he had um, throat cancer or something and lost his uh, hit at the tracheotomy. That's no excuse. Yeah. He was fat before that. He's, you know, he's no, no, bring that. Bring this picture back up. This <laughs> looks like this is the worst that Tom Cruise has ever it's looked. Yeah, I agree. But it, it looks like he just landed from jumping. <laughs> like he just landed. Like and, and it caught him he as the skin hair. was going down just a little bit. Yeah. Like he, he arrived at that award show by suit. parachute. Yeah, it is interesting. His he yeah, looks this is, so much younger ooh. in Maverick. Yeah, he. I wonder if his that's, skin's that's not, not good lighting. You think it's steroids though? The reason steroids. I hadn't considered no. that. Didn't you say that? I, no. I I will say a lot of bodybuilders have bad skin, like older ones. Uh, yeah, I don't I guess know because their hormones. I mean, it's are the all tanning. Up it might maybe. be the tanning too. I don't know if it, it's. I the promise home. you, people who tan, it's 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 a huge mistake. But, but like. People do it every every week, you know, like, like not just mm -hmm. to get a little color for the season. People who have one in their homes and are addicted to them. Howard Stern had a, a whack packer called Tan Mom. You've probably heard of her outside of the Howard Stern show. Tan this Mom. is a she became famous for putting her baby in a tanning bed because she wanted her baby to be tanned. Oh, too. I remember, I remember this story. Oh, and yeah. I talked yeah. about this. Yeah, yeah Zach, like that's weird. You want your babies to be nerds? Show us a picture of tan mom, Zach. She's, as you can imagine, she's very tan. <laughs> she's also an alcoholic, so she's great on the mic. Those two I go recall, together well. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Tanned alcohol. That's where you, that's when you want to consume your most alcohol. She's is right outside. before you get into a dry, hot cylinder. Yeah. And then you lay there. Get right, what you're leather, that leathery throat. skin. I, uh, yeah. I, I definitely, I've, I've gone to the tan in bed a bunch of times, uh, but... It's always gross when you get out and there's that pool of sweat. Ah, oh. Yeah. See, just All a little right. color. Just a little color. You know what? I was right, though. The kid looks cool. She looks like a pigment <laughs> vampire and she's stealing it from the little girl. <laughs> That's yes, like a redheaded. It seems like a child with like red hair and very fair skin. She's like, <laughs> That's just, what is, they're, this must they're be before she really got serious about her, her forced regimen. Because, <laughs> ah, God, her skin looks like it hurts. Oh my God, she, she looks like, like a piece of bacon seat. you were talking about earlier. Holy shit! <laughs> yeah, she's <laughs> in a King Ranch truck. Some yeah, of that her out, she'd stay uh, flat. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> that's that's like skin is untight. Yeah. Oh my God! Yeah, and this safe here is where she goes when she refuses the tanning bed. <laughs> what is that safe? That's a tanning bed. <laughs> yeah, for, in there. For the kid, I can see me. the pixels. I'm not even kidding. <laughs> I mean, she yeah, that tan hair. lady. If this was what, fifteen years ago now, like she, what does that skin look like fifteen Whoa, years later? Does she look better now? Well, she must have stopped that day. I, yeah. I, again, I, I think a lot of that was um, bronzer. She's giving me kind of a why so serious look. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was kind of thinking the same. Like, there's some. It looks like she's clenched her jaw so. Yeah. Fiercely, my and father. That that she's to lock broken me in a tanning bed. <laughs> <laughs> Say you're oh, crispy up in there. <laughs> you're only pretty when you're dark. Yeah. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. so this is her after, I guess, right after yes. the tanning fixation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, her but 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 that's good a, considering you know maybe maybe it was know. like bronzer or something. I don't know how they do, know. how they came up with that picture on the right. That that's. That's probably a fake picture. Remember that show, The Swan, where they 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 chopped up them ugly bitches on on Fox one night. Oh, I do remember this show now. I don't really, I didn't really watch it much. When I was a kid, we had real reality shows. All right, you knew that shit was real because they had surgery at the end of the episode, life altering they surgery. Worse. All right, we had this show called The Swan, where they they took ugly fat women and they 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 like put them in front of three dudes and they're like, "You're hideous. Yes, too fat to fuck." Oh, I wouldn't touch you with his cock. And then they like circle all the problems with her um, and until they run out of ink. And then they send her off to a surgeon. 
And and then after months of recovery, which they gloss over with a quick little Fox montage, mm. they wheel this poor woman out on the stage and they all applaud her for getting rid of her awful face and body. Uh, <laughs> it was great. They, that they completely the changed these women's faces in some in instances. That's 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 a subtle one. That's a super subtle one. They, like they would get nose jobs, breast implants, full like. Yeah, there you go. That's face surgery. Like, like they would alter these women. It was great. It was great. Wow. What wow. a blast in the past. I forgot. Is there about a name for the lines next to the nose? Well, on this one, I'm, I'm not convinced the right one's better. She looks a lot older on the right. She does. She looks, what was this shit? When was this on? The Swan? How did I remember yeah, oh, this? Oh, I've seen this show. Thousands, right? Yeah, I would, I would guess this came out in 2001, 2002. Right after 9 11, we were getting a little kooky. <laughs> I mean, look at the glasses. Those are not 2023 glasses. True. No, no, they're not. That's early 2000s. Listen to Smash Mouth kind of glasses. I hate those kind of Brian. glasses on people. Pretenders, fakers, stealers of valor, people with actually bad vision don't get lenses that small. I think, I wonder if they fixed the ears. <laughs> Wait, is that, that is just like Kate, Katie Seagal on the right, huh? Remember that, you know, the wife from uh, Married with Children, also the mm -hmm. voice from Futurama. And... Yeah, I that's what things. I know her from. Other stuff. Oh, that was a. But well, they just made her frumpy on the left. The I remember bigger uh, yeah. swings. I, I remember lots of face surgery. Mm -hmm. This one chick I, had a big honker of a nose, like a fucking Pollock fucking... Uh, uh, and and they, they lopped that thing off and gave her like a like a Japanese the Polish like, people like pillow noses. girl. In that this one comparison, did. they do. <laughs> <laughs> that one did. He um, meant that yeah. Pollock specifically. Yeah, her, her in particular. <clears throat> Poles always taking strays. Poor guys. <laughs> getting yeah, all of World War II, they're getting bullied by Russia. They're getting bullied by Germany. Just always bullied. That's I've been, that's who should lead an anti bullying campaign. Poland. Po Poland? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just the nation of Poland. Poland is they're currently so building... sick of it. <laughs> <laughs> Poland is currently building the largest army in Europe. Um they'll, they're gonna be there About in like a year time. and a half. They, they well, is it a good army? Hundreds is it be a good of, one? Oh yeah. They 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 like pick the best of of every country who makes arms in the West. So they're getting like Korean artillery and American tanks and uh, yeah. But Japanese. you know why I ask? Because like can't make like fun the, of that army. Not, like you know North Korea's <laughs> army, where they're like it's the biggest in the world, and it's like yeah, but it's like a bunch of guy, a bunch of hungry guys. Like <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. And a lot of artillery, the 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 amount of artillery pieces that North Korea has pointed at Seoul is staggering. One of the scary um, things about that, despite this being World War II tech, World War I tech, doesn't matter. If they shoot 50,000 shells like that, and as soon as they can reload, 50 more thousand, 50 more thousand, they've just got so many. And, and don't imagine them out in a field somewhere. They dug a goddamn hole and buried an artillery piece till just the barrel sticks out of the ground. And then they make these cocksuckers live in there. And that's their job, is to live in there with that gun. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's a terrible game. <laughs> and they're just waiting on the day when the fucking 1972 Soviet siren goes off and it's time to start shelling Seoul. It must be hard as can or be Seoul, to but, escape um, North Korea because I don't feel like you hear too many stories about it. Oh, those, there's YouTube uh, there's there are, uh, YouTube like, videos about it. I, I like those they a get lot. There's a million people there. Yeah, they get literally yeah. The YouTube videos about it. People who narrowly survive six gunshots. It'd what be, a nightmare that would be. Do you, do you see the YouTubers that uh, that take like a North Korean defector and give them Skittles and shit? See what they think? Uh, you know, I bet. I think I have seen something about that. I'm, I'm they, watching like, a guy right now. Uh, yeah, they gave him ribs like, and stuff like that. I'm watching a different guy right now. He's been on Rogan. I can't think of his name, but he does weird eats around the planet. He's the guy that wears the red bandana on his head. White dude. Big guy. And, guy Fieri. Um, no. No. Shit. And, uh, but more of the internet version. But he uh, he eats crazy shit, like really disgusting things. But one of the things I really liked was he takes American foods to tribes people, or he takes tribes people to American foods. So he's like having dinner with one of those chicks that has all the gold rings on her neck, so her neck gets super long. And he's oh, giving yeah. her macaroni and cheese and pepperoni pizza and um, uh, tacos and stuff like That's that. That's like those videos of like a colorblind person seeing color for the first time, <laughs> like yeah. that kind of reaction. <laughs> Yeah, and that is just like I would click on that in a second to see that he reaction. Was like, like that is just universally interesting. Yeah, and he's good at it. So he 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 said, "Don't pick up the pizza. 
let her pick it up first. Let's see if it's intuitive, uh, you know, how people eat pizza. Yeah. And sure enough, she sort of, she, you know, the pizza grip and she eats it from the right side. And he's like, look at that. She knew. She knew. <laughs> and then it came time to eat the taco and she can't lean her head to take a bite because she's got all those goddamn rings on her neck. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> um, but, but her take on some of the stuff was really interesting. And he was like, do you have junk food, you know, in your village? She's like, oh, yes. Foods that we just eat for pleasure, like bamboo shoots and mushrooms. <laughs> <laughs> and so, doing... so no. <laughs> <laughs> he goes, yeah, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. So have some more macaroni and cheese. <laughs> yeah bamboo shoots are good yeah, yeah it's they, not like uh they, oh I they, better they, not. she agrees <laughs> like, and I then like uh, i also saw him go around to these uh these villages in africa uh the kinds of places where they butcher cows in the street and shit and uh giving them american candies there's this guy who has he's butchering a pig right there he's covered in gore and the, and he's like have a ring pop <laughs> he's like you wear it and you eat it and and he puts the ring pop on this guy's filthy. There's gore, there's fat and meat from the dead animal all over his hands, and he's like, it tastes like grape. He's like, do you like it? He's like, meh. And he goes back to butchering his <laughs> yeah. pig. Yeah. Um, this one tastes like Twizzler, pig blood. Give him Twizzlers and Sour Patch Kids and shit like that. It was it was pretty funny to see these little little tiny little african children run away from the sourness of the candy like they like a wizard had just given yeah. them poison <laughs> they're looking at him they're, they're like what have you done what, <laughs> what have you done, done? <laughs> you know, <laughs> candy ever and they lead off with a warhead or something like that's he, that's a little he, too much he, he gave this uh this one lady some gushers and and i i don't know if she was hitting on him or if she really liked those gushers because she was all, she was like mm, the best thing i ever had <laughs> <laughs> can i have some more and he's just like, well, you can have it. And she just like grabs them all. <laughs> Gushers are good. <laughs> don't don't get it twisted. They're delicious. When's the last time Unique you candy. Actually, quite recently. My entire family just loves Gushers. <laughs> it's just really? a thing. Just, yeah. <laughs> there has been a giant box of Gushers uh, at every uh, Christmas for the, like, the, the last uh, several years. That, this that's almost segues tradition. into the topic I was like. I, wish I, had some. I, I like gushers, but there's a little part of me that thinks eating gushers is gay because they they explode <laughs> in your mouth, right? It's <laughs> it, they're they're dick sucking it's just adjacent, a delicious right? Little juice, yeah, you know, just, yeah, yeah. You work hard at it and you get the juice out. I I understand. Right. Um, <laughs> you choose the knife and fork. What's the <laughs> weird things that you've ever like done or been pressured not to do because it's gay? Stuff I've been pressured not to do because it's gay. Certainly not I, eating gushers. I don't think that's gay. I got two. One yeah. is umbrella. And they both come from my father, who's kind <laughs> of a man's man. Like, carry an umbrella, that, that's a little gay. Um, and sure. the other, I, one time I got in my head that, like, you know, I'm I'm too hot. I run hot. Everyone who's ever snuggled with me is like, you're fucking a heat system in here. Like, like And uh, um, it's too hot. I run hot. I was gonna wear a visor, the the kind that like has no. It's like a baseball cap, but it doesn't oh, have yeah, the yeah, hat yeah. part. My dad is like, they're gay. Those those visors, and I'm like, the coach to, for Florida wears one, you know. And then he's yeah, like, he's gay. Yeah, still gay. <laughs> and I, yeah, I don't when you're know. coaching Florida, you can pick one up, queer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much it. So, what haven't you done or been pressured not to do because it's gay? I got the same thing on the goddamn visors, dude. I thought those things were sick. Uh, it was like. I mm -hmm. was just old enough to start making clothing decisions on my own. And uh -huh. I had the visor was one of my early ones. <laughs> I was like, this, this. And, I, uh, and, and then I found out that I was like the only one who'd ever seen one before. Apparently just me and grandma. <laughs> And uh, hers was hers was denim though. Uh, mine was, <laughs> mine was, I got mine at the beach. It said like salt life or some shit on it. And it was just fucking, uh, it was not the, it was not the move. Um, but but I do like the visor as a hat because I like, uh, my hair turns blonde and the if it gets enough sun, which I like. And so that was a way of getting the sun on the top, but not but keeping some shade. And I, and I, I remember thinking that at the beach, like, oh, this is great. My hair is going to still turn blonde. I like that. And uh, and now uh, I was just it looked I, I still think of that as like a gay look that I can't do because it is it is a gay look. There are a lot of things that were gay in the early 2000s, though, like, mm -hmm. like pretty much anything. Mm -hmm. Yes. Everyone pretty anything, much called anything. everything gay back then as well. Yeah. <laughs> you couldn't even eat pussy. You couldn't even eat pussy. <laughs> <laughs> I I the that. time, it wasn't like 
that's gay. That's homosexual. It was just what people said, like, oh, that's gay. Yeah. I, that's I remember my exactly. father explained to me that man colors were black and brown, and that all the other ones were a little gay. I was like, God, those are all the good colors. Man, but- your dad thought a lot of stuff was gay. <laughs> <laughs> I guess gay? so. That's crazy. <laughs> being, being dry, gay. Yeah. Any kind yeah. of blue, gay. Like, <laughs> yeah, this yeah, every weekend, gay right this now. man puts on bicycle shorts. Uh, he does, yeah. That is pretty gay, too. <laughs> yeah, and, who, what? And, and sits his big bulge on top of that seat and, and pedals. Into the into the country. He's stuff. living in a glass house, wasn't he, Kyle? He's goddamn <laughs> right. He was. I'll, I'll say this: I would I would want my kid at every drag show we can find before I would want them stuck in traffic behind your father thrusting along. <laughs> like I can just I'm just imagining him like you know when when you, when you really go out on a bike and you're like leaning like like this uh-huh. as you pump like oh check out the that's calf be, show. That's gonna be graphic as fuck. It's got to look like eggs bouncing around in a handkerchief back there, just fucking oh. I need I, to this get rid of my father's this isn't, this oh, isn't something. Right. Uh, this isn't something that I thought <laughs> was impressed. gay, but I'm remembering back. This would have been like 2003. I was like 12 years old, and we went 11 or 12, 2002, 2003, and we went to Disney World. And like I was, you know, 11 or so. So my younger brother was like nine. My youngest brother's like five. And my mom like gave us all like the same outfit to wear. Oh. Like during the day, and I didn't give a fuck. I was like an eleven year old. I didn't uh, just like shorts and like uh t like like athletic shorts and uh a t like a black and silver t shirt. Your colors matched though, or all we were all wearing the same stuff. She just bought three of the same outfits, so we were matching head to toe matching. Well, really, it was just two articles of clothing, and then we were in line, and I'm twelve. I'm like 11 or 12 years old and I'm like waiting in line with my, cause my mom mm. or and dad didn't want to go on the ride. I guess they're getting sick. And so like, Taylor, you take them up there and go. And so like, I'm in line and <laughs> yeah, it was like, that, except it was like, <laughs> yeah. a, like a, I think it was a tank top and shorts and we were in line and there were like these teenagers. And you know, when you're like 12, like it's just an ethereal, like they're tall. They're like kind of grown ups a bit. And like, they were behind us in line and this fucking prick, this like 17 year old prick was like, like loud enough, like almost to us. So like his friends was like, oh, I hate when parents dress their kids the same. It's so gay. And I just <laughs> wanted to be like, damn, I'm 12 and this is hurting my feelings right now. Oh. Like, <laughs> and I remember it's I so remember, she could keep up with us, you jerk. <laughs> literally that, and I remember specifically in that line being like. I'm never wearing the same clothes as someone else ever again. Yeah. <laughs> because I was so ashamed. I was so it wasn't even my choice. I didn't know it was something to be ashamed of. So did any was... of that linger and sink in? Like right now, right? Let's fast forward six years, right? Or make it 10. I don't care. You have a six-year-old kid and your wife has matching outfits for the two of you. Are you like, you know what? Fuck it, I'm in. No, I'm shutting that right down. <laughs> I'm go, no, the mean teenagers at, at, at Disney World are going to bully them. And they're going to feel bad. And they won't even be able to enjoy the ride because they're going to be sitting there going, do I look gay? Like, they're under your, your protective to... umbrella, Taylor. No yeah, one teases your umbrella. kids when you're there. Yeah, Nothing yeah, like yeah. doing battle at Disneyland. I was exactly. just standing there giving head to the revolving door thing that you have to walk past, and he called me. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. haven't been in a in a little while, uh, but I love Six Flags. It's been a month. It's been a while. I, it, it's it's a right month. Too far. A month. That long. I, like, what do you think? I go a lot. Um, I like Six Flags a lot. So, um, but I haven't been lately. It's the best uh, coast there. Is there a season pass you can get? Is it, is yeah. Good. Yeah. Do you have it? Yeah. Okay. I it's haven't ridden a roller coaster in forever. I would love to go to a roller. Yeah, that sounds park. fun. My favorite thing is acrophobia. Um, it's it just hauls you up and drops you down. That's all it does. I don't but like the good, thrill rides as much it's as such the a good drop. Acrophobia heights. Yeah, yeah. What spiders? A good uh, arachnophobia. 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 That's good movie, by on. the way. With um, <laughs> with uh, you ever seen arachnophobia, Taylor? It's got no. John Goodman in it. Young John Goodman oh, comes in as like. So basically, uh, Jeff Daniels has moved to this uh, small town. And um, long story short, through a weird coincidence of things, a coffin from South America comes back to the small town containing uh, some scary ass spiders from this like 
Sin- you know what a cenote is? It's like a it's like a um, a cylindrical uh, hole in the ground that has its own ecosystem in the jungle. Now and, that you've explained it, yes, I know what it is. And so, <laughs> oh, of course, a cenote. Mm-hmm. Um, so down there, they uh, they encounter this deadly spider. They bring it back to small town America. It, it crossbreeds with our common house spider, and uh, it's just killing people all over the town. It's a, and then at the end, John Goodman comes in as the like way over the top exterminator he's got goggles and a tank on his back like a ghostbuster he, it's they, they like shoot it from down on the ground like looking up at him with fog behind him as he steps up with his oh. spray so this is Great. like a region like a small regional issue oh uh, yeah the town is well the problem is if not if, even regional if the, if yeah, the mun- so there's hatch- a, a big municipal problem mm. a moderate yeah, municipal know. problem it's a couple of people dying in a, in a small town. Yeah, arachnophobia. Okay. It's on the it same a, scale, a or tragedy, uh, more of a crisis. Yeah, it's on a similar <laughs> scale, from what I remember, as the the movie with Dustin Hoffman outbreak. You know, oh yeah, with town, the little monkey. It's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like that. Both that, are like the same movie in my mind. Basically, if we had to count on that to solve COVID. If, if Dustin Hoffman had to get on a helicopter and go track down a pet find a monkey, monkey, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> the, they have to find. That's how what it comes down to at the end. They have to find that capuchin monkey, or we're all dead. And yeah, for the antidote, that yeah. fucker. Yeah, that's bad. That's not a good movie. It's like the same thing. It's, <laughs> it's like a monkey in a shipping container comes from like South America or something, just like the spider. And then just like spreads this virus, yeah. but yeah. Don't some scary spiders didn't some spiders that are bad arrive here on bananas or something like that from South America? Um, I would that wouldn't surprise me. I know the, the American fi- the fire ants that are here, they're from South America. They came over in sugar shipments, I believe. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, they have no real predators here. I think down there maybe termites and ant eaters deal with them, but uh but here they just run rampant and sting you all up. I know people who are allergic to those and can go anaphylactic from just fire ant bites. Damn, that sucks. We, I, I did not know that about people about fire ants. I, I want to keep an I have fire ants in my yard and I have a big yard. What kind of predator could I keep? Do you think I could sustain an anteater just milling around out That'd there? That'd be kind of cool. You'd need <laughs> some way. Ants. It just whether I'm gonna it say this, ants or not. If you want an anteater, I think you'd want to feed it some sort of fancy anteater food, you know? You probably wouldn't want to sustaining on the natural fire ants out there. Maybe it's a supplemental to diet, you know, but you want to treat your anteater nice. They yeah, like you're going to buy one, get good ants for Ruffage. it. Ruffage. <laughs> it probably be like, you got any red hot for this lettuce, Woody? I'm, I'm really about <laughs> spicy ants. This is, like, <laughs> this is really exciting for me. I've been wondering when you were going to go into the exotic pet stage because and i knew this 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 sort of we knew this foray, day would come. yeah this little foray you're having right now into reef keepery uh that's just testing the water yeah, so that you can become <clears throat> sort of a not joe exotic exactly but something like that like like mm-hmm. I, north carolina is you got y'all got the super majority all right freedom's coming i'm it sure is, you're except a, for women's rights i mean I, so you're fine I'm, I'm sure you could get some sort of exotic pet license and have all sorts of uh, 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 fauna out there. I would want a bunch, <laughs> I want a bunch of raccoons. I want a bunch of raccoons. raccoons. You're bigger There's than a raccoons. guy on YouTube that feeds him hot dogs, and it's awesome. It's like this old fella. He goes out to his porch and turns the light on. I know I'm that not guy. joking. There's 30 to 50 raccoons out there, big ones. And he's like, who wants hot dogs? And they each <laughs> run up and take a with their little hands and grab a full hot dog from and and greedily run off into the forest with it. It's is a possum the same cute. thing as an opossum? Because I'm pretty sure my friend yes. had that as a pet. Ugh. Yes, uh, North America's only marsupial. Hmm. You don't want that as a pet. Those things are ugly. They're ugly, but they're very sweet. I'm told, and yes. uh, I think they're rabies proof. Maybe they are, right? and they eat tons of ticks and flea. Uh, yeah, they're, they're, yeah, they're like tick eating. My friend had no ticks. Yeah, they're our friends. <laughs> <laughs> he would just roll around in the woods and then come in and just lay on his bed. Let him feed off of it. Uh, dude, yeah, having yeah, to pull a tick a off ant. of yourself is so violating. Oh god! Like, don't you hate like? It's just a little bug. Like maybe one summer ago, I came inside and was like, I had been watching TV for like two hours, and I like just touched the back of my like knee crease, the back of my leg, and like there was one there. Ooh. And it's just a feeling of like, <gasps> you've been hitching a ride for hours. 
sucking, drinking my blood. How You're did you kill him? Parasitic, that. you know. I, I got tweezers and I yanked him off. You didn't do How the did match you kill thing? him though. Oh, I smashed him with the tweezers and then just rubbed him on a paper towel until it was just a bunch of little pieces. I burn them alive every time. I, I take it very personally that they've that they've suckled upon my life force. So you hold you them remove them first like over and... a flame. I just I, I if I have one, it's been forever. But I think I got one when we when we went on that trip to Curry. But they're they're in my hair, and uh, and I just I just pull them the fuck out, and then I burn them alive with like a, a lighter or something like that. Fuck those fuckers. So gross. Yeah, I had Lyme disease twice. Oh Not no! Ticks. Yeah. What, what happened from ticks? I guess. Yeah. Did they cure? I don't know. Um, yeah, you just take antibiotics for like, if you catch it early enough, I think it can really fuck you up though. If they, yeah. and it's hard to diagnose too. Um, both times it took like a few weeks for, for them to figure out what the hell was wrong with me. But, um, yeah, if you just take the antibiotics for like six weeks or something, like a strong one that gives you diarrhea then you're, you're cured. <laughs> How long yeah, much you I need to... Like what, what symptoms did you start having where you're like, I got to, uh, I just had like a just a fever and like a headache both times, um, which is like just enough to just ruin your life for, you know, the duration of time that you have it. And it just doesn't it kind of like comes and goes, too. So you think you're getting better. And then like like a couple of days later, you just you're just sick again. And they just are, and you just think it's like a different illness or something. Hmm. And then, uh, yeah, it, it kind of sucks. But yeah, when you take yeah. start taking the medicine, you get better really fast because it's like a bacterial issue. Um, That's how yeah, Lyme is. disease sucks. That's how yeah. syphilis is. Yeah. Thankfully, it wasn't that. <laughs> Just Lyme. I'd rather have syphilis. <clears throat> is that curable? Oh, big time! Like yeah. penicillin shot. Oh, the big, ass. Time. <laughs> yeah. big time! Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, it Maybe was. Uh, it was. I've told these guys the story before, but like last time I had, was it? What was I getting that antibiotic shot for that I gave myself? Anyway, I went for an antibiotic. Last antibiotic shot I got, I um, was I injected. it strep throat? Yeah, something like that. Whatever it was, I injected myself, and it's a big fat shot of penicillin. But I remember thinking, like, this will cure anything I might have. Penicillin's such a such a great thing. I, mm. I if if there was there was an end time, you'd want to lay your hands on some penicillin, right? Yeah, because you, you'd anytime you make- got a little sniffle, you just fucking hit yourself with a big wad of it how hard would it be to make it's from mushrooms right well it's from mold on bread mold yeah i uh i think there's um i saw this thing the other day it's really neat on reddit someone made this card it's like the size of an index card but it has everything you would want to have if you're going back in time like if you were a time traveler going back in time it's like all the shit you'd want lots of formulas and instructions to, Hmm. to create things like the basics of some engineering stuff lots of mathematical formulas and it was most, all most, that, that's all a waste of time unless you can convince the first group of people you come across that you are not a witch, wizard, warlock, some form of magic man. Depends because, how far back you go. Well, let's get real. Let's say let's say you go back the year seven. You're oh, in, shit, Taylor. You're we can't in, even speak to these people. Let's say that's not a part of it. Let's say you have a thing on your throat that translates... I brought my professor Hawking is here who speaks Aramaic. No, okay. it's something you wear on your neck, like future. The, the, the batteries gonna are going to die, Taylor. It's solar powered. <laughs> <laughs> you know what the, the wattage was different in that day. The sun. Taylor, the ozone layer was completely like, intact. Like, like, yeah, yeah. that's how cool I am. <laughs> no, yeah, we've seen just the language, the way it's changed in the. When yeah. you go back to old English, it's still kind of English, but not really. They, we would barely be able to understand someone in the in the 16th, 15th century, something like that, yeah. I think. Have you seen that video, that guy, that like language expert of like yeah. English, just like doing the different accent through the years? Mm-hmm. Some of them, I don't know what that guy was saying. It was really, I know it was exactly really remarkable. Video. Like yeah. there's a, there's a point at like, 1620 or something i'm probably getting the year yeah. wrong. it was around 1600s where you're like wild you're basically like all right i can understand what he's saying it but he's he's saying it all goofy and then just like 40 years before that 60 years like they're like 1560 and it's like i don't know it's like oh my god like how frustrating would it have been to have like your grandparents in that generation and you're in the cogent and clear english one obviously that's not how it actually worked in reality but you think about it that way 
So you so sixteen twenty. That's time, not as yeah. far back as you can go. I think. I wonder if the new version of English, the one that's closer to us and we understand, was considered like ebonics, like you know, like ah, you don't speak properly. You're making up this new thing. Mm. Like what we had I know there were world. periods of reformation where I mean there was a period of time when they came up with a spelling for words and 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 like sta- and standardized mm-hmm. that. Uh, I I've, I've been watching this YouTube channel that does ancient battles. So there, I was watching something about a battle f- between Poland and Moldova um, over some little valley. And Taylor, they had war wagons. Oh, that's fun. The Polish had had war wagons. They're wagons with guys in them with guns, basically, and they're kind of covered up to their chest with the wagon and they're able to like, pop out and shoot and that was a big part of how the polish won that in cavalry but it's kind of neat because he we walks you through a history lesson of why the battle was fought and sort of the overarching themes oh this this prince was mad at this king and this the sultan thought this etc and then he kind of breaks it the battle down piece by piece moving pieces around like uh you know like a like, like a total war game or something I like those videos a lot. <clears throat> we never had anything like that in school. It was it, like my favorite parts of history were, was that stuff about ancient Greece and Rome and stuff. But I feel like that was just 10th grade. Yeah, you that was one. That was the only class I've said it before in high school that like I looked forward to was uh, ancient history. And it was because the teacher was genuinely good and he gave a shit and he was clearly very into this stuff. Like the kind Mm -hmm. of guy that like would be giving a lesson and then like go off on a tangent about, uh, you know, the Spartans. And before you know it, he's like, oh, we're not even going to get to the rest of the stuff I was supposed to talk about today because like this part's can it's it was always enjoyable. It was like, this is neat. We're going to talk about the Assyrians today. We're going to talk about how their culture differed from this and that. And it's like even wrapping your head around that many thousands of years ago you know people still like going to a little shop and like having exchanges seeing that that crazy like cuneiform tablet from like six thousand years ago that is a complaint about the wrong grade of copper being shipped yep. and it's like the first customer service complaint and it's like yeah translated is literally like do you take me as a fool good sir and it's like that kind of thing like this is not the agreed upon copper grading had I known, I would never have wasted my time nor sent Noah with his riders to achieve like and like that kind of stuff. Yeah. And it's like this is when so you wild. read something like that, it's uh, it's really interesting because that's a guy just like us. Mm-hmm. Like that's a guy just like us who who got some bad copper, and the only thing that separates you could plunk him down in our world and he'd do just fine. He he just needs to figure out how to use an iPhone. You should do <laughs> yeah. the ads, by the way. I tell everybody the- about freeze pipe and how to yeah, come more. Man. Yes, sir. This episode of PKA is brought to you by Freeze Pipe. Are you oh. ready for 420? Only 11 months away. Uh, <laughs> makers, of, <laughs> makers of the smoothest hitting pipes, bubblers, and bongs. Freeze Pipe is running their biggest sale of the year going on right now until April 20. Fuck, man. <laughs> so I guess the sale's not. Probably should have gotten that new read. Probably should have got a new read. Mm. But I'm sure there's a sale still going, people, because this code's still going to work at the bottom. Why buy a freeze pipe? The secret is freezable glycerin chambers that come on every piece. Pop one of these chambers in the freezer for one hour, and as smoke passes through, it's instantly cooled by over 300 degrees. We're talking puffs so smooth, you'll check if the bowl is even lit. No more chest burn, no more throat pain, no more coughing attacks, just icy, smooth puffs that are puffs that are easy on the body and full of flavor. Start smoking like royalty without paying a king's ransom by visiting freezepipe.com. And uh, use code PKA for 10% off each order. That's 10% off your entire order. You get multiple pieces. You get 10% off all of them. That's the freezepipe.com to check out their sales or use code PKA for 10% off your order. Order today and say goodbye to harsh smoke forever. So it's up to you guys to check and see if that sale's still going. But if it's not, <laughs> use code PKA either, for 10% off. Either, Very- either way, um, like no joke, um, not just trying to sell pipes here, but... It's real good, high quality glass. It feels heavy. Uh, I wouldn't do a drop test. I would never, but but it. When I'm holding it, I'm thinking, eighty percent sure it'd make it. You know what I mean? Like it's 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 <laughs> it's, it's really thick uh, glass. I've had expensive pipes before that were fragile, and uh, man, you, we all know if you're a stoner, you know that's not a good idea. It's not. Uh, a good this, idea. If you knock this thing over, I think it's going to survive. And the the freezing element of it is neat. And uh, it's a neat conversation piece because uh, you're stoned and you're not going to be too creative. 
So th- look at that. You got your freeze pipe to talk about now. Yeah, it's it. Kyle's exactly right. Like if you smoke out of glass, you know, the feeling between like thick, dense quality glass and bullshit. And this is dense quality glass. Uh, I really enjoy it. I smoke out of I've got like three of their bongs now and they're yeah, all they great. keep sending them. They got like a like it sent me a shorter one, a tall, skinny one, a tall, big. Fat, I use the, the the big giant fat boy the most because it's got the biggest freezing chamber. It sounds so, good. If you're taking my personal recommendation, mm-hmm. they're all good. But I would go for the big one, the big, the one that's got like the triangular, like traditional base, and then the normal, giant, you know, upward part that has, you know, eight tubes of freezable uh, glycerin in there. So check it out. Code PKA get ten percent off. Very high quality glass. Uh, it's fun to get high out of. After the show tonight, if I give in and order a pizza, which <laughs> I'm going to do, uh, <laughs> I'm going to get high with my freeze pipe. My freeze pipe is in the freezer right now. I don't just preach it. I practice it, folks. Is he, the bigger really one does. a bigger pain to use than the little one? It seems like the little one would be convenient, but I don't really know bongs. No, like uh, the only difference is like on the big one, the entire like the entire thing you're hitting out of goes in the freezer on that. So it's literally just like the bowl part at the bottom on the smaller one most of it is not the freezable part it's just got a little freeze at the top and so oh. it just depends on what you want i like the big one because it's got the most surface area of the the freeze so it's okay. i think it's better to uh, me it, it yeah. depends on like how much weed you smoke at a time uh it's really about the bowl though i guess more than anything i just want a big bowl dude they've, remember- got, they've got really good bowls like the bowls are those kind that don't just have one hole in the middle. They got all those smaller holes like throughout yes. it. So you don't get like that fall through of shit. Like yeah. literally one of the first things I noticed when they shipped us the freeze pipe stuff was like, yes, I wanted some some good quality bowls, not the annoying ones. So check it out. Code PKA. This episode also brought to you by Real DBG. Hold on to your dicks. We're going to need some parental advisory for this one. RealDBG.com has got the goods. And I'm not talking about candy. I'm talking about 100 milligrams of Delta-8 infused gummies, 50 milligrams of HHC infused gummies, one gram HHC and Delta-8 cartridges, and a 650 milligram bottle of syrup that will knock your socks off. Not going to say that. And forget about spring has finally come. Real DBG has all the seasons covered. From the dead of winter to the heat of late August and everything in between. These gummies will have you melting like the polar ice caps. The cartridges are like a supercar the way they outclass the competition. So come on down to realdbg.com and get as stoned as the statue in your local park. Just remember to start slow. And before you know it, you'll be soaring higher than Woody in his paramotor. Use code PKA23 for 23% off your whole order. That's 23% off your whole order. That's a big deal. That's a hell of a deal. That's right, people. 23% off your order so you can indulge in our premium THC products without burning a hole in your pocket. Just remember, always consume responsibly. That is realdbg.com, code PKA23 for 23% off. And same disclaimer we give every week. Uh, if you are, uh, if you don't have a high tolerance, I would really recommend you start out with a cart uh, so you can kind of toke on it and see what, what level you like. Um, if you decide that you're an edible guy through and through, start very slow. You know, if you, if you have a high tolerance, you know what you can handle and, you know, do you do you. But if you... If you are even questioning if you're tolerant, <laughs> I, if, if it's a question, I'm being serious, guys. If it's a question in your mind, like, I don't know if I could handle it. I just do it, here. pussies. Don't. don't. It's not worth not eat having a good bag. time. Don't, don't eat the whole bag. Don't eat the whole bag. Sounds like my edible bag, experience. <laughs> you, you'd right? sleep through fucking it, You might not wake up. Work. Do not eat the whole bag. We. I want to talk. Remind me to talk about the prison coffee guy later. Let me write down prison that coffee. Sounds interesting. <laughs> yeah, prison coffee guy. It's good stuff. I don't want to yeah. interrupt. Ad, and of course, I just, I just be- as always, this episode is brought to you by Lock and Load, the premium, premium ejaculation increasing supplement that has taken the world by storm. Everyone's loving it. Everyone's talking about it. Code PKA, code Jizz. You can come like a man. Stop coming like a like a bitch. Come like a man. Yeah. You want to know the sort of propulsion, the sort of volume that the, all those inner workings down there can get churning out, and this is the ticket for it. Do you think Kyle and I just texted each other pictures of our ejaculate? No. Nope. Yes, but that's not the only way that we came to this conclusion. <laughs> we in, we got Derek in the mix. He said, guys, stop sending me pictures of this. We said it's part of the process. He said, there's so much we need to do with this. There's so many potentials, and so we worked with him. It's scientifically based. Nine pills a day, folks. 
nine easy pills a day. Nine <laughs> simple pills a day. <laughs> They're actually quite big. <laughs> well, they, they used to. They, the original ones were these. These are normal ass size like capsules, but it's nine of them a day. So, you, so take your fucking nine pills a day. Or if you're not a nine pill a day boy. You're still going to get results with less than that. So you do you. Check it out. Code PKA or code JIZ. 10% off. Start coming like a man. You know what? Take 18 a day. <laughs> no. No, don't. Take yeah, as do it. Take it as directed. You know, all right. Take it look, as let me direct. just say this. If you take 18 a day, your hair is going to fall I, I, out. I, I, it I, I, will. I, take it, will. it as directed. It's because there's too much. Um, I can't think of what it's called. There's something in there and your hair will fall out if you take too much of it. So don't do that. Um, can't remember what it's called. is the sweet spot, huh? Nine is the sweet spot. Ten. 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 Round up to ten a really a memorable death. number, like ten. You will, you will fall over dead at ten. All right. Okay, don't you Tony, nine. That's around with ten. ten nine. Ten. Yes. Eight. Whoa. Let's bump it up. Ten. <laughs> mm, we we dialed know. this cum supplement in just right. Yeah. yeah. The coffee dude. Fentanyl uh, style doses. Yeah. This. Uh, so, we saw this video of this. Of this. Oh, are we done with the thing, or there's more? I think I. I think I did everything. Uh, yeah, code PKA, not. code Jizz on lock and load. Oh, also, uh, Derek's Energy Drinks, the new Gorilla Mind Energy Drinks. They're delicious. They're nutritious. They're energy packed. So check those out. Code PKA, code Jizz. Uh, I've been drinking one every morning and look at how healthy I am. <laughs> <laughs> and, I'm, and look at me. I'm awake. Shit. Yeah. Body by cum pills, pizza, and lock in the hand. <laughs> yeah, no. that's what you need. Champion, and you know that's set. all the that's all the sponsors. Uh, what a uh, prison coffee. Oh yeah, yeah. It, I think it was technically jail. Um, so in jail you get like one coffee a day. Um, or or you could. I, that's not exactly true. You don't have more than one usually, but but you could go to commissary and you can buy a lot. So it seemed like this guy had, was in a situation where he had to save them, though. I think they said that. And so he had taken 28 instant coffees and dissolved them into hot water and drank 28 days worth of coffee. And he was out of his fucking mind, like a lunatic, bouncing off the walls. They had to put him in like a stretcher and, and, and sit, like secure him down. And he's screaming. And they think it's methamphetamine. He's like, I can handle the meth. I can handle the fucking crystal methamphetamine. <laughs> but I can't. Handle the coffee. <laughs> what was he? What was he like before the coffee? Like, was right. he like a mellow, like laid back kind of guy, no, or was he, he like like meth? <laughs> okay, <laughs> it was a replacement for meth, is my understanding. Yeah. 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 Holy shit! I, I've never taken anywhere near that much caffeine, but uh, I would think it would like hurt you, like like do something, like something bad would happen. Could kill you. Did you see? Uh, there was that video Derek made like a year or two ago where that dude had like powdered caffeine like pure powdered dry scooping caffeine. energy and he was dry he like was putting caffeine like into like just powdered caffeine into like a cup of water or some you know juice or something to drink it oh and he what he thought he took five grams of caffeine Woo! and he had a heart attack frothed at the mouth and died like yeah I, he you can't take five grams of caffeine and yeah one tenth of that, like is, that is gonna that's a lot yeah, yeah I would take like, like half a gram. At five grams of caffeine. That's like, you know, the size of a creatine scoop. Yeah. Like, it's almost scary because it's like th that amount of any little powder, especially caffeine, like internally, you should know it's an absurd amount. But like looking at it, it wouldn't. Well, actually, yeah, it would totally jump out at you. Yeah, it would. Especially if you're it, buying this. Yeah, It would it, be that, like doing that equivalent amount of cocaine, honestly. Like, uh, yeah. like, like yeah. five. Hey, that, that's so much goddamn caffeine. If you drink too um, much water, you can die. Yeah. You know, anything. Yeah, any water sickness or whatever. It's like, it's an insane amount of water. Like, you'd probably be, isn't the amount of water you have to drink for the water sickness thing, like, you'd have to be trying, like, hoping not to vomit and stuff. Just yeah. Vomit water. Probably, yeah. Yeah. I would it, imagine. Usually, it usually you'd happens. Have, have and, it. Uh, <clears throat> it's usually a hazing uh, type thing where, where these um, pledges are forced to drink water. And uh, that that's how every case I've ever heard of came from that. Interesting. Yeah, that makes sense. I didn't know that. Yeah, Ugh. what a terrible way to pledge in. Like, like yeah, you got to drink a four gallon container of water. <laughs> you die halfway through because humans can't. We're not camels. We're humans. Your yeah. blood gets so diluted it doesn't work anymore. Basically. Yeah. You just have no electrolytes in it. Like I don't no know if it's nutrient, electrolytes. No, or, I don't know. I'm not a doctor, but yeah, it's it, stop us. 
you it puff work up, anymore. you get all bloated, mm-hmm. I guess. <laughs> I don't know. You get watery. It sound good. And would you yeah. start crying? You're just leaking everywhere mm-hmm. from water. What a terrible way. Actually, how much does it hurt? Do you just kind know, of man. fade away as you're like... You drown? I imagine they're pretty Maybe. drunk too. Probably, you know, I, they're probably making them drink beers as well. I don't know. I don't. Yeah. I don't want to die like that. Water sickness. What a bitch ass way to die. I mean, I want to mock all those brave young men who died of water sickness. <laughs> water sickness. I mean, yeah, if you're gonna, but, uh, die, what you hear more is like the fraternity, like drink this whole fucking handle of Bacardi, and then it's like he died. How surprising! And it's like, yeah, yeah, you can't, can't. Drink a handle of liquor and not die. Remember that guy, Shoe Nice? Oh, we know <laughs> him. Yeah. yeah. He's on our show many, many years ago. Yeah. Right? yeah. I remember Shoe. Do you remember like OG Shoe Nice? Did you watch him when he was starting out on I YouTube? I did. Maybe? Yeah. Like the, the liquor slams and the glue and <laughs> all, yes. all that stuff. Yeah. I remember not eating the whole container of caulk. Yeah, 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 like th- all that. He would eat a lot of non-edible things. I remember yeah. back then. Yeah, like pine cone and so like, like, like crazy shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We were uh, we were all on a trip together, uh, like a bunch of YouTubers, like long, long ago, and mm. uh, and we would watch his videos together and be grossed out and just just in wonderment at how there was a, now a celebrity who was making six hundred dollars a video who ate cock. <laughs> and it was like he's got it figured out man he's doing what he loves i mean he was a pioneer you know like no one else was doing that stuff yeah then. and yeah and uh it, I, I think he does tiktok now and he still poisons himself basically he's on a good hmm. stretch then we're talking about shoe nice how i he, figured that was my guess yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he was seem like a tiktok star is he killing it there that's his platform you know i i would i would imagine so his 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 content would be yeah. It's real, you know, it, it's fit for that. It works. But people say not, it's not monetized well. No, it's not monetized well. Like like people will get 24 million views and it it makes the like $3 or something. Yeah. I don't I don't think but those is, have I I just want to know like not how much people are making per view because the view mm-hmm. numbers are all so skewed. How much are people making? Is it is a decent TikTok star making 30 grand a month that would tell me more than 24 million views is worth X. Not as much as a decent OnlyFans star. Uh, I, I, that's got to be. I, I don't know. That I don't know though. Like on, <laughs> like on average, I wonder what the average is so skewed that it's hard to get a real good idea. Um, I, our boy Finn is is killing it over there. I would guess he's making hundred k US a month, but but I think that's conservative. A couple of months and you, that's real money. <laughs> my, my guess is he's <laughs> making like more like a hundred and twenty to one hundred and fifty k a month. <laughs> Dress, dressing up and showing his butt. <laughs> well, Zach says 350k. Oh, he would know better than me. I, uh, I, I someone sent me a thing that said, I think there was a post in there that someone sent me a thing and uh, it had like 5,000 likes on it. I don't know how OnlyFans works though, like how interaction works or how you even find out how many followers somebody has on there. I don't know where that's listed, but I just did the math like. 5,000 followers at 2025 20, month or whatever it is. It's like 4 million a year. Yeah, yeah. plus donations, right? Like you, you don't even factor that in. Like there's tips on 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 content. Um, I wonder if he there's... does well there. Like so, so here's my understanding of OnlyFans. I think that if you're just getting started off, a big part of your business is custom videos, right? You know, like oh yeah, I'll show you my boobs, but I'll do a custom video of the thing that you think is hot about me and and whatever, make a 60 second video for $15. But when you get up there, like the Finster level, you can't do custom videos. Like one I, has boundaries, two, there'd be so many people. Like it, it has to be one size fits all. He's the most successful straight man in the sexual entertainment industry ever. <sighs> <laughs> I, he might be like ron jeremy comes out an actual stat um i don't know how it couldn't be ron jeremy comes to mind but he's in prison as a sex criminal so i'm i'm putting a real big asterisk he's on him still thriving <laughs> 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 he's in there getting more sex than ever now yeah. also he's like a um you know like a, the best baseball player from 1978 didn't earn that much money yeah that and i think be- he monetized early and often i just remember i don't know how often you go into skeezy sex shops but mm. i used to go um to that 
strip club that was in our town, and there was one in the front. So I was in there all the time, and there was everything was a Ron Jeremy product. Like he's got lubes and tapes and oh, and, and dildos that. and like, like his cock as a dildo. Oh, well, let's try to do that. I've got one. Like tons of shit, you know, and he's just such a hideous human being. I, I, <laughs> he I, think, he, I think he got me too and they went full bore and got him for sex assault or rape or, or some some non-consensual sex acts of some kind and took him down. You're not, you know, that, that happened to James Dean. I'm thinking not, of Ron Jeremy. Like okay. Recent, like in the last five years, I think he, he got got. Yeah, James Dean, uh, everyone, maybe your head goes to the old time movie star, but there's a porn star also <laughs> named James Dean. And mm. uh, he was like the women's favorite for a while. And then it turns out that the women he worked with were like, he's a creep. He's kind of rapey. It's not good. So. Well, I mean, I, I guess that you would think in that industry that wouldn't fly, that you you couldn't you couldn't get away with that. I know maybe that's counterintuitive, but... Mm-hmm. I bet it's a lot easier to be a piece of shit in a boardroom or or after a meeting when nobody's around than it would to be on a on a set where everybody's. I just feel like word would get around and nobody would fuck with you anymore. Literally. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. I don't know. I, I think there's maybe a lot of guys with uh, you know bad morals running the porn show still. Oh, I wish. I hope that there's porn star Skype. Like we used to all be on Skype back in the day. <clears throat> like all the people who make Call of Duty fucking videos, mm-hmm. and uh, and I, I hope all the porn stars are like like in in DMs and stuff. Like Britney's pussy stinks. Yeah, I can't be dealing with Britney anymore. And they're just talking shit behind Britney behind her back. I hope that's the case. I think. I, I wonder. I, it's been my impression that guys are kind of in porn as long as they can be, as long as, long as they keep getting work. And women come and go like every two years. Only it seems to me that the the porn. cycle is always the the lady is trying to ma- to like get her start so she can make her brand and do her own thing. And it seems to be a repeating process. Um, except with like Mia Khalifa, who did like a week's worth of porn, became incredibly famous for it, and and uh, and now does other shit. Is that true? She she was in it for a very short amount of time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's a huge all, name. all that all the Mia Khalifa stuff you've ever seen. Is from like one weekend or something, I think. <laughs> Wait, really? There's another yeah. chick. She was a she was pretty. Um I, I, dude, I feel like I can't even say things without like being bad. But she was a Jewish chick who went to Duke. And uh Oh, I remember her. And she came from like a really wealthy family, and it it's inexplicable why she chose to do porn. I guess she just thought it was hot, like she was into it. And uh, she had a really brief porn career, but for a bit, everyone was like, oh my God, like how did you don't do porn? People like you don't do porn typically, you know, guys at uh, girls at elite schools who are pretty, who had the world by the head, the tail. Now everybody does porn. I think a lot of the porn yeah. stars don't. I would imagine they have all gone to OnlyFans at this point. I think you make so much more money on there. It's all yep. about like if you want to do that, I guess, and have like, enough of a, like a like a notoriety around you i think that's the ticket with doing well but only there. fans is a little like twitch in that it takes some like discipline entrepreneurial zest and stick to itiveness yeah. to get somewhere whereas you can get fifteen hundred dollars in your first try or whatever all right that's you got to transition right now you got to get started which is easier to do next year you have to be a successful only fan star woody or a successful boxer Ooh, and am I me, like literally fifty-year-old Woody with the old aging following? Woody, <laughs> Woody, you have quite the following. They want to know. <sighs> I need to be a boxer or an. Yeah, you have to be a successful boxer, YouTube boxer, or you have to be a successful OnlyFans um, proprietor. <laughs> proprietor. <laughs> I think I'd do better on OnlyFans. I think there'd I'd... be a huge curiosity. People would be like, you know what? <sighs> Here's three ninety nine. I want to see. Hell yeah! Like 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 you do some some high altitude stuff. Like like you're in the harness naked, and How like it's tasteful it? though. You get would another I... can You get another guy up there to like to film or a drone. <laughs> wait, wait, there's another guy in this. <laughs> and you're and you, well, you need a camera person. Um, mm. but you in the harness, completely nude, uh, like, like like on your paramotor. But it's like like your 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 odds and ends are, are covered tastefully by straps and harnesses and such. Mm. I think I think you'd want to go that route. Like yeah, like the, a little pizzazz. Yeah, we don't need we don't need to see like like butthole or anything. Like, I think 
I think the move is to ramp it up. Like that, who's mm. the chick who did that brilliantly? It took her like Belle Delphine. Yes, she laid the groundwork for the ramp it up business model. For I sure, think you'd have for to sure. do something kind of fun and inventive. You know, I think like mm. you know, we could get one good month just from sheer curiosity. You know, but then everyone would unsubscribe. You know, because they'd be terribly disappointed <laughs> unless there's some sort of like <laughs> really, really fun showmanship involved. I don't. There think. will be. I'm 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 creative consultant on Woody's OnlyFans yeah, career. Okay, it's gonna be good stuff. Yeah, Kyle is a valuable creative consultant. What did you say the first video on my OnlyFans reef tank sh should be? It was something like dangerous laser work. Oh yeah, I, yeah, I, I don't recall I now. I was uh, I, I was high I at the time. Down. I was high at the time. <laughs> Unlike right now, right? <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, who Kyle's knows? I was smoking that night. Genius <laughs> level creative consultant. And it, and it was half the reason FPS Russia was successful. Like, it's the ideas behind it. I picture I like you ideas. doing content in like I, I, short it, jorts. I texted Taylor the other day. I was like, Taylor, I got a great business idea. We, we, uh, we send doo doo to people like whoever you want, right? And you pay us cash. You just mail us an envelope of cash and an address, and we mail the doo doo there. And I've checked it out; it's totally legal, dude. And people pay a lot for doo doo. And he's like, "Yeah, yeah. How do we get started?" I'm like, "Well, I did my part, Taylor. <laughs> <laughs> I Run just came it. to you with the doo doo idea. Yeah. Good luck. <laughs> Let dude, me I, know when the check comes. I'm more I of a stats and stories businessman. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like can't show you because <laughs> I, I literally burnt it today, but someone donated $500 to the Trump campaign, perhaps in my name, because I got the posters that demonstrated that like, like, hey, Woody, thank you for your donation. And I got these like $500 MAGA nice. posters. Free yeah. stuff? Wow. Yes. I mean, that mug carries coffee just like all the other mugs in your house. Do I have a MAGA mug? Oh, I don't know. I was assuming oh. that like a mug would be MAGA of, kind of like, sounds like pack. mug. If, <laughs> yeah, yeah, MAGA mug. Mug. <laughs> no, Taylor, I asked Woody if, if he thought if he had to begin tonight in a year from now, he had to be a successful YouTube boxer or a successful OnlyFans star, which would be his move. And uh, he went with OnlyFans. He asked which I'm guessing you'd go the other way. I think it'd be easier as like I'm a, I'm just enough of not a nobody that I could be the bottom of bottom bottom cards in a YouTube boxing thing against another nobody. And so I think that would probably be the what? easiest way to do it. Taylor, I'm willing to pay up to 5.99 to see your dick. I'm curious. And oh, I think goodness. I'm not alone. <laughs> Let leave I'm that imagining in the comments. I'm a See, because if, that, if there's a big audience that wants to see, see what's going Taylor, on, maybe Taylor's first spread, if you will, is going to be sports based. We're going to have him in his uh, his goalie, goalie gear. Mm -hmm. All right, out on the ice, and again, dick out. He's going to be completely <laughs> nude, but we're going to tastefully position. There's going to be one shot where in the background someone has has like hit a shot that he's blocking and the puck flying through the air is what's keeping this you know clean enough that, that we're not all embarrassed <laughs> by it. it's like that episode of Simpson when bart's running around with his dick out and they everything covers him perfectly <laughs> <laughs> no you know what i want it to be me making saves but it's like horrible ass shots like yeah. oh. splits ass hairy what, ass what does a goalie cup look like is it the same as a skater's cup no it's much bigger and much more comfortable like it's mm. it's about like it covers most of your pelvis area like once you've worn a goalie cup you can't go back to regular cups man like it oh. is i'm wearing one right now it is creme de la creme <laughs> there's so much padding like you know you remember like regular cups they're hard they're rigid they hurt they pinch yeah. they suck these mm -hmm. is like it's not a cut. It's a like whole they shell. leak. Like it's everywhere. Yeah, they <laughs> leak. I can't even piss in it. <laughs> <laughs> I can't piss in it. In a goalie cup, I have it till tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. I remember, I yeah. <laughs> just picturing that. But oh, yeah, the goalie so cups bad. are bad. And then everybody complains. But what are you gonna do? Dude, they used to have to hire a professional company when we were like thirteen that would twice a season come after practice and take every single player on the team's equipment to a special place to clean it because Yikes. it smells so horrid hmm. so bad yeah it, woody knows that hockey equipment spells rancid that's yeah, the thing about only fans though like i'm sorry keep going 
No, that's it. Tell me no, about OnlyFans. Yeah. It's better. Yes, well, only I, I think that there are people who do OnlyFans, and it's not in an obscene way. They just kind of treat it like a pay per view Instagram almost. There, there are people who who do that um, and have sort of wholesome. I think there are people who like cook on there and are sort of. Uh, I know there are girls who don't get naked at all, but they're just in a bikini cooking, and that's their OnlyFans. There's all sorts of hmm. levels to that. I'm hearing there's a place mm-hmm. for OnlyFans. I'm telling you there's a place for OnlyFans. And I don't remember the setup for it, but yeah. I guarantee you, if you started OnlyFans and you posted consistently for a month or two, Finster would come and be on your OnlyFans with like his bussy on the other side of the tank, kind of pushed up against <laughs> it. And you wouldn't mention the bussy. You'd be like, look at this new fucking clownfish. Oh my. And look at the 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 coral scape that I created. <laughs> And but but bussy in the background, right? Yeah, and shine a laser yeah. up it. It's genius. Oh, I'm yeah, a la- oh, I, I would love I to laser guys to be pussy. <laughs> oh yeah, you wouldn't want to shine it in someone's ass. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that'd be, I, that's, 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 that's I bet good. he's already gotten his. Did, did he say he waxes his butt or, or or is he or is he lazing it? I think he may have lazed it. Is laser a? Uh, is that permanent hair removal or no? Uh, we've gone through this before. It's semi permanent. I don't remember is what it kind of comes down to. Okay. Yeah, I think the closest thing to permanent is the uh, electro. Not like elect- is it electrolysis. It's I the one it where is. you grab each individual hair with a pair of tweezers that are electrified, and it kills the the root of the hair with that electricity, and then they pull it out by the root. Does it hurt? Uh, and- yes, because they're plucking each hair out individually. The plucking is what hurts. I thought it was like oh a, ne- a little needle they stick in there and like kills the root or something. Oh, they're grabbing. They- I for some Next. reason I know this. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> I believe you. Have you ever had it done? No. Me? No. Huh. No, I'm it naturally seems painful. I'm naturally hairless. Slick. Like a no. dolphin. Oh, I, I have very, very little body hair. It's it's it, there's not much going on at all. Like boyishly hairy. Really? Yeah. Not too yeah, bad. I've just got I've just got the strip down my chest. It doesn't even connect to the to, to like my uh belly button hair. You've got you've got like belly button island down there. You don't even have a, a my well my belly button okay. connects to my ball fro. Yeah, <laughs> well that's oh, the best hair pattern. It's bullshit. <laughs> what he's what you he's like being sincere. You can shave any hair pattern you want <laughs> into your body. I, it's I mean, why my chest looks like a giraffe. <laughs> yeah, but, I mean, when I when I took pictures, obviously I'm just I don't know if I shaved my chest or if I chemicaled all the hair off my chest for that picture. I think I chemicaled it all off. Uh, my like like everything. I, I wouldn't like want air chemical yeah. there, nair I mean. for men. Yeah. Do you shave I, your uh, chest, Aqua? No, I mean I I've I've I have quite a bit of uh body hair. It's uh mm-hmm. yeah I can tell. It's, been a, I mean, it's an affliction of mine. I will admit, and it, and a lot of it is on my chest. And you know sometimes, um, you know in the summertime, if I'm going to a pool party or something like that, I'll shorten it up a little bit sometimes. Just a little trim. Um, yeah, okay. you can use it. It's pretty long. Some of it, it's like it get, especially when you're wet. You kind of look like a wet dog or something. It's not the best. It's not great. <laughs> I did uh, have that thought today in the shower. I was washing and I like I saw what I thought was like a hair that like must have fallen off my head when I was like scrubbing, and I like I went to pull it off my chest, and it was just a connected. A very long chest hair. <laughs> <laughs> and some, and I, maybe maybe a trim is a. Uh, is in the car. My goodness. I, I have get a little long yeah. recurring eyebrow hair. Now I'm weak on eyebrows, right? I have my eyebrow hair combined is good enough for one eyebrow. Yet I stretch it across two. That's just how, <laughs> how I am. But one hair. Colin refers to it as the longest eyebrow hair. And he'll be like, You've got the longest eyebrow hair. And you cannot have a fucking flaw around this guy. He will pluck it, he will fix it, he will handle it. And uh yeah, it's like a fucking ninja. <laughs> Now I don't have the longest eyebrow hair for another month or so. And I bet he's also I bet he's not just taking the the one. I bet there's a couple <laughs> there's a couple of guys who die that didn't have to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they sacrificed the oh, you, you know, There's a lot of friendly fire here, Colin. <laughs> 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 I don't have eyebrow hair to spare. <laughs> I donated. Yeah. I, <laughs> my I my dad's eyebrows are pretty thin too. Um I, I don't know if he's gonna have them for much longer. He's he's got more hair on his head than he's got on his fucking eyebrows. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, so, huh. I watched this for me. I'll get him. I'll get him put in. I'll get him a steel on. gypsy. 
Yeah, I'll, I'll, no, no, I'm, I'm going to have them girl. steal the eyebrow hair of a gypsy and and, and, and like put them in, into my uh, face. You've seen what thinner? if I got I eyebrow tattoos? Well. Hmm? <laughs> that could be good. You could draw them on. Dude, well, like, like, uh, like a magic I'm not against ball. that. <laughs> like, <Yeah. laughs> I think I think eyebrows it, thin out as you get older. They, I feel like mine do. used to be thicker. Do they, they do, right? That's I can make thing. an argument both ways. I, I could, if I told you eyebrows get big and bushy as you age, you'd be like, "Yeah, I've seen that." Yeah, oh, that's well, true. they they just get yeah. more unhinged, really. It's, it, mm. I, I think that's often a case of men who have, who never start that. You you hit that second puberty, right, where your ears start getting hairy and your nose starts getting hairy, yeah. and and you don't have like. If you don't have a grandpa around to be like, oh, son, I see him. It's that special time of life. <laughs> come here and here, have some Ben Gay and come with me. <laughs> and then he like walks you through the second puberty. He's like, shows you the nose trimmer and the ear trimmer and uh, gives you the Viagra or whatever you need to, to get you going for that last 20, 30 years you got yeah. that are, that are going to be solid ones. Mm-hmm. And uh, you don't get that enough. You need that support from your older grandpa. You do. Teach you My how to trim your eyebrows. Is that he's like, it's not that you're growing more hairier, it's that your eyesight's getting worse and you don't realize you have hairy ears. <laughs> <laughs> that could I'm be like, it. Oh, all right. Maybe There's definitely like a middle ground there because sometimes you see old guys where it's like, this is intentional. Like, this guy has made a, a decision not to trim his ears. Yeah, I knew a guy like that. Yeah. My I friend had ears. like an elderly dad. I've never seen it. Look, he, it was like he had cotton balls in, in each <laughs> ear. Just like white hair. Just the biggest stuff I've ever. I don't know how he heard anything at all. Yeah. <laughs> it was unbelievable. Like, I, 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 in my mind, I just wanted to grab it and just pull Ooh. it out. I bet it feel good, stuff. though. All right. So he I would thank me after. I know he would have. It's one of those like <laughs> dippy wax sticks that you stick in there. Yeah. God, I would give anything to see that happen. <laughs> I pluck, I pluck any ear hair that I get, and sometimes it's like, oh, that one was in there deep. Yeah, <laughs> like it's like the roots, that. like down in my ear canal. It's like, oh, yeah. fuck, where did you start? I like, do that I with the nose this, sometimes too. Like he's been growing for six months trying to get to daylight, and as soon <laughs> as I felt yeah. him, I doinked him. I, I've done that, that with my nose, Aqua. Where like you pull a nose hair out, mm-hmm. and like it's a half centimeter of root. And you're yeah. like, this guy did not want to come out. Like that he, one came from my brain. Yeah, <laughs> that's, brain. That's I forgot deep. how to do long division. And your eyes <laughs> water a little bit when you get it. It's good stuff. So and you know how different was... races have different like characteristics, right? Yeah, black people have kinky hair. Uh, Jewish people tend to grow really full beards. Indian people have hairy ears, mm. oftentimes. Mm. And I work with some dudes that was like, I, I don't. To my eye, these were bat wings. They were just like furry ears all over. And I, I don't know why they didn't do more to trim it, but well, these people didn't wear deodorant. So it keeps yeah. the bugs out. It keeps I the bugs guess. out. But yeah, it, yeah. I don't know. That's really the end of the story. I work with Indian guys who had hairy ears at a level that the, you Caucasians don't get. <laughs> no, I think that's what it's for. And, and uh, I bet it would feel good. I'm going to get one of those nose waxing kits. You've got this thing. You know, it goes all up your nostril covered in wax and you let it dry and then you pull these two plugs and it pulls every hair in your nose out at once. I'm 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 really you, looking you forward need to that it. after all these breathing annoyances you've had the past. Yeah, yeah. Weeks. I've had really bad allergies this year. That's what I, I finally mm. put my finger on it. It was um when I took a the right cocktail of Sudafed and uh, allergy mm. drugs and <clears throat> stuff, but I'm still suffering. Yeah, it's uh, I'm, I'm I'll be glad when the pollen goes away. It's not dog related, is it? Because that it's not that you're no. new to dogs, but you've really stepped up the dog not long ago. Yeah, I was worried it might be dog related. Um, uh, the one dog, you know, um, Toby is hypoallergenic because he's part poodle. Mm-hmm. But uh, but then there's other dogs it's like four more. Four of them. Yeah, yeah, there's three more dogs in there and they're all okay. different. So um, I thought it could have been that. But but no, it's just it rained the other day and I was I felt so much better. Like I, I didn't mm. sound like this. I just felt better. But then today. I, I can smell the pollen. I can smell it. Every time I go outside, it hits me, and, and I just get worse and worse and worse. So, yeah, it's uh, I'm going to be glad when this pollen season is over. I guess I have allergies again for the first time in a decade. A <laughs> decade. I haven't had an allergy. We live in basically the same climate, but North Carolina, I when it gets windy, there are clouds of pollen that look like deep fog, green fog. It is. I've never seen it anywhere else. It blankets cars. It turns cars yellow. 
it's uh it's shocking amounts of pollen but those dogwood trees and those um um those white flowering trees whatever they are um it, all that shit just I ruins love my life we right, have they're pretty to look at in my yard I have a shit ton of those around my house <laughs> in the woods behind my house <sighs> but, i'm getting to there. the uh I'm getting to the end of the West Wing, Woody, where the president's MS is kicking his ass, and he's he like he's starting to like not have full use of his hands, and it's all pitiful. It's mm. real sad. I've forgotten that that show gets sad. Me too. Is, is Jimmy Smith playing a big part of it now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's running for president, uh, so so that's all cool. But but I, I just feel sorry for President Bartlett with his. It's just you know, at, at, at times he he his wife is like, "What's wrong?" He's like. I haven't been able to see out of my left eye since this morning and my right arm doesn't work. And she's just like, Oh, and they're like at a dinner and she's a doctor too. Right. Yeah. 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 How do his eyebrows look at this point? (laughs) You know, how hairy are they? That man's eyebrows were always very well kempt, but I, but, but you can tell if he didn't look after him, they'd get out of hand. Mm. What happened? Chewbacca is a, is MS. MS is fatal, right? No, not necessarily. No. It, you just no, not at all. Actually, it's not fatal. The what it is is. Oh, I'm uh, thinking of a, ALS. But uh, I at at the time of the filming of that, they gave a statistic that 25 percent of assisted suicides are MS patients because you doesn't kill you; it just tortures you and takes away you oh. know your body. Rarely really fatal, but the life expectancy huh. is five to ten years lower. Huh. For the Sound- reason I just gave. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I didn't think about that, but yeah. Everybody kills themselves. Really? It's lesions on your brain. Oh, that's horrible. Yeah. Well, there's a, and it's interesting for the president because there's the question of, there's the political question of assisted suicide that's on the agenda in his world. And he's, he can't go and talk about it because then he has to be, he has to say, no, there is no, sur- they're going to ask him if is there a syringe in your nightstand? You know, is there, are there four mm-hmm. bottles of morphine in a syringe in there? You know, your wife's a doctor. Why wouldn't there be like everybody? And he came, he comes to the conclusion at the end. He tells his wife, who is a doctor, there's not going to be a syringe in the nightstand and it's going to get ugly. You going to be around for that? She's like, yeah. (laughs) It's like, (laughs) fuck. It's rough stuff. It's sad. Mm. It's a good show. So well written. Well, seems sad. (laughs) At least that part does. Uh, Sorkin shows are like that. Did what was the other one that came afterwards? It might have been uh, Hollywood related. Did he do ER? No, I, I really don't know his repertoire. Uh, I, I've only seen that I think a couple times, but it, it's it's so well done. It's so well written. It's an old ass show. It's it's but it's I, I like seeing the politics of two thousand two two thousand three because so much of it hasn't changed. It's still <clears throat> Iran and China and North Korea and Russia. It's yeah. still uh, um, LGBT rights and marijuana and uh, police violence. And uh, it's all those same issues. No, they're still worried about Medicare, Social Security. They're, all that stuff is just the same. It's so I was thinking cool. of Studio 60. And it's a. I think the show is not as good, but the dialogue is just as good. You know, where they like zippy talk back and forth and everything they say is genius. It has that too. What um what's also really good is newsroom. You maybe seen that? I haven't. It's a it's on the burner for for a watch at some point. Um, hmm. I, I I thought of this. I I hadn't brought it up. Did you see that those drones exploded over the was it the yes. Kremlin? Yeah, yeah. It's like it where was. Putin supposedly where he lives. I guess they're, they're, he, white, they're so white house. Yeah. I looked into it. He doesn't normally live there. He doesn't stay there very often. Um, mm-hmm. Russia's yeah. calling it an assassination attempt. Nice. Anyone who's looking at it is not an assassination attempt. Um, if there's a chance it's not Ukraine, I think it is. I base that on nothing. But uh, it, it could be a false flag thing. Putin does that. That's how Putin took power. He's a false flagger. But it might have also been Ukraine attacking. And what happened is they took a drone. It came zipping into the Kremlin. Uh, they have a, fl- a Russian flag flying on top of this like dome building. And the UAV blew up right next to the flag it looked like they were trying to hit the flag yeah they damaged the flag they did. <laughs> that flag is a little torn they need ratty. a new flag now <laughs> yeah who's, who's we, gonna pay for that yeah we, we took a nine thousand dollar drone and we ruined that flag well didn't you we made it we aged that flag very bad ROI. enjoy your sooty flag ruskies <laughs> so <laughs> but it uh, smells now 
Um, <laughs> so yeah, Zelensky says that Putin is trying to like get a little more public support by false flagging it. Mm-hmm possible that's not really outcomes it, razor possible. but i don't know uh it could also be that Zelensky was just trying to prove a point and and one thing that happens when you do this is they take their air defenses and they move them off the front lines and they start protecting the kremlin so they might have been like you know what we're gonna bomb the kremlin if you don't put your your you know sams there uh, if you keep them up here by the front lines then you know we make them yeah. spread out their resources i, I could be convinced and, either way like False flags happen fucking constantly in wars. Like yeah, trying to garner sure. approval, trying to drum yeah. up support for you or against the enemy. Like, I know they've been hitting like railroads and 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 fuel uh, points and stuff like that. It's uh, but but it's, yeah, seeing that drone pop over the over the building there was pretty interesting because uh, that's a different kind of attack. That's an attack that you know it's, it's literally on their flag they were trying to hit or hit the russian flag on top of yeah. the russian capitol building it's a, it's more of a slap in the face than a than a, than a true attack it's the it's, nature of this drone was that it was never taking out this building i don't think it was even going to put a hole in its roof and it, on its best nah. day uh, this was a device suitable for ruining flags i've made bigger <laughs> so, drone based weaponry <laughs> i believe you Which, yeah <laughs> so uh uh, the, so uh, either stunt? they were proving a point or it was a false flag, but it certainly wasn't the assassination attempt that Putin made it out to be. But it's still super interesting. Um, yeah. No, I, I love it that this thing keeps developing. Um, I've tried to give some more thought to the, the poor Russian soldier on the ground since Taylor um, gave us all a, 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 a morality a lesson, a morality <laughs> check. Um, Taylor was I, I really wrong. have. I saw him the other day. Like, like, I don't like. I don't like that. That one Russian is begging, <laughs> like, please don't blow me up. And they Taylor blow up thinks anyway. Russians are humans, and he's wrong. How foolish I yeah. am to to look at grunts in war and be like, that sucks. I feel bad for that guy. Mm. And, yeah, you he's... know, this is they're going to be playing this during your trial in the future wars. <laughs> you think so? <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, You're there's going to be, be saying, like a, he a had patriot. sympathy for people having bombs dropped on them who are forced into a conflict that doesn't Absolutely. benefit them. We're going to have a, an arbiter of patriotism. It's going to be an artificial oh, intelligence, and you will have to pass uh, an examination, and it'll it'll have this. The same way that silly AI can mimic our voices perfectly. <laughs> yeah. It'll have this whole conversation. It'll remember your lack <laughs> of patriotism here. How mm-hmm. democracy wasn't the most. Yeah, they'll send you right wor- to the front lines. And, oh, it's going to do something much worse uh, to Taylor's you. You're a strong, sturdy Tommy. boy. It needs you for the mines. I need not the- with the- not with all that wit, though. We're going to it's going to lobotomize you right there. It's good. It's just <laughs> very stupid. <laughs> When you said they needed him for the mines, I thought he was going to make them explode, like that kind of mine. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's a mine. He's going to he's going to find mine. one landmine. <laughs> hey, if, I have to, if I have to work away in the salt mines, I'll salt. just run away. I'm too. I'm too. I'll I'll lose weight and we I'll get quick. We need asbestos for the war effort. <laughs> we need asbestos. <laughs> yeah. We need the finest asbestos. Yeah. <laughs> so Ukraine's after. been gaining territory, and it, it's look at that map. I don't even know what to make of this. Right, Russia's been gaining territory a hundred meters at a time, and then over the course of the entire winter, they took—I'll make it up—like eighty percent of Bakhmut, which. On one hand, is super shitty. They wanted to do way better, way faster than that. On the other hand, they do pretty much have Bakhmut now, most of it. Like nice. so, so the then line like line. Ukraine took a hundred meters back, and it's like, well, that'll teach them. We've we've turned the tide now, or mm-hmm. it's worthless. I, I don't, don't know. think that this thing is going to be viewed. At, uh, I think looking at it at a at hundred meters at a time is silly. Okay. You know, like like I I don't think any of that's meaningful at all as far as the greater war is concerned. It looks like what the Ukrainians needed to do was like was cut off that larger peninsula that the Russians have taken so that they can surround them. Oh, that's the got to be their yeah, yeah. yeah that's got to be their ultimate goal if anything's going to happen. And then Russia seems like they need to do the opposite of that. They need to push back over that river and try to sweep underneath again because it seems like they wanted to do that. Um, I can't imagine them going for Kiev again. I. I don't know anything about the landscape, but it would I would presume that the defenses of Kiev are much are, are much more uh, serious than they were a year ago today. Also, the supply lines are a big problem. If they were to push all the way to Kiev again, 
then they would be out of artillery. They wouldn't have their good weapons. They would they just they can barely supply where they are now. And it's a much easier task. I can't wait to play the video game about this. Uh, I can't wait to watch the movies the movie. about this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's going to be some mm-hmm. great movies. Um, who's go- who's going to be the star of who's going to be the Ukrainian hero? Who's like or, or, or whatever. Henry Cavill. Cavill. Henry Cavill. That's a no, big fucking no, Ukrainian. no, no. He what? Uh, he's got to stay focused on Warhammer. Like keep dude, that guy's that practically point. unemployed because he's a big dickwad that no one wants to what? work with. That's not what? accurate at all. It seems like he's a guy who really I enjoys the, the fantasy series that he was involved in and hated that they didn't stay true to the source material, and so he decided to leave and do his own thing. Yeah, everybody loves or, that guy. He only does what he feels like doing. He like they gave him the job of Superman and he wouldn't show up in any of the other films. They wanted him in both the Shazams. He wouldn't do it. They wanted him in more in Black Adam, but he all he did was like one little cameo. And there's more. I can't That's think of all him? the shows. Yeah, he was refusing like cameo after cameo. He was no, refusing to do what Robert Downey Jr. did do. You know, he made yeah, Spider-Man. He, he, he right. was refusing to appear in more superhero movies. Yes. Because he plays yes. wow. <laughs> Fuck yes, love this guy. No, He's I, great. He needs to focus on his his Warhammer universe <laughs> exploration. I'm very excited about that. Yes. Yeah. I want to see what happens. He's, with he's a guy who cares about what he makes and wants it to be good. And uh, I think he's he's all he was complaining about the showrunners and the writers on The Witcher. And when you read their complaints, they're like, he cares so much about the story. What is his problem? Yeah. He cares about these characters. He wants them to be like the book. My God, what is this? How, how could he be so evil? And mm. it re, I don't know how you could be on it. You are like the only yeah. guy. It's like you <laughs> and like the showrunners of the. Witcher. I have fun. Yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> it's it. This is my role. I hate Henry Cavill, Robin Williams, and um. What did Robin do to you? Oh, oh Brendan Fraser. <laughs> oh, you can't come back full circle and pretend like you didn't actually dislike Robin Williams. I see what you're trying to do. <laughs> no, you, you meant what you said about that great man. Robin Williams. That hero. He became like the suicide guy. You know what? He's a hero. We love this suicide guy. And I get it. He was having a hard time that. he was sick. <laughs> yeah. Oh, the whole world was like just singing his praises after he killed himself. And I was like, man, I bet there's a lot of other people who are thinking about killing themselves who are like, I'd like to be a hero. So someone had to say this was a bad idea. It was a bad idea, but the people were singing his praises. They weren't like, it's so good. He killed himself. They were like, oh, my God, he was so wonderful. And Patch Adams and uh, yeah. Goodwill Hunting. And it's such a shame that this guy with all this talent you know, took his own life because of, you know, and at the time, I think. Didn't people? It was like the thought at the time, like he might have Parkinson's or something. Was that it? He was in the month was, after William's death, a thirty-two percent increase in the method used by the comedian himself. But suicide in general rose just three percent. See, they copied him. He inspired fo- future suicide victims. He infor- he informed people. Look, what's wrong with suicide? I don't know why suicide's such a bad thing. There's plenty. Uh, we jo- I joke about. Lo- I joke about no, always. It's always a bad thing. What if it, it lowers is crime? usually a bad thing. People it's who commit suicide would bad. otherwise be bad, maybe. So if you have <laughs> MS, you're, you're paralyzed in pain all the time, and, and and you're just wasting away there. It's it's not time to to go go for that syringe in the drawer. I think it depends on the person's like life and the surrounding context, right? Like if they're forty years old and it just started early onset or something, and they still have kids, and like they're like, then of course, like you don't kill yourself if you are. 72 and you are a constant pain and life is hell then like yeah you should be able to do that if that's what you think is well, where's is the suffering you. level how much do i have to hurt before it's okay i mean that would be subjective it's i'm not saying that you you can't what do it i'm scenario? saying that it's not good the guy had kids but like, let's say suffering. like the guy was like 40 years old and he's got ms and it's you know starting to get rough or whatever like he should absolutely consider, Ooh. like, yeah, I still have children. He has like, to life keep is dragging pain. his ass to work because someone else wants him to be a paycheck. I didn't say that he oh, got a headache. No. I said he has no- <laughs> we're talking about people who are who are going to die, who are laying there suffering, and the doctors are saying, "Oh, you, you're gonna love this, sir. We can keep you like this for so long." <laughs> yeah, I understand you ever- what you're saying. That it that's like the worst parts of uh like space horror novels when something like when a chaos god like Nurgle makes someone rot and decompose and then 
regenerates them back to full youth and lets it happen again and again and again in perpetuity forever. That's what lying in some of those beds are with some of these degenerative diseases. So I think suicide is often a wonderful thing. It's a release and, and, and not just for the person who's been laying in that bed, but for their whole family who's ha who's been sitting there suffering alongside them and, and held up in time and space alongside them, waiting on them to pass on. It's often I, a great thing. I, I understand what you're saying about that. But like, again, you have to construct a very specific thing like like in both. It is literally life and death. And so you need to treat it with severity like it is not a good move most of the time to kill yourself. Like that is uh, obvious. You mean like most of if the you're time, talking as, just as in about most someone, of the time that we experience, like like, like right now is probably not a good time for me to kill myself because I I'll agree with you there. Of course. How, <laughs> however, I don't think that most of the suicide. I, I would like to see all the suicides and then see how many of these people were just bummed out. How many of these people yeah, had think, a had a bad thing happen today and immediately said, "Oh, I can't live in this world." I, Bang. I, yeah, I, I guess what I dislike is any kind of framing of suicide that makes it seem like an out. Like even in the context of an 89 year old who's going to die three days from now, but wants to die now instead. Like because that's not the person you're talking to when you discuss topics like this. Like the people that hear it are people who are like, you are not 85 year olds. Like I think it's bad to present suicide in any way as something that could, like it's it's bad. It's fucking bad. Like you don't want to. No, like unless you are fucking 90 years old and like already dying. So is so is amputation unless you have gangrene. All right. Like like there are situations where it's over and, and we've got to cut the limb off and we've got to cut the life off. It, it, I, I remember that guy who had had uh, extreme radiation poisoning and they kept him alive, basically melting oh, on top of so that bed up. for months just just because they could. Just okay, good example. Could. Excellent example right there. Like, yeah, that guy he felt pain. They can, it's should, unimaginable. Should have been like, that shit's not necessary. Like, at some point, it's time to let go. Again, I'm not talking about you're bummed out because your boyfriend left you. I'm yeah. not talking about, like, you, you're an incel. I'm talking about you're on fire. You're on fire. The thermite won't stop. No, the, the thermite won't stop burning. It's so hot, <laughs> you're on fire. Dude, thermite paint. Here. God, that's, the towers. <laughs> that's how they brought him down was thermite pain on the inside there you of the go, towers. Jesse Ventura. That's Jesse the body Ventura. <laughs> I'm glad you actually got it because that would have been embarrassing. I've never, never I'm glad you brought it back, like, but I And got you bring it us to another public <laughs> instance of, of, of mass suicide, 9 11, where dozens and dozens of people were seen jumping from the towers to escape the burning flames and gases that were cooking their skin and, li and lungs. Yeah, that's. It wasn't a helicopter coming. Superman's not on the way. It's time to jump. Yeah. You wonder if, if like, in, in that moment, you're even cogently thinking that you're jumping to your death or you're just escaping the inevitable death brought by It'd be smoke. so cool if someone was on top planning to base jump and was just like, you know what? I could <laughs> save one. This happen at a better time. <laughs> Get out of here. And then, like, he's just so many cameras on 9 11. The Twin <laughs> Everyone Towers. laughed at John, who brought a parachute to work with him every day for eight years <laughs> until <laughs> September 11th, 2001. Uh -huh. <laughs> and it shows him, like, taking off his parachute at home. And he's like, I'm tired of being made fun of. It says, like, <laughs> September 10th. Like, <laughs> <laughs> do you think he'd be all high and mighty about it in the post 9 11 interviews? Like, like he's he's wearing it in the interviews. Like, Haha, they laughed at me for years. Boom, laughing now, jump <laughs> out and float on down to the nearest ferry and just like back up and and go. That'd be so cool. Yeah, <laughs> a base jumper landed on the top of Building Seven, bringing it down. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, what? That building go down. Has anyone explained with the heat from a nearby fire brought down building seven? I yeah, I that checks it. out. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I, I I don't I don't I don't question that. Um I don't want to get Kanye. Putin did it. Sometimes fire gets so hot you don't know what's gonna happen. <laughs> yeah. I, you know, you know, fire that AOE effect to the area. area. <laughs> it does that, it has an area. Yeah, I know. But yeah, I don't I, know I, either, um, but it doesn't make sense. I don't think we're allowed to question the the official. I, I mean, what happened at the fucking Pentagon, man? Like, like, how is there no video of that plane hitting the Pentagon? 
there that, is, that, though, isn't there? There's this one. There's this thing where there's like a frame, Woody, of like yeah. some a gray. It, it, the plane is a gray flash that comes on the screen, followed by a fireball. I can't identify that as an airplane. And the and and the fact that every day, every, that's exaggerating. Every year at 9/11, I see a new angle of that shit. Every year for for the last 25 fucking years. They've been rolling out new weird. angles. It's like, Huck, look at this newly discovered home video. And, and that's what it is. You know, somebody had a camera, but it wasn't exactly the digital age. We threw those cameras in closets. They, mm -hmm. they, this, uh, like, like I remember um, uh, one of the girls I knew, her camera took these mic Sony micro discs. They look, they're compact discs the size of like a, 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 a stamp. Nobody knows hmm. what a stamp is. What am I thinking? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like, DV tapes. It's not like you yeah. could pop that thing out these days and put it into something, but I'm sure there's some 9-11 footage on one of those. But never do I see any of that Pentagon footage of that plane like slowly careening over Washington, coming down to, hey, why is there a plane over the... Japanese fucking tourists everywhere. Snappity snap. Oh, this is where Rinkin is. Yes, yes. Yeah. Great American tragedy. You, you, and, and, put your camera down. You say that for Rinkin. Yeah, <laughs> just slapping the camera down. <laughs> None of them got a little snapshot of the... It's kind of weird, right? At this point, two planes have crashed in New York. Maybe one in Pennsylvania, or maybe that was the fourth one. No one, like, in Washington, D.C. is like, I wonder if there's any coming here. We should look up. Not zero people. What? Well, I, I think dangerous question. No, there would have been zero people because, like, okay, it was slow to determine that it was an act of terror. It, it was right after the second one hit, right, and then I, I think that timeline is too close for because everything was radio or, or or CNN. There wasn't a lot of oh, everybody getting alerts on their phones, and and the the web just didn't close yeah. very fast back then. We didn't people know. didn't have cameras on them normally. Mm. Like people, I don't know. Yeah. Is that true? Two thousand one? No, no cameras. No, no. My I don't phone think so. was. It was the, that was the age. Oh, you're of right. Nokia. Nokia. No, nah, I'm yeah. wrong. I'm wrong. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I take. Um, I had a yeah. The, all the phones were those little little block fuckers. It wasn't until <sighs> shit like two thousand four, two thousand like right after when, yeah when the early and they were crummy. They like were you could show you could be like, look, a girl sent me a naked picture, and be like, you sure, <laughs> maybe <That's a> girl. <laughs> like, <laughs> I think that's a pizza. That might be a cat. <laughs> I remember yeah, taking pictures on the a rock Motorola that looks razor. like a boob. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's like, I want to remember how much light was in this room maybe someday. Like, like that's about all that it captured. I remember yeah. I was off-roading with a guy and he was in my passenger seat and a girl sent him, like sexed him a topless pic. He didn't show it to me, but I was just blown. I was like, what? A girl just sent you a picture of her boobies, like just now. Like it is a girl you're talking to. Like, is she your girlfriend? And he's like, No, but she could be. And it was like part of the courting process. <laughs> it was a real the future is now moment, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. <laughs> that was Taylor. Taylor, that was last year. Yeah, yeah, I I love that. Uh, I feel like we've become much more awful people because of our phones and the internet. I, I really do. I think it's helped right. us in a lot of ways, but 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 the way it's been used and just been run like the wild west, we maybe could have used some federal early, oversight early, huh? <laughs> yeah, maybe maybe we don't allow smartphones. We keep the internet just for nerds. Nobody else can be online. You have to be a a, a gamer nerd. Keep it to where being online like the early two thousands where it was still lame. Yeah. I would like that. You know, and the like, pedophiles. What's that, Aka? I was just going to say, like, looking back, you know, uh, on uh, like movies like Days and Confused or something like that, for example, you know, like mm -hmm. that era of time without cell phones, there's some, there's a level of charm there that just like doesn't exist today, you know? Yeah. Like that just, I, I know that's a movie and everything, but I, I really, I feel like not having a phone is. There's something to that, you know what I mean? Like sure. I've watched those videos of like on on YouTube, like you know, like people in their like you know late teenage years or like in their twenties or something at like a like a concert in like a garage or something, and like nobody has a phone, and everybody's like talk, commenting about that, and everybody was just like talking to each other and yeah. stuff. I don't know. I don't know if it's quite the same anymore. Like like stories my parents told me of like growing up in the eighties. I don't know. 
it just I feel like we we were missing out on a little bit of that. Yeah, you know, I had it when it, I was younger, but there's definitely uh, that like public square effect of phones where like you go in a waiting room now, you go anywhere and everyone's yeah. on their phone. There's no there's no conversation happening. Like it's it's oh. so ingrained now that yeah. like if you try and like start a conversation with someone, some people are like almost taken aback. Like what what, what Yeah, it's weird. You, you want to talk? Should, don't you just want to stare at your phone? Yeah, with the internet and like video games and stuff, it's so entertaining to be at home now. I feel like back then people would go out more just to like, because there's not that much to do at home. What are you going to do? Like Mm -hmm. read a book? (laughs) Like watch like the same VHS of Goldeneye that you've had for like, I don't (laughs) know. Having a little break of being like expected to be there. So so I ride a motorcycle a lot. And Mm. everyone in my life knows that like, if you text me while I'm driving, I'll probably catch it. I might even text back, maybe not necessarily, but I might. On a motorcycle, texting and motorcycling is not a thing. It is, I don't even, I can't feel the vibration on my thigh. And I sure as heck can't text you while I'm riding. Like it's just not gonna happen at all. So while I'm on a bike, I am basically in the woods, in the, like in, in the desert, in the middle of Australia, I'm somewhere, doesn't matter. I'm just inaccessible. And there's something yeah. neat about that. I drive a mm-hmm. stick shift car. Same thing. You can't look at your phone while you're driving stick shift. Really? I'm just very I be like, without my phone though. Like I yeah. would like it. I, I have, I do have this and I've always had it since I was a kid. This, uh, this sort of fear that if I don't have my phone on me, someone's going to die and I'm not going to know. Like, like, like I was always worried about my dad. Like, like if I couldn't get in touch with him, um, so like I gotta have the phone so that I know that if, like in any emergency, right? Like if they need me, what if someone's broken down on the side of the road? Mm-hmm. I'm, I'll be thinking if I, if I go to bed and I don't have my phone on my nightstand, I'll be thinking, what if a friend breaks down and they, you know, they're on the side of the road and they can't get in touch with me. Like I need, they need to be able to get, that's when I get really frustrated when people don't respond to my goddamn text messages. I'm what the fuck? Where's your phone? You don't have your phone with you all day. <laughs> You don't take the shower and you prop it up on the window so that it's looking at you so you can look through the shower <laughs> and like check it. You do that? Like, what do you, <laughs> yeah. I don't want to be in there. I don't want to be without it. Like, like what? Yeah, sometimes I go hours and hours without checking my phone throughout the day. No. Like I'll just have it in the other room and be like, oh yeah, I haven't checked my phone since like 10 this morning. The, 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 the idea of leaving my phone dead would, I couldn't be comfortable. I, I would be like sitting on a tack. <laughs> oh my god i hate the idea of just yeah. like letting my phone when my phone dies i will jump from my chair like a it, it, it's just like <laughs> a cat's heart stopped or something yeah. <laughs> oh oh shit oh god like, uh, god, you're like running in there to the charger hang in there dad like yeah, <laughs> yeah. In. <laughs> I'm, 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 i've always been like that i'm a i'm a real worry wart in that way if i'm not if I, if you can't get me, then I, I worry something's gone wrong. I uh, I remember I was I was out seeing a movie in New York City. Got out of the movie late. My phone had died, and uh, I wasn't familiar with the area very well where I, where I had seen the movie. My friends you know, took off in some other direction, and I had to get home, and I had no phone. And I didn't know where the subway station was. There, I didn't. There were no cabs around. Couldn't get an Uber. Nothing like that. So like I literally had to just like I kind of panicked for a minute not having it like normally I'd just like look up where the subway was or if I was, you know, mm-hmm. lazy and didn't want to take the subway, I'd get an Uber or something. It's like hard to get a cab in like Midtown or that area sometimes. And um, I just like freaked out. I didn't know what to do. I had to like walk up to a stranger and ask them where the subway was. Like that's such a foreign concept to me now. I don't know. It's wild. Yeah, it took me it is- back. Like I get stressed because I'm dog shit with directions. Like if I'm like in the middle of getting back home from somewhere that like I didn't know how to get to in the first place and like my phone's at like 6% and I know that like I'm not going to make the turn to where I know where I'm going before then, I like get genuinely panicky where it's like, oh my God, I'm going to be lost. I'm not going to know where to go. And it's never like that because like Hmm. it's always like, oh yeah, I know I want to go west like that, that kind of shit. But it's, you feel naked, you feel vulnerable. Like I, I have to know where I'm supposed to go now. That's yeah, something I like am blown away by. Like people just had to, used to have to know how to get fucking everywhere. Like 
You just had to yeah. be like, oh, I'm going over to uh, Susie's house to study for our 10th grade test. She lives in this area. Oh, okay. I got to know how to get there. And then to her house specifically, like I remember specifically thinking when I was 16, thank God Garmin exists <laughs> yeah. because otherwise so, it would have been stressful. Well, you're going right? to love this because uh, my dad didn't give a shit about Nav when it came out. He was like, I know everywhere I need to go. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, He's like, I've been to Atlanta before. <laughs> <laughs> been to Atlanta. You, know I mean? you know, that little hub, Atlanta. <laughs> you know, like, like, like he just knows everywhere he needs to go um, at this point. That's his mindset about, I, I'm sure he didn't know how it worked at the time. L- nowadays, he uses navigation. But <laughs> at the time, he, he didn't give a shit. And so we didn't have one. when I, I was still using, fuck, printing out MapQuest in like 2004, 2005. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, like, like in the passenger seat, look, gla- <laughs> looking at that fucking map in my passenger seat, driving through Atlanta and realizing that I was on the wrong side of the perimeter, which, if you don't live here, means I have fucked up. <laughs> I'm on the wrong side of the goddamn city. Like, like it might as well be a... It's miles and miles, and I, literally a million people are between in cars are between me and where I want to go. Um, it was yeah. awful. I drove for a long time without navigation. Uh, and I remember when I was like 18, 19, especially, I really liked it. My cousin and I would get up early. We'd get our shotguns. Uh, we'd get a crow collar, a couple hundred rounds. And we just start driving. Uh, and and we'd drive until we saw crows. And we'd get out with a collar and call. Yeah, they're here. And then we'd find whoever lived there and like go to their house and ask for permission to shoot the crows. And if they had, a, it was usually pecan orchard. So we just get out and like hunt like that all the time. And we were lost as fuck most of the time. We would always need like old timey instructions on how to get back home by the time it was over. <laughs> I I'm glad I never have to. Never I got lost in the that. mountains one time running from the cops after we threatened a judge. And we were asking for nice. directions from this old timey lady on the Wait, side of the road. I don't like again? how you blew past that. <laughs> 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 I thought this is something you <laughs> talked about before, like several times or something. Holy yeah, crap. I have. They just judge? don't remember it well. Um, and uh, <laughs> but uh, well, the ju- well that that happened. At, we were at a red light, and um, we got into an altercation with the man behind us, and then we got out to attack him because he like he just signaled for us to pull over to fight, and so we pulled over to fight, and when we ran back to get him. He recoiled into his car in fear because he didn't think we were coming to get him like that. And he said, I'm a judge. And we had just left that area of the city, like like where the courthouse and all the all those buildings are. Mm. We, of course, are terrified. So we jump back into our car like we just got shot at. I almost drive off without my partner. He's like hanging on to the oh shit mm-hmm. handle barely in the yeah. truck. And I careen across two or three lanes of traffic outside the, after jumping a curb because I didn't want him to get my plate. Because you would imagine that a, ma- a judge could, has a, could make a phone call very quickly and give my plate to someone and they come and mm-hmm. get me. Um, so I'm afraid of that because now I feel like I've committed a terrible crime. I probably have. <laughs> no, you just charged a judge in the middle of the road. Yeah, I think I may have yelled something at him and I'm pretty sure I had a club. And... Uh, <laughs> 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 uh, um, so then we, we drove off and I kept, I had the mindset at the time. I know this doesn't make sense, but if I got lost, then I would be lost. <laughs> 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 like, like if I didn't know where I was, how he could they? find you? Yeah. A little, a little bit of object permanence difficulty for teenage Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> but you gotta understand I'm like 18, maybe. And I'm I'm terrified because we've we're way in over. But he the hides on a three year old level. Yeah, yeah. I, <laughs> but I'm driving a truck. Officer, back and, up! We have a gentleman standing staring into a tree. <laughs> I can see your feet under the curtains, young man. Yeah. <laughs> and so I tear off like through the town, and I just start taking every road that leads to a more to a less populated area. I take that turn, like whatever it takes, and very quickly I'm out of town down side streets and then into the woods and back roads and the mountainous areas um kind of where we curry like that kind of area and i'm almost out of gas like it's i know the point where it runs out in that truck it's got to get below the red and there's got to be visible gap and then we got like a mile or two we're on the red 
I got like 10 miles, 15 maybe. And uh, we, we pulled over because there was a lady checking her mail in this like sketchy mountainous area back there where not many people live. And I'm like, ma'am, can you, can you tell me how to get to Franklin County? And she's like, oh, Franklin County. Yes, yes, yes. We, you have in Madison County. I'm like, yes, ma'am, I guess so. <laughs> how, how do I get to Franklin County again? Well, that way. And she pointed with like three fingers because that's all she had. Like she had some sort of congenital birth defect that I want to attribute to inbreeding because <laughs> she is like hill folk. And you're like, there's that way. And I was like, thank you so much, ma'am. And I took off and we both looked at each other like, did you see her fucking hand? Did you see her fucking hand? I'm like, where are we? Where are we? <laughs> we were scared. I, I was I was so scared because I, I we really didn't want to like attack a judge. We just wanted to defend ourselves. That's what it felt like at the time. You didn't want to respond cool when he was like, I'm a judge. And you were like, This is my partner jury, and I'm executioner. And oh, then no. you bang. Go in there <laughs> no. with your fucking club, break his windshield, drag him out. And say, I, don't I, you dare threaten us to fight <laughs> so know, rudely. That does sound cool. Yeah, that, that mm-hmm. would have been cool. That would have been a different life for me, I think, if I'd done that at 18. Um, You'd be a pretty cool guy. No, he, he literally did start it, though. We were, I didn't mm-hmm. leave. The light turned green, and I didn't immediately go because there was a car quickly coming to the in- intersection from my right, not stop. They'd be like, oh, shit, it's red, and they're having a hard time getting stopped. Mm-hmm. It wasn't like a crazy emergency, but I was taking note of how quickly they were approaching the, the intersection. So I didn't leave right away. And this guy laid on the horn. And I think one of us gave him the finger and he gave us the finger back. And then he was like, pull over. And I was like, all right, them's fighting words. He's wanting to go. So <laughs> we did. And I bet uh, he wasn't he even a judge. He might not have been, but but man, that's a good card to pull out of your back pocket in a that's scary really moment. That's really good. Yeah, you have like to be old I'm enough looking. Now. Yeah, Woody. I don't think you could pull off. I'm a judge. You don't look well, old I, enough. I totally you're look not, like a judge. You're not judge age. No, you would need a beard, and you'd need to look old. Actually, beard with the gray in there, you could pull off judge. Is it a crime to a person to judge? Because I know law enforcement. That's definitely a crime. No, it's not a crime at all. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. It's actually a really good idea. Yeah, <laughs> it's like Dumbledore rules. Like full protection. Not only is it judge, legal, I'm awarding you the highest honors. <laughs> that was actually very smart of you <laughs> you pretended to be a judge to as a sleep. judge i respect this yeah. <laughs> you're, you're free to go right what if you're not just like choosy like i'm a judge right but you're thinking of that beauty pageant <laughs> that one time i one time judged an eating contest i'm a judge like a yeah, former a judge. judge and then what if he hits you with i'm also a judge Mm. Well, we're just a couple of judges now, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> just, uh, what's your favorite part of judging? Uh, what, are your, what are your top three part, favorite parts of judging? Like, <laughs> your Honor, I meant I was judgmental when yeah. I said that. I meant I was vindictive yeah. and rude. Actually, <laughs> I was judging no, that, someone. That was scary. I think I think Scott and I kept that one a secret for like eight years before we even told my dad. Like, like every now and then, like you do something so awful, you don't. I, I wouldn't tell my dad. Um, one time, I, oh God, I was at his uh, his farm and he was away on a trip. I've probably told you all this before, but there was a bird on the power line, mm-hmm. and uh, I I normally would never shoot a bird on a power line with anything more powerful than like a twenty two, because you don't want to risk shooting the power line into sure. right. That's a big deal. But there he was, and I had. A really good rifle. I had this big Remington 40XB 22250 with a 36 power Unertal scope on it. This is the gun you use to cut playing cards in half. It'll put three bullets in the same hole at 120 uh, yards. It's what it does. It's so It weighs 15 pounds or something, and it's a small caliber rifle. When you shoot it, it goes, Key. it barely moves. But the scope's like gyroscopically stabilized, so it doesn't move. It stays stationary. This is the gun to shoot a bird off the power line. <laughs> but I didn't know my dad had zeroed it for like some other range. And mm. so at 50 meters, it's shooting real low. And so instead of making the bird go poof, which is what a 22 to 250 will do to a robin, it'll go poof. It's really satisfying. You can hear the bullet hit it. It just shot the goddamn power line in two. Just shot the big power line right. too. Now I've never seen a power line hit the ground before. It hits the ground and starts jumping around. Yeah. Shooting blue fire and making this noise. 
the, the, the plasma is cooking the grass and blackening everything and it's yeah. it's moving i didn't know it would actually move and uh and there it is there's death mm -hmm. there's death right there we're looking at it you yeah. know that that fucking thing and of course the, the electricity has gone to an entire farm and god knows where else <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, anyone and I'm, that I'm, way yeah <laughs> yeah and it's just uh it's just me it's just me there so I had to run around, start generators, uh, go to the gas station, buy, buy a good 20, 30 extra gallons of diesel, make sure I topped all the tanks off, babysit those generators and like make sure everything was good uh, until dad got home. And I was like, man, that lightning hit your power line right in the fucking middle. Can you believe that? Hero Kyle saved the day, though. <laughs> uh, you know, I don't. You don't have to pay me to be your watchman, but I take tips. <laughs> <laughs> I just Thank you, the... Kyle. <laughs> and to be fair, I did step up and save the day. I just didn't mention that, that it was an act of Kyle, not an act of God. <laughs> <laughs> so really, the weather's been tremendous. Like <laughs> Dude, that's what the that's what our neighbor said when I was when I was getting some diesel from from him. He he was like, I didn't hear nothing. I didn't hear no lightning. I ain't seen no storm. Well, it was a freak storm, and it was a very quiet lightning. <laughs> <laughs> Sounded a lot uh, like a gunshot. <laughs> yeah, Actually, it was, it was <laughs> called a one strike just, storm. I was like, I was basically just like, shut up, <laughs> shut up. <laughs> did the yeah, wire was... stay like shooting out plasma and stuff? Like, for a, did you just like leave it like that, or like what happened so there? It kept doing that for a significant amount of time, like a couple of minutes. And then the way I remember it is it stopped. And I think that's because there's some safety things or somewhere okay. where the grid realized that it was detached and turned the power off somewhere along the line. It turned itself off there. Um, oh, no, I went to the power company and, and, and told them um, about the freak, you know, lightning storm. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> <laughs> they say, wow. Sounds like yeah. real freaky. Yeah. We're, we're three miles from there. And my car's dry. Happens all the That's time. That's 100% accurate, everything you just said. <laughs> it's it's about three miles. Yeah. <laughs> about three miles. <laughs> uh, I mean, you, like, you like walk in soaked with like a rain hat on. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I had my umbrella. I was like shaking it off as I walked in. Uh, don't even look outside, everybody. It's a bad <laughs> I saw the umbrella and went, hey. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that, that was a... Uh, I didn't tell Real dad that. Wet. What happened with that was uh, Scott ratted me out to my dad. He, he told my dad. Um, and But then he told me, he's Damn. like, man, I let it slip about the thing. And I was like, Damn it. <laughs> I'd never told. And, and so like the next time he brought it up, I remembered that he knew and I knew he was trying to fuck with me. And I was like, you know, <laughs> you know, I did it. Don't try <laughs> to pretend. Don't try to make me squirm, old man. I know yeah. you know. I know you know. <laughs> you feel like messing with him. Like now, you're trying to turn me into the bad guy. And all uh -huh. that. Like just just mm. gaslighting yeah. your dad about the, I mean, the power lines. I was. I'm the savior in this in this story. God damn it! That, 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 I was stress testing that line. If it can't take a twenty two two fifty, I mean, come on. Let me tell you, it was ready to pop. Ready Any to moment. pop. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Lucky I've I never seen a, a downed power line in person. I bet it would really? be kind of oh, neat. More impressive than or that. I haven't seen one that was doing stuff. More impressive than that. I was driving uh, into, into town one day in Livonia, and mm -hmm. uh, I was driving past the post office, and there's a power line where one of the, you know the cylindrical power things that are up on the power poles? I don't know what the they transformer. do. Transformer. Is that what it is? I think is? they're called it, that. Yeah. yeah. yeah that gray right. cylinder that's up there, whatever the fuck that is. Uh, lightning hit that before my eyes uh, 75 yards from me and i was i'm kind of, i'm looking in that direction because i'm driving and i saw that fucking thing explode and it made a huge fireball of blue and gold plasma and then like sparklers rained down like in a movie i thought that was just a movie effect like when i blew up that car and they like cgi'd it mm -hmm. all up they're like yeah and then we do this and it's that same effect that's in every guy it's just a plug-in but yeah. it looked like a fucking plug-in in real life. I watched that thing explode. It was badass. You could hear it. Cool. Well, obviously it was lightning. It was, it was deafening. <laughs> it was deafening. You could hear it so clearly, <laughs> so well. <laughs> mm. Lightning's awesome. Every time I've seen lightning a bunch of times, do crazy shit. My uncle was uh, working on a car. You know, had a floor jack, a big metal thing on a concrete floor. Lightning hit a tree outside, came through the floor jack and gave him a jolt. Oh my god! And like like dropped him to his to the ground and he's like laying there all fucked up for a while he had to help him into the house jesus christ 
I my am. cousin was working inside of a poultry house and uh, he had his hand on a metal um, feed line lightning hit outside ran inside and hit him and i and he was just jolted so badly he he was just in full like he had lost it he was just crying like screaming crying like like he was just he from the pain i guess but mm-hmm. he was just sitting on the ground with his hands like this crying uh when it hit him. so he wasn't have, being shocked anymore and he was still no it was just it hit, it hit him in one like bam kind mm-hmm. of like jolt and then um yeah, yeah you're probably it. in shock. Like you, you almost, your heart just almost stopped. You almost died. Was a real pussy. I'm gonna be honest. You know, yeah, what a like, baby. Yeah. It's only lightning. Get Big boys it. don't cry, right? Did hey. Ben Franklin cry? Hell no. He, mm. he he had syphilis too. You know what he did? Mm-hmm. He said, "Bring me another. Bring, Bring me another. another." He's he stuck. Too he's old. the they they call him the Genghis Khan of syphilis. Did you know that? Goddamn right. <laughs> he spread it around more than anyone in history. He loved yeah. it. He was in the, the part of the reason he ben did Franklin. it. Franklin. Yep, Ben Franklin. And he uh he spread it cuz he would often go to France and fuck hookers in France. Like this mm-hmm. part's true. And he yep. would <laughs> <laughs> I had my suspicions about the other part. The other part. But he would go there and he would fuck a bunch of hookers in France and I guess in France at the time syphilis was Ramp. all over the place. And so he constantly had syphilis. Yeah. It's did, a terrible disease. No, not back then, right? Like they probably, they probably had little used, like, have antibiotics. Nitrate or something shot up his dick, like something crazy like that. Uh, <laughs> you would need That's antibiotics. Actually, though. That's Mercury the man. real way he invented electricity. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> trying to get rid of the syphilis. That light bulb in my house. <laughs> <laughs> no, it hurt a lot, and he it made still up something about a key on a kite. That's bullshit. <laughs> no, no, he was yeah. trying any and everything to get those d- bumps to go away. <laughs> Jesus Christ! I, I, uh, yeah, I'm glad. I don't think you get. Do you get bumps? I have no idea if um, syphilis causes bumps. I know uh, I got like a little red like patch on my shoulder that you could only really see see out of a hot shower. That's how I uh, knew I had it. Oh, and then all the skin on my palms and the soles of my feet fell off. Yeah, that's yeah. that's the bigger one that, that was in the shower. That was that was the that was the secondary symptom. But when I saw that red patch on my shoulder, I knew something was up. Mm-hmm. You started thinking about committing tax evasion and going insane in prison, and you realized, yeah, yeah no, I don't want to Al Capone yeah. life. No, no, you Dan's don't want that game. Al Capone life. That's Al Capone. That's how Al Capone died. He should have died as like a super cool gangster sitting in like a Sicilian veranda or something. You know, not you know, sometimes I sometimes I worry that they didn't get all the syphilis and that there's a little like eating away at my brain, you know, because mm. uh, when I get blood, I still have those syphilis antibodies, you know, mm-hmm, food mm-hmm. for thought, food or, for thought. <laughs> or thought for food thought this for week food. on Reading Rainbow. I miss. Oh, that I show. love Reading Rainbow. That was great. Yeah. That, was see, how can you show? Show. that show how was gay that without no. having. It was. Did your dad I say that? Can do, anything. <laughs> do you remember? Uh, it's got rainbow in the title for heaven's sake. This sakes. is. This might be. Actually, no. You guys are both Aqua and Kyle. You guys are both wish, wishbone age, right? Uh, or are yeah. you I don't know. too old for wishbone? Uh, I, I don't is, fully remember what that is. It's like a like a like a lamb a or something. Yeah. A dog. It yeah. was a dog. Yeah. Yeah. A lamb chop. Lamb yeah, chop was the lamb. Would, yes. Mm-hmm. Right. And wishbone would go around. And he would solve mysteries. Yeah, I guess maybe that was a little too. I just young remember the you, puppet Kyle. in the barnyard. No, he was a he was a real dog. They had a real dog running around. I watched a puppet show about a a, a little lamb called Lamb Chop, voiced by this cute, this cute lady, uh, and they were like in a studio barnyard, and uh, I don't know what the fuck that is. That's Wishbone. <laughs> News to me. Yeah, I missed Wishbone. I th- I was thinking of Lamb Chop as well. I wonder, I wonder how Wishbone's doing now. He's dead. Do you think he's still in the acting biz? I think he's dead. No, I think he's, I think he's real dead. He's probably I threatened it mid thirties. <laughs> uh, I saw a thing: the oldest dog, thirty years old. His name was like Bob, mm-hmm. and he's, or he's owned by Jeremiah Liar. Uh, that's oh, not true. On. There's no yeah, way. There's a thirty. I saw dog. that thirty year old dog. It's been documented. They, uh, I saw it too. He's he's absolutely that's right. Legit. I saw that dog. Yeah, yeah. he's a grand pupper. Man, I hope I hope he has a somewhat satisfying life. He's dead. Seems okay. Yeah. He's, Oh, well, he's dead now, but I hope yeah, the end course. was good. I mean, probably. They probably let him go out in a very nice, soft, painless way, Taylor, not lying there in his own feces 
to be ridiculed and to be a burden. <laughs> to be ridiculed. They let him go out the right way. <laughs> Who's ridiculing the dog? Who ridicules these people? I always do. I always, I go to the, dude, I'm at the hostel five days a week. <laughs> I'm letting those old bags know you've had your stay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Social security's crumbling, you fuckers. If they can't contribute to the GDP, they need to off themselves. That's what I, I start preaching Reaganomics to them, and then the mm -hmm. next thing you know, one, two, three, they're offing themselves. Yeah, trickle yourself six feet under. How about that? Oh, maybe we could do... <laughs> trickle down <laughs> the year two. <laughs> I, I think a euthanasia ser uh, service could do well. Uh, it, it's legal in Washington State. Where Where else is it legal? Canada, euthanasia. Switzerland. It's yeah, really yeah. illegal in Canada. They love it in Canada. They're a little <laughs> zealous. Oh, they're overzealous with the euthanasia, even for my taste. W wisdom Canada. teeth, huh? <laughs> I can. <laughs> <laughs> Bet that hurts, don't it? Yeah, that's gonna sting, buddy. You sure? Here, here. This this will make that pain go away. Oh, what is this? Like Tylenol or something? No, that'll kill you. Wait, what? <laughs> Damn, yeah, almost got another one. It's your way out of that pain, sir. <laughs> it's your way out of Canada. <laughs> Turn your, your guns way. in now. Turn your guns in. Yeah, those poor Canadians. I have the list. Impressed. Do you want to know where euthanasia is legal? Yes, sir. Belgium, Canada, Colombia, Luxembourg, the Netherlands, New Zealand, Spain, and a few Australian states. Hmm. Those are mostly good countries. That's active euthanasia. There's also passive euthanasia, where you yeah, just like it. remove the treatment and with life support. And America's there. Oh, I thought yeah. you were referring to the way that every um, like hostile nurse will give you enough vials of of whatever the the, I, the I oh a hospice. Nurse. So so the list of things I read is active voluntary euthanasia. Mm -hmm. that's, I understand. That's that. not America. Oh, okay, maybe I okay. misunderstood what you're saying. Okay. Yeah, because like the for those of us who were fortunate enough not to have to deal with that before, like that that with hostile sir, at some point someone will be like, now make sure they don't take three of these because three of these. Man, they'd have a real peaceful sleep and go on to heaven. Yeah, I've had that <laughs> conversation. Four of my these, friend did too. You go to hell. It's weird. By the way, one of them will make you horny as fuck. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You're like, you gave me six. I noticed. That's right. Yeah, they, <laughs> they give you morphine because you're treating for someone who's dying, and then they're like, "This amount deals with pain. This amount puts them in a peaceful death." And it's just like, "Well, what?" You just taught me how to. Okay, now we know. Yeah, mm -hmm. sure. It's a it's an interesting uh, philosophical question. I think some there are some people whose version will be or whose morals tell them no. You lay there and you suffer until God's done with you. <laughs> until He's done, mm -hmm. He'll let you know because you won't be able because you'll die. Or the Taylor way. <laughs> you contribute to the GDP. You selfish son of a bitch. Your That's kids need your paycheck. From your lips to God's ears. <laughs> you, know, that's, 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 you need me production you can't you can't how greet you, anymore bye what, bye how do, you, <laughs> how do you feel about running the credit cards up of a, a dead loved one do you I'm feel like that's that do you feel that don't you feel like especially if the loved one cared about their credit like that's a bit shameful to do to them it doesn't transfer to or anything no no, credit no card that does not transfer. little tip for everyone in minecraft if you know something if the, if the worst is going on in your world right now then a loved one's credit cards at the end could be completely maxed out and and then they pass away and so does their credit report and that mm -hmm. debt and yeah, yet there's... the jet ski remains lord yes. it remains. <laughs> yeah. yet the jet ski <laughs> remains <laughs> hallelujah well, thank you for giving us this sea do <laughs> Hopefully these people are worth more than nothing upon their death, right? Like, I, yeah, I was thinking to myself because your estate pays off your, the debt. So, like, if, if this is oh. a person with any kind of inheritance, even a shitty one at like eight grand, well, shit, that's like your jet ski, I guess. I don't know what they. Cost. I don't know. I I feel like you could liquidate all the assets long before the credit card companies actually come for you in a legal kind of binding way that would that would matter. Uh, so so yeah. You know what I mean? There, who's that comedian who tells this story? Doug Stanhope. He, Doug Stanhope tells the story. He's like, I couldn't tell this until the statute of limitations is up. But when my mom was dying of whatever she had, degenerative mm -hmm. painful disease, there was a night when she finally decided this is it. 
and she drank this like i don't know milkshake of opium and i gave it to her and we laughed and we said this and that he's like and then i ran her credit cards up <laughs> <I'm> yeah. like, <laughs> like, like he tells the whole bit and in, in her amazing. dying days she hit her credit limit on amazon.com yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he even says stuff like that he's like and but somehow th through the haze she managed to order a jet ski. Like, just, just, like <laughs> look up, look up Doug Stanhope, mom or mom death uh -huh. credit card or something like that, and you'll find the clip. It's hysterical, very yeah. very funny bit. But I think um, I'm of the 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 standpoint of like I think it's a bit dishonorable to do that to their credit report because uh, because the United States capitalist system has made me believe that credit reports, which were invented in 1989 are somehow akin to a person's worth and honorability. <laughs> Isn't that great? Yeah, you have to be in <laughs> debt to be worth something. You know? I think I wouldn't want to leave you with a bad credit report. <gasps> what will the debtors think of you? <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. Dishonored you know? your family. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. That, is how, that is how I think about credit. No, I think what Doug did was great. Big ups oh, to yeah. Doug Stanhope for, for getting himself a sea do or whatever. New, new Unethical life pro tip. Seer sucker suits. Yeah, Whatever big time. Unless, I mean, there's a reason we mentioned the statute of limitations on that one. That's not Minecraft statutes. That's <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's a. I, I'm I'm still kind of iffy on that one. That's a that's a that's a weird moral one for me. Even though I'm perfectly okay, okay with all the euthanasia. Yeah, if you're old and sick, you should be able to decide that. How sick should you have to be? What if you're just old and tired? How old? Seventy five. All right, that's a you're good. You you come in, you're 75. You know, you, you say, I've had it. Hook yeah. me up. What yep. if you're 65 and you're looking forward and you decide there's no more fun left? I'm gonna pop smoke, call it call it a life. Pop smoke. And you just yeah. go, well, I guess there's there's no stopping you. He'll just go to fucking uh Belgium and then give the Belgians that euthanasia money instead of us. Oh, God eh, you can do it on your own on the cheap. <laughs> That's yeah, but, true. But, but they're pros. And there's really no reason to be a penny pincher on this. Can you imagine going through customs? <laughs> can you imagine going through customs to kill yourself? Yeah. People uh, do it. People what do it. a pain in the ass. Like the one the last experience on earth is like they lost your luggage. Doesn't matter. <laughs> Actually, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah like, you know what? Normally this would bother me, but the truth is I don't need to buy yeah. these clothes. <laughs> I want. I don't I want mind that I'm banned from the airport. Like, <laughs> how does for what is youth threats? <laughs> what does euthanasia sound like with a racist Asian accent? Ruth, fuck, ooh, it it sounds like youth of Asia, which also sounds Ruth like Asia. the youth. So Ruth that sounds like the youth of know. Asia. So Ruth you could have like a really funny comedy movie where where that was a misunderstanding. That's what I thought it was at first, the first time I heard it, like as a kid. Youth Euthanasia? in Asia. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, Youth in Asia? Mm hmm. Hmm. Those, those kids like are a real people. fucking problem, apparently. How have I never heard of that? Youth <laughs> yeah, in Asia. <laughs> That'd be a good band <laughs> those name. It's <kids> controversial. <laughs> yeah. My God. We're the Youth in Asia. <laughs> 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 that's oh, a good I love one. that. That's a good K pop band name. Oh, that's my new gamer tag. Youth in Asia. It's actually a sick band name. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it is. Go, delete this part of the episode. We're gonna we're gonna start our own four person. Trademark band. FBS production. Yeah. Oh, we should just be terrible at it. All right. Now, first question: Does anyone uh, know how to play an instrument? All right. Here's what we actually need. Let's, make a, let's drum, make a fake sort of. band. Yes, or... we're, we're a quarter of the way there. because uh, I was gonna play percussion, but uh, I only that, that might be the first time we've ever had a good idea for a T-shirt. A fake band called Youth in Asia, and it's a band T-shirt. And it looks like a real band T-shirt with a tight. picture of a band and, like, <laughs> and mm. like a logo that says euthanasia. I like that. That's a good one. Get on it, Taylor. Right <laughs> along with the poop site. All right. As soon as I get the final coding See, done on the poop site. Done. I come Taylor, with the ideas. Don't job. make me put the hot sauce in the in bottle. The, the <laughs> Just to, I need to be busy all the time mm -hmm. facilitating Kyle's ideas into reality. <laughs> <laughs> Like, and, ag and again, Kyle, we're hemorrhaging money the <laughs> on the on the bottle. look and see pound. It's upsetting people. They don't want to go to the pound and touch the sick dogs. <laughs> <laughs> uh, watch, you know, forcing people to watch the death of a dog at a pound before they get there, so they realize how serious it is. 
Yeah, that's. I mean, that's how they made me keep my dog after I found out he was defective and bitey. You know, I I got him home and he bit the other dog over food. Now he doesn't do that anymore. It was just like his first day and he'd been in prison for a while. But uh, but I was like, damn, you got to go back, buddy. You bit the other dog. And they're like, you know, we're gonna kill him, right? I'm like, what? Yeah, we're gonna smoke his ass as soon as you leave. And I was, I I, I didn't make a full on scene, but I was like a like a like a little bit of a care, and I was like. Come on, Rocky. Let's get out of here. We're not gonna let him kill you. And I like said it enough for the people in the like like the area around me to hear. I was like, yeah, they want murderers. Kill him. They're gonna kill him if I don't take him. And they didn't tell me that he had a metal rod in his leg and he's bitey. Look at his leg. And they're like, oh. And anyway, like, happy hunting. Like <laughs> they're just <yeah>. leaving. <laughs> fucking uh, dog. Well, you guys want to call it a show? Thank, Aqua, you thank you so much for joining us on our hey. on our four hour quest for the truth. Thank you for having me. It was a pleasure. Yes. I did Where enjoy I... meeting you very much. I've wanted to, to have you on the show for a long time. I often talk about you. Oh, Big fan. I, I love watching your Tarkov <laughs> videos. I've watched hundreds of hours of you. It's weird that way. I know how it is. Uh, but but thank <laughs> you for coming on. It was it was fun to uh, to chat with you. Yeah, it was great. You wanna, thank you all you very much. Him, you want to direct them to your YouTube or your Twitch or your your Twitter, or you got an OnlyFans? I do all that stuff. No OnlyFans yet, although we came up with some good ideas on this show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a little showmanship that could go a long way. I'd w- space, for you, you know? I would do a whole outdoorsman motif, okay? 100%. We're going to start with log splitting because there's a lot of double entendres there. I'm, I'm picturing you in a red flannel shirt. It's tucked in, no outdoorsy pants. belt. You got the <laughs> shorts. Shorts. I can tell you look good in shorts. I, I, no, I, can, I, can, no, I, can, right. I got no that read pants. on you. You're going to be out like there Hank Hill ass, He's standing with his right legs short, spread, short. and he's, he's we'll get, got his axe above it, but the, the unsplit log is covering his dick very yeah. coyly. Yeah, and it's a big log. <laughs> mm-hmm. That a would big be log. that would be great. Like Just like <laughs> comedy, like male pornography like that, That's that'd be hysterical. <laughs> yes. I like it. I'm in. We all naked just, men aren't sexy ever. Naked men are funny. Women, true. <laughs> women get to be sexy when they're naked. Men get to be funny when they're naked. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. good. So be well, thank you very you. much, sir. Thank All you. Right. Check out our sponsors and buy our, our jizz fucking pills down there. Um, they work. And uh, the they drugs, do. too. The drugs Come work, too. Jizz. Check and, um, and join our patron, and, and you, can, you can hang out with us and have awkward conversations where one of us will absolutely yell at you before it's over. Yeah, you don't know who it might be, but you could probably.